In this course, Ravon will teach you how to build a full stack Amazon clone featuring an admin panel using Flutter and Node.js. Let's get started. In this e-commerce app, we will learn about email password authentication, state persistence, searching products, filtering them based on the category, rating them based on which we will be able to see deal of the day, adding them to cart, checking out with Google or Apple Pay, and viewing the details of past orders and the status. On the admin side, we will be able to add products, delete them, see total earnings, and view the graph of sales based on the category. We will also be able to view the orders and mark them as pending, completed, or received. To follow along with this video, all you need to know is the basics of Flutter and Dart. There's absolutely no need of knowing anything about Node.js, Express, or even JavaScript. If you're familiar with JavaScript, it's great, but even if you're not, don't worry, it's pretty similar to Dart. I'll explain the differences as we move ahead in the tutorial. We're going to repeatedly follow similar processes of crude, thus I'll also give some exercise as we create certain APIs which you can check with the solution I type. After following this tutorial, you'll have the capability as well as confidence to build your own complex app with this technology. Alright, so the very first thing we need to do is open up our terminal and in here run the flutter create command. But before that, I'm going to show you the flutter version we'd be using throughout this tutorial. So we are using flutter 2.10.5 and dart version 2.16.2. After that, we can run the flutter create command. I'm going to call my project name Amazon clone tutorial because I already have a project name flutter Amazon clone, not to get confused with it. After that is done, we can migrate to this folder and open it in VS code. I will open it in VS code using code full stop. And then it opens up in VS code. That's great. After that, we can go in the lib folder in the main.dart file. And before removing any boilerplate code, what I'm going to do is select iOS simulator. If you're not on Mac OS, then iOS simulator will not appear because it's only for Mac OS. So if you're on Windows or Linux, you can always use the Android simulator. But make sure that you have Android Studio installed. After that, we are going to go over here in the run and run without debugging. You can keep this uh, shortcut in mind, which is present here, which will help you debug your apps faster. While this is being loaded, what we can do is remove this my homepage class that we have. We don't need that and make sure to not save it. Otherwise, you know, it will give some errors while debugging over here. So you'll think that the problem is coming from the default app project, but it's because you've saved. So make sure it's unsaved over here. After that, we can make sure and ch uh, change the title, which will be Amazon clone and remove the theme data. We are going to modify it in just a bit, but you can see our app has launched. So we can see how it's looking. It's functional. That means our default project is great. So we don't need to worry about that. We can remove all the comments and here replace the text with this text, which will just give us a very bad output, which looks something like this. Great. That's what we expected. Now let's change the theme data over here. To change the theme data, we need some colors. So for colors, what we're going to do is in the lib folder, create a folder called constants. In this folder, we will have all the constant files that we have, for example, global variables or any utility files like functions that are being repeated again and again. So here we're going to create global variables dot dart file. After that is created, we can call this global variables as a class. We're not going to create any stateless or stateful widget. This class is going to contain all the static variables that we have because their value isn't going to change ever. To get the colors, what you're going to do is go to this website. I'll mention the link in the description below. This is my repository on GitHub. Then you can copy all the colors that you can see. If you want, you can also copy the static images and the category images that we are going to copy on later on. But for now, let's just copy all these colors that we can see and paste it over here. After that, what we need to do is go to the top and import material dart and all our errors go away. Then we can go in the main dot dart file and here change the theme data. But before changing the theme data, what I'm going to do is wrap my text widget with a scaffold widget just to demonstrate what we are going to change. And we can see that in action real time. So here I'm going to mention the body as this text and then obviously wrap it with a center widget so that everything comes in center. Here I'm going to press command full stop and add a const modifier wherever it asks me to. And over here as well, I'll add a const modifier and all our errors go away and just add trailing comma so that it formats the document. 
after that we can come here and you can see we are seeing a blank scaffold with just flutter demo homepage showing over here which is this text also let's just add an app bar which will be nothing but a simple app bar with the title that says text hello and then remove the constant from here and put it for the center text great and put a constant over here as well and then just save it so here we have the uh, blue app bar so the very first thing we need to do is cha change this background color i don't think we need to change it but just let's just specify in case you want to switch themes for your app or you want to make it look a bit different you can do that using the scaffold background color and use global variables dot background color so you can see if we go to the global variables class we have background color over here which is white but in case you want to change it to black then you can change it over here and save it you can see it changed to black but in this case we just want it to be white so here we have it white after that we need to add an app bar theme so the app bar theme is going to look something like elevation set to zero because all our app bars are not going to show any elevation you can see there's some elevation here we don't want any of that and we want icon theme to be icon theme data whose color will be black so all our icons that show up will be turned to black color and we want that because in case we change the app bar color which we are going to change to something gradient then we want the icon theme data to remain a constant there which will be a black color no matter what and let's just put a const over here so that all our warnings fade away in case you're wondering what why am i getting these errors side by side like this I'm using a Visual Studio Code extension for this named Lens. So if you go over here in the extensions tab and search Lens, you can see error Lens showing up and this is the, the thing that I'm using. It's really great. I would highly recommend using this. Okay, so our icons are now black. Next thing we want to do is make sure that if we add any button, it shows up as a golden color or something like that. So what we can do is just to demonstrate what I'm going to do is wrap the centered widget with a column widget and then add a button over here. So I'm going to call it elevated button on press will be nothing and the child will be a simple text saying click and we'll ignore the error warning for now warning and now if we save it you can see this is the blue color showing up we don't want that. So what we're going to do instead is in the theme data, add a color scheme. With this, we are going to specify that the color scheme is the light color. So we have color scheme dot light. And then we want to pass in the primary color, which will be global variables dot secondary color, which is almost like a golden color. And with this, our app bar and our button both have changed to golden color. So that's great. But we are obviously going to change the app bar color continuously. And we're not changing the app bar color here in the color something like this over here. Because if we specify something like that, it takes in a color argument. And we don't want to pass in a color argument. We want to pass in a linear gradient. If you go to the global variables, you can see this is the app bar gradient. And it doesn't accept any gradient. There is no way for us to pass in an app bar theme, which is of the gradient color. So we'll have to do it manually every time we use an app bar. So that's why I've not mentioned anything here, but this primary color will make sure that literally everything that shows up except the text and all of that stuff shows up as a golden color. And that's exactly what we want. Having the color set in place and the theme looking great. What we need to do now is in the left folder, I'll show you the folder structure that we're going to use. So we're going to have a features folder where we are going to have all the features that we have. For example, we have account, we have cart, we have homepage, we have order details screen, we have product details screen, we have search, we have address. Everything that is there is going to go in this features folder. So for now, we are going to have a auth screen because that's the first thing we are going to work on. And in this auth, feature we are going to have three folders again which is screen which is all the screens that the auth is going to have which is just the auth screen but in case we have many screens for example you want to divide the auth screen into login and sign up screen differently you can add both of them in this screens folder 
Then the next thing we want is widgets. So the reusable components in our auth screen and just to divide the screen into simpler parts, we're going to have widgets. And then finally, we are going to have services. This is going to contain all the business logic that we have, like going to the server, connecting with our server, uh, fetching some data, sending some API calls. All of that is going to be done in services. And now in the auth screen, we are going to go there and create auth screen dot dart file. Here we are going to import a material dart, then create a stateful widget. And then we are going to have auth screen. Pretty simple. So we have the stateful widget ready. Here we are going to return a scaffold. And now there's the main thing of our app, which is routes. So how are we going to navigate between pages in our application? We can use that using, you know, something like, you can use something like navigator, right? So we'll have navigator dot push, and then we need to pass in material page route. That's a lot of boilerplate code to write. And considering we have so many screens, it's a lot of code to write again and again. So instead, what we're going to use is named routes. So named routes are something like navigator dot push named. And then we pass in the context and the route name that we'll specify. Now, what is the problem with named routes? Yeah, we have to go in the main.dart file, set up the routes and that, that all isn't a problem. The problem is what if you want to pass in some arguments, right? So here, if we pass in some arguments and then just to accept that argument, we have to write so much of boilerplate code again, and that will be a lot of work to do. Instead, what we're going to do is go in the main.dart file and use something known as on generate route. So here I'm going to pass in the property on generate route. This on generate route will run every time we use push named route or any other named routes that we have. And it will run a callback and it will run whatever is specified to it. For that, we'll have to go to the lib folder and here create a route not create a folder, actually let's create a file called router.dart where we are going to have a function which will return a route which will be dynamic and let's just import route here. So let's import material package and then create a function called generate route. We are just creating this file so that it just is a neater way to look at it. I mean, there's no need of doing it, but it just looks neater. And here we are going to receive route settings and route settings will give us any data that is useful in uh, constructing a route. You'll see that when we use that. And then over here, we're going to have a switch and a case statement. Because we're going to have so many routes in our application, we need to match each and every route with the route that we pass in. If you don't understand, don't worry. So here in the switch, we want to pass in settings.name. So if anything, and settings is not showing up over here, so let's just take route settings. So we're going to match route settings dot name, which will be the name of the route that we specify. We need to match it with any of the cases that we have. So first case we are going to have is the auth screen. So we have auth screen, but we need to pass in a name, right? Because this is of the type string. This is not a string. This is a widget. So what we can do is pass in slash auth screen over here. Now that's a good way to do it, but even better way to do it is just go to, just copy this line, go to the auth screen and create a static variable over here at the top called static constant string route name equal to, and then pass in the auth screen route. And now we can use auth screen dot route name everywhere. So we can have auth screen dot route name. That's a cleaner way to do it. Now we don't have to write sl uh, slash auth screen everywhere in our application. Instead, just use auth screen dot route name, thus reducing our errors overall. After that, what are we going to do? Well, we want to return a material page route. That's simple, right? We already know about material page route. And then in the material page route, we want to pass in a builder, which will not do anything for us. Whatever context that it gives us, it's no use for us. And then we're going to return the auth screen. And here we have it. That's all that we need to do. And in case you want to pass in the settings as well, you can just pass in route settings. And in case you want to remove this error, what you can do is pass in default over here. So this will run whenever any of the routes that we have over here, that the name that we have do, do, doesn't match any of the cases that we have. So I'll just copy this. And instead of 
actually let's remove this and instead of showing the auth screen what i'm going to do is create my own custom error so here what i'm going to have is a scaffold which will have a body centered saying that the screen does not exist or wrong page error 404 you can style it according to your ways and needs but i'm just going to go with this i'm not going to spend much time on that after that we have the on generate route property done so here i'm going to take settings which will be received by the on generate route which will be given actually and then we are going to use generate route make sure to import this package route dot dot and then pass in the settings that we receive and there we have it now if i take this elevated button and use navigator dot push name and then pass in the route name which is auth screen dot route name and now let's just restart the application and if i click over here and we don't get tr transition to the next page and that's simply because we have this error saying that the context used to push or pop routes from the navigator must be that of a widget that is a descendant of the navigator widget basically what we need to do now is just wrap the elevated button with a builder and that should do the task for us so if i restart the application click on click and you can see we are transitioned to the router uh, sorry to the auth screen dot dot file because we haven't specified anything great so that now that it works let's just remove this home thing because we don't want that it's just for demo purposes so i'm going to remove that and instead pass in auth screen obviously we are going to have some logic in the home later on when we have the home screen ready as well just to process the state of our application but we'll look into that later so one step at a time now let's just click close the router dot dot file and the global variables and go to the auth screen now let's design this empty screen with the login ui that we want all right so now with me i have the screenshot of the app that we are going to build so this is just the home screen layout let's break it down and then build the ui for this so first of all the first thing to notice is that they are in a column widget because there is a welcome text let me just take this over here we have the welcome text then we have a radio button which is this button we have the radio button over here which will which when clicked will give us the form that we have with the name email and password if we click on sign in over here it will give us the form that will tell us that this is the uh, name uh, email and password that's required so let's build it out very first thing to notice should be that we are not putting welcome over here so we are using a safe area widget so let's go to the scaffold and in the body pass in safe area now it will not our welcome text is not going to appear somewhere over here it's going to appear somewhere over here we have eliminated that ui bug so to say after that we are going to have a column and then we are going to have children in that and the first child that we have is a text which will just say welcome so let's create a welcome text and it's going to be a constant we already know that because it's just because it's just a text saying that yeah it's welcome and it's static nothing is changing over here so after creating that let's see if we're outputting very good and you can see there's some padding constantly over here in this side so let's wrap our column with the padding widget so we have padding and we'll just put eight that looks good great now you will also notice that the color over here is somewhat grayish and in the form that it's selected it's going to show up white so let's pass in the background color as global variables dot background color gray background color sorry and yep this looks great now let's just increase the font size of welcome so we'll have style not strut style style which will be text style of font size 22 and font weight of font weight dot w500 you can test out all the values and then come to the conclusion whatever you want but yeah we have this welcome text showing up now let's create this radio button kind of looking thing which is this widget and then if it's selected then we are going to show this so let's first of all create these two radio buttons so to create these two radio buttons what we are going to have in the text widget is a list style pretty simple a list style 
which will have a title saying constant text create account with a style of textile font weight dot bold we are not going to increase any uh, font size because it's looking good to me and we have the create account now let's add the radio button so in the list style widget we are going to pass in the leading property which will be radio and here we are going to have an active color so let's pass in global variables dot secondary color then we add the value and here we are going to create an enum for the value so let's go right at the top outside of the stateful widget class that we have and here we are going to create an enum which will be called auth and here we'll pass in sign in and sign up basically this enum will keep track of the radio button that we are on and will give the value to our radio button so here we'll have auth dot sign up as a value because whenever we click this radio button we want the value to be auth dot sign up and the group value is of the type auth so let's go at the top and initialize this enum so we'll call auth auth equal to auth dot sign up with this we are basically telling that this is the instance of our auth enum which will be the group value and the sign up auth dot sign up will basically tell that yeah this is the default value that we want so whenever we land on this page we want the sign up screen to show up if you want you can pass this as sign in but it wouldn't make sense for a new user and then pass in group value as the instance variable of the auth class or the auth enum sorry then we want to pass in an on change property which will give us a value of type auth and let's just call it value great now this data type is because we have passed in the group value and the value as auth dot sign up in case we change any of them this value will also change and here what i'm going to do is set state and set a global variable that is auth equal to the value that's given and just pass in a semicolon but you can see ah uh, let's just keep it in val because this is the parameter and you can see a value of type auth can't be assigned to a variable of type auth so we just need to make sure that it can never be null great so we have this list style ready now if we go over here this list style shows up and it's selected as well because we have passed in auth dot sign up as a value in case you want to change we can just pass in auth dot sign in and restart the application and you can see it's not selected now let's change it back now after having that let's just copy this list style and paste it again and this will be the sign in part so we'll call this sign in you can see that's the name over here and with a full stop yep and then we need to scroll down and in the radio button change the value to auth dot sign in and save it now we have the sign in app ready as well and it's showing checked over here because we had changed and we are not restarted the application so let's just restart it and yep we have create account showing up now we need to show the form that we have now how do we show the form let's work on the uh, form part first and then we can change the color and stuff so whenever we click on this create account we need to make sure this is up, uh, visible otherwise this is visible and we are going to make use of this auth variable that we are so what are we going to do is in the list style here we are going to check if auth enum variable is equal to auth dot sign up then we want to show something so what is that something going to be well it's going to be a form which will have a key so let's pass in a key with this form we are going to make validations in our application so if the user clicks on sign up it will give us proper errors that yeah name is not entered email is not entered password is not entered and any other validations that you want to perform so this form is a great widget so we want to pass in a key and we have to create a global key right at the top to use it so here we can come and create final 
sign up form key and this will be equal to the global key which will be of the generic type form state and that's it and as we are right at the top here let's create one for sign in form key as well because we are going to do something similar for sign in so let's create that and keep now we can copy this go over here pass in the sign up form key and now we need a child now what is a child going to be well it's pretty simple right a column widget which all with all these text field inputs so we're going to pass in column and here we're going to have three fields so instead of just reusing the widget again and again i mean writing the code for one text field then again writing then copying it and pasting it for another we're going to create a widget for it which will be reusable you can put it in this widgets folder but i know that in future we're going to use this text field input everywhere in our application so what i'm going to do is in the lib folder create a folder called common which will describe all the common things that we have and let me just rename it so we have common and this common will have widgets it will contain anything that you want which is common like you know some other view or some other widget anything then it will have custom text field or dart here it will import material dart create a stateless widget call it custom text field and here return a text form field why are we using text form field instead of this text field widget because we are going to use validator with this validator we are going to make validations and if any of the error that gets thrown it will be called by the form and it will throw that error on the screen which is great after that we need to pass in a controller so we have to accept that from the constructor then i'll accept it later on then we have to pass in some decoration and how is it going to look like so we want some borders to show up so in the decoration we are going to have input decoration then we'll have border equal to constant outline input border because we want the border to show up as the outline then we want a border side which will be border side and let's give a custom color for it let's say say colors dot black and you can pick any shade that you want i'm just going to go with 38 then i can copy this border pass in the enabled border and this is going to be the same thing as this one and then we need to pass in validator so we have the validator here we're going to get a value and then we're going to return something we'll put the validations later on let's just accept the controller from now for now so we have final text editing controller taken the controller accept it from the constructor now let's just take this controller paste it over here and i'm not going to resolve any of the warnings that i see over here because i know later on we want this to be constant because this is going to change and let's just put a custom text field over here let's have it and we are not able to type because we would have to pass in that that in children so we now have custom text field and pass in the controller let's create a controller right at the top so we have final text editing controller so what controllers do we need well first of all we need email controller which will be equal to text editing controller and the thing to note here is that this email controller and the password controller are going to be used in both sign up and sign in because you'll see that later on i'll show you a demo of why we are doing that then we have password controller and then we have the name controller all right now having that let's just create the dispose method right itself so that we don't have any memory leaks and you know all that sort of things so we'll have this and dispose this controller and i'm going to do that two more times for password and name controller great now we can go down and pass in the controller so the very first controller that we want to pass in is the email controller because we want to pass in email so we have that and we see that over here now only thing that is different here is that the name is showing up here 
so that is the hint text so we can go over here take in the hint text from the input decoration and this hint text is going to be from the constructor as well so we have final string hint text and now in case you don't want to type it again and again you can click on this bell icon and allow actually bulb icon and then click on generate constructor pass in the hint text over here great now we'll pass in hint text here and the hint text what is the hint text going to be well it's just going to be a email great if i restart this let's restart the application you can see email showing up now if i click over here you can see our validation logic is also working i mean switching the radio buttons because when i change this form doesn't show up now let's create one more which is for the name one so i'll create it at top and we'll have name pass in the controller as the name controller and also a sized box and the height we'll specify is 10 again we'll take this and paste it down here for password so we have password and pass in password controller looks great now let's add a bit of padding over here because you can see it's way too outside and we want just and we want it to be a little bit inside so what i'm going to do is wrap this form with a container and why are we doing container and not padding widget because we want to specify the color as well because you can see that the color here is just like the background color but over here it's white color so what are we going to have well a padding widget which will be constant edge inserts dot all 8 then we want to pass in a color and the color is going to be global variables dot background color because we want it to be white right and here we have it now this looks very bad compared to this and that's mainly because this color that we have you can see this is also white but this is not white and we'll do that logic later on but for now let's create the sign up button so for sign up button again we are going to create a custom button because we are going to use that button again and again throughout our application and not just in auth section we are going to import material dot take a stateless widget call it custom button and then we are going to return an elevated button now how is this elevated button going to be like well first it will have a child of text saying yeah we want to pass in some text which we'll accept from the constructor then we want an on tap actually on pressed over here and then we want that from the constructor as well and then the style how is this going to look like well it's going to have certain size because if we put it now it will not have a correct size it will just be very small so what are we going to do elevated button dot style from pass in the minimum size which is going to be of the type size pass first we need to pass in the width so the width is going to be double dot infinity whatever and how much ever space we get and then 50 which is the height it is going to be a constant because this is a height 50 now let's accept some things from the constructor so what are we going to have well first of all a final string text then a void callback which will be on tap and then finally yep that's it and now let's take this bell icon or alarm icon a bulb icon sorry take this on press pass in the on tap and yep looks good let's take this custom button go to the auth screen pass in a sized box again it's always pa a good to pass in a sized box instead of a container because it can be a constant container can never be a constant and with this constant it makes sure that the widget doesn't rebuild so a uh, height doesn't rebuild it doesn't affect the performance of the app too much but it's increasing it uh, which is good then we can take this custom button 
pass in the text so we want the text to be sign up and let me put it in the string sign up and the on tab is going to consist of the validation logic again meaning calling the form key using the form key which is over here and then performing all the validation in the, in the text field great now if we go over here we have the sign up button and it looks and it looks great now let's change the color over here so let's go at the top and here in the list tile we are going to pass in the tile color now what do we want whenever this button is selected we want to show it as white otherwise we want to show it as this gray background color if we take this example you can see since this part is selected everything over here is white but everything over here is gray so here we are going to check if auth is equal to auth dot sign up so if the auth variable that we have which we are changing every time over here is equal to sign up then we want to use global variables dot background color otherwise we are going to use global variables dot gray background color now if we go over here you can see it's looking great now only thing is let's just shift this welcome text over here so in the column we are going to have cross axis alignment as cross axis alignment dot start and save it now it looks similar to this awesome now let's just do the same thing for sign in you can see when we click over here we see nothing what we need to do is just copy this container that we have created we can copy that and paste it down in the list tile below below the list tile and here let's go over here and we'll have auth dot sign in the container is not going to have any property named name so let's remove that we're going to have email and password and the controllers are going to remain same we are not going to change the controllers for email and password because see in case if a user is logging in but by mistakes doesn't see this create account and passes in some email like test at the rate gmail.com pass in, in the password as test123 then decides oh yeah i changed it i mean i want to sign in then we can click on sign in and directly this text field will have the values that we passed in earlier in this create account so that's what we're going to do so we'll have sign in over here we're not passing in on tab for any of that we'll perform that logic later on but for now we have a basic understanding of what's happening here also let's just go at the top copy the list style color property and pass in for the sign in block and here change it to auth dot sign in yep now let's restart our application and see how it's looking we add the create account if i click over here i have the sign in showing up suppose i pass in test at the rate gmail.com pass in test one two three and then i decide oh sorry i need to sign in and we have all the test all the properties that we passed in over here the same as here great now the next thing is whenever we click over here we want to send the data to server i mean of course we're going to perform some validations but before that we but after that we're going to send some data to our server now how are we going to create a server we are going to use node.js for this the most common question for beginners is what is node.js and why should we use it well before node javascript could not be used as a general purpose programming language it was limited to what the browser allowed to do this means javascript only worked on the client side and could not be used to make something like a web server with introduction of node.js this completely changed using javascript developers could write code for server even command line prompts but we are not going to talk about them in this tutorial node.js is built on top of the v8 engine the same javascript engine that is used in chrome it's mainly written in c++ thus it's pretty fast and used in production let's go to their official website nodejs.org link is mentioned in the description below check it out the javascript environment provides access to built in libraries and objects so that it can interact and make our code work
All right, now let's just install Node.js in our system. So here we have two options and if you're on Windows, it will show Windows over here. If you're on different version of Mac OS, it will show you something else, not x64. So here it shows us two options to install it. Either we can use the LTS version, which stands for long term support, or we can use the current version. We are going to use the current version, which is 18.1.0. If you're seeing this in the future, then there are chances of this getting increased and you and you're good to follow along with this tutorial as long as you have 18.1.0 or higher on your machine. Now let's install this and wait for it to get installed to our system. All right, so the installation has gotten over and if I see over here, it's mentioned in the downloads. I just have to double click on this and here it will ask me certain stuff. I'll just click on continue, continue, agree to it, again continue, then click on install. And here I need to enter my password after entering the password, it is validating all the packages and it has installed Node.js version 18.1 and NPM. We'll talk about NPM later, but here we have it installed. All right. Now having that in place, make sure to keep this in mind. Uh, you can just save it somewhere because if it's not installed, then you'll have to manually install this in your path and then the Node.js will be installed. Now let's move this installer to bin and close this and go to our terminal and here just to verify if it's uh, if it has been installed we can type node do, node dash dash version and here you can see version 18.1.0 if it's not showing the current version that means node has not been installed you have to do some path configurations make sure to do that and then it will show up this version all right after having that in place we need to go to our project and here to get node.js, what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's close this lib folder and here we are going to create a separate folder called server. Let me just rename it. And in this server folder, we are going to do all of our tasks. So I'll right click on this and open it in integrated terminal. We have the server folder here and make sure to always keep this terminal open so that we can migrate and do our task quickly. So now to initialize Node.js in our project, this is a Flutter project and in here we have created a server folder which will contain all the server files that we need. So here what we need to do just to initialize Node in our project in the server folder, we can run npm init. And after we do that, npm stands for Node Package Manager. We'll look into that in a second. But while we initialize this, you can see it asks us for certain stuff. We don't have to enter any of this unless you want to change package name, which you're already familiar with. Even in Flutter, we are familiar with package names. For example, if you go to the Android manifest.xml file, you'll find the package name of our project over here. So we are familiar with that. So we want nothing different than the package name it provides us by a default. So I'm just going to click on enter without entering anything. Then the version is going to be one. I'm going to manually type enter. Then the description, I don't want to add any description. I can click on enter and the entry point. This is going to be index.js file. So entry point is basically whenever we start the server, it will start by running this file, which is index.js, which we will have to create. I can click on enter because that's what I want. And then finally I can click on enter for this, 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 and this. And if this is okay for us, then we should type in nothing but just press enter. And we have node installed in our uh, server folder. If we click over here, you can see package.json file. So what is this package.json file? This package.json file is similar to the pubspec.yaml file. It contains all the information about our application, like the name of it, the version, the description, the main or the entry point of our project then the scripts we are going to make sure that we change it a bit but this scripts will ensure that we can run terminal commands from here just to get the server started author license and there's other thing called dependencies when we install one of the dependencies just like we do in pubspec.yaml file over here we have dependencies and we install them like http module Similar to that, we are going to install package uh, dependencies in package.json file. 
and we are going to have deb dependencies as well just like we have in pubspec.yaml file if you want to do integration testing or widget testing you have to add depend dev dependencies you have to add pa in package.json any developer dependencies that you need and we are going to install dependencies with node package manager as i said we'll look into that in a bit but for now let's just write the first script in node.js so here i'm going to create index.js file and in case you don't want to name this index.js file and change the entry point of your file you can just edit it over here and it will make sure that this index.js file doesn't run but instead what you've entered runs after having that what we can do is just write console.log hello world so this is the very first script that we are going to write hello world and console.log basically means we are printing it out on the terminal so this is similar to print hello world in dart so after saving it what you need to do is run node and then you can just pass in a full stop just to run this whole folder or otherwise you can mention the file you want to run so node index.js and you can see it prints out hello world so this is a very first script that we've written out and we're going to write much much bigger scripts than this all right now you can see over here we are using extension of js as i said node is not a programming language it is just a javascript environment and we are using javascript to write our code all of the code is going to be in javascript but you don't need to know any syntax for javascript you just need to be clear with certain concepts which uh, is covered in dart all right now having understood how to write the very first script in node.js let's understand something about dependencies so what are dependencies in node.js in flutter or in any other programming languages well software dependency is an external standalone library that can be organized into packages to perform specific tasks if you see over here it's written search packages and the full form of npm is node package manager not this it keeps on changing so with this npm website if you go on this link is mentioned in the description below if you go over here you'll see that we can search for packages and well install any of them just like we have pub.dev you can see we have npmjs.com with this we can install any node package and over here we can install any dart or flutter package that we want so here we are going to type in some packages that we are going to use well first of all let's just type in http you can see it gives us results of multiple http packages so here we have http this is the one we are going to use and it gives a whole document of what is http well it was la it was published 2 years ago it is public this is a description and then we uh, it tells us how we can install this so we have to do npm i which stands for install http then it is the github repository if you click over here this is the code then this is the home page then these are the weekly downloads so right now it is on 146000 and you can try and run it on run kit but we are not going to do that so to install this so we are going to install in uh, http later on but for now let's just ignore it and now let's go to the another package that we are going to use which is express if you click over here we have express now what is express it's a this is the package that our whole app is going to rely on and you can see it is published 9 days ago we can install it using this and there are these many weekly downloads which is 21 million weekly downloads and you can see the graph as well so express is just a prebuilt node.js framework that will help us in creating server side web applications faster and even smarter it's very simple and minimal and since it's a package it's going to reduce our workload and it's going to be really helpful for us we are going to install this other package that we are going to use is mongoose what is mongoose well mongoose is a mongodb object modeling tool designed to work in an asynchronous environment it provides both promises and callbacks what now before understanding what this means we need to understand what are promises 
promises is a very complex topic in javascript for some people but promises are basically like futures in dart nothing i mean there's a bit of difference but the main idea is that it has to wait before it can the main idea for both of them the promises and futures is that they don't have to wait for the asynchronous code to work and instead make other part of the code work so that there's no delay in the application and thus user doesn't face any difficulties and we are going to use mongodb now what is mongodb basically it's a database it is going to store all the data that we need it's not like firebase i mean there are many many more features in firebase as a whole but it can be compared to firebase firestore so we are going to install that so let's quickly install all of these three dependencies so we'll do npm install even this can work and even npm i can work and then we need to install http express and mongoose you can all write all of them in a single line without the need of commas just a space and it will install it you don't have to go to the package.json like you do in pubspec.yaml file and just add dependencies tag over here and pass in something like this we don't need to do that we just need to run this command and it will install it for us so if i click on enter now you can see it has been installed again if you don't have node it won't work for you because it won't identify npm kind of terminal input and now if we go to package.json you can see dependencies over here there is express http and mongoose installed with the latest versions that you can see which is 6.3.2 you have yav it then for express you'll find the same in case you want to install dependencies with the same version you can do what you can do is npm install mongoose for example at 6.3.2 and it will make sure mongoose is installed at that particular version now i've told to you about express but now let me show you a quick syntax of express and how are we going to do that so now after writing our first script in node.js let's quickly write our first api in node.js so let me just quickly type in a comment for creating an api and now as i said we are going to create an api and we are going to use node.js for it uh, and we are going to use express for it so here i'm going to have constant express which is equal to require express now since this is an external package installed from a, another website which is npm js usually you only need that so we have required express if you don't understand the syntax it's similar to import line in flutter uh, like we have import let's say package express express dot dart this is similar to this line in flutter all right and you can name this anything you don't necessarily have to name it express if you want you can just write your abc and it will require express for you in the form of abc now you can use abc to use express anywhere in your application but since we are using express and if the app gets larger it will be a problem so let's write the correct names for it now we can take this express and now let's initialize express and save it in a variable so we will have constant let's say app which will be equal to express we are basically just initializing this and saving it in the app variable nothing really great and this is constant constant meaning that the variable is never going to change because it's a constant now we can use this app and do app dot listen so this app dot listen basically binds itself with the host that we are going to specify and listen for any other connections so now we have to pass in first of all the port so let's create a variable right at the top so that you know it's visible to us and in case we want to change it we don't have to scroll down as and when our app gets bigger so you have constant port equal to 3000 you can mention any number but 3000 is sort of like a convention so we can just take that and we'll have port now if we don't specify any other host name over here for example any ip address 
so it will access something known as local host and we can access our own api using local host now what is local host so suppose you call an ip address on your computer the ip address is basically some random string that you'll find like 192.991 something like that you have seen that number on your computer multiple times so whenever you call an ip address you're trying to compute contact another computer on the internet but when you call the ip address like 127.0.0.1 then you're communicating with the local host it means that the computer is talking to itself so if we don't specify anything it will take in local host now we are going to specify an ip address which is 0.0.0.0 which stands for it can be accessed from anywhere so this is 0.0.0 .0 .0. And we need, and the reason we need to specify this IP address is because on Android emulators or even on Android devices, if we use localhost, it won't work. On iOS emulators, it does work, but for some reason, Android is not able to take in localhost, and instead we need to work using our own IP addresses just for debugging. When you deploy it to a website. Then it will make sure to give you a URL which you can use. But for now, we are just going to pass in 0.0.0. .0. After that, we need a callback function. We are pretty familiar with the callback functions. And this is how we would create it in Dart because this is a syntax in Dart. But in JavaScript, either you can have function over here because essentially it's a callback function. Or otherwise, you can remove this and make it like an arrow function. So this is also a function in Dart, in JavaScript, sorry. So you, the, you can do this or pass in function over here, but not both at the same time, otherwise it will give you an error. And now just to see if it's connected to our port, what we can do is again print it out using console.log and then we can say connected at port plus whatever port that we have. And now this will work fine. So if I just run it again using node index.js, you can see the server has started. It has printed out hello world and it's listening to any connection requests that we will get. Now, as this works well, I don't want to, you know, have a plus sign over here anywhere in my application. It's a pretty bad way of doing it. In Dart, we use string interpolation. So, you know, we have port like this. And we then we don't have to pass in the plus. Now you can't do this in Dart in JavaScript. Sorry. So to do it in JavaScript, what you need to do is enter backtick over here, which is present below the escape key and even here. Now we have it. Now we can use this, but still it's not highlighting it to highlight it. You just need to pass in curly brackets and there you have it. It's connected at port and it is going to return the same output. But now it's, it just looks cleaner. Now, if I exit my listen command in node index.js and run the index.js file again, you can see hello world and connected at port 3000. Now let's create our first API request. But before doing that, I want to introduce you with another dependency, which is a dev dependency. As you can see, after making some changes, I have to restart my whole server. So for example, I have to terminate this again, run it again, terminate this again, run it. So it's a lot of effort for us. What if we just make a minor change? For example, I want to add a space here and then maybe type in hello. Then just for this change, I have to run my terminal again. So instead of doing that, what we can do is add another dev dependency, which is node node mon. If I click over here, and pass in nodemon you can see here we have nodemon it is published 10 days ago with 4 million weekly downloads so we are going to install this so we are going to have nodemon sorry npm install nodemon and now we want is i want it as a dev dependency it's not anywhere in my application for example 
we are going to use express in our code but you're not going to use node mon anywhere in our code it's just for our benefit as a developer so what i'm going to do is pass in dash dash save dev with this it will save it as a developer dependency and now if i click on enter it installs it for us if we go to package.json you can see we have as a dev dependency node mon now that we have package.json installed what we can do is node mon instead of running node index.js we are going to run node mon index.js and you can see when we run it it is saying command not found node mon this is because we have to add an additional script for it node was installed in our system files node mon isn't so now what we need to do is go in the scripts and add a script well the first script we are going to add is a dev dev script and here we are going to pass in node mon dot slash index dot js basically when we run this command dev which is short for npm run dev which is here when we whenever we run npm run dev it will make sure to run this command instead and then it will run the app for us so i'm going to save this much and now run npm run dev and you can see server has started and it's saying node mon with the version number to restart anytime enter rs so if i just enter rs it will restart but even if i make certain changes for example i type hello here and i save you can see without me typing rs whenever the file is saved it will make sure to restart our whole server and now it will also print the correct thing like hello now we don't have to manually exit the terminal and restart our server and now since we have added dev dependency let's add for a start dependency so whenever we run something like let me close the terminal something like npm start then we need to make sure that we run node dot slash index dot js we are not going to need this during development or debugging but during installation but during deployment to the server this is going to be of a great use so let's exit this and if i click on npm start you can see it has started node but it has not started node mon i'll exit this clear off the terminal and run npm run dev now we are listening to everything so let's create an api finally so we to create an api well you might know that apis have get request put request post request delete and update which is basically crud create write create read update delete so let's create an api for get request nothing much uh, we are going to look after put post delete and update as well but for now let's look at get because for post there are certain things that we need to provide in case we want to see a great output but now for now what i want to do is whatever api that i create i want to go there it will provide me with a link i mean the link will be our own ip address so whenever we go to that link since it's a get request it's going to give us something right because it is going to fetch some data so whenever i go to that link i need to see let's say hello world again so now what i'm going to do is app dot get and that's it that's how easy it is now app dot get and then we need to specify what path should it be for example how is our api going to look like so for example this is going to be http colon slash slash then our ip address then slash now if we do this much you know it will create a slash api uh, get request but what do i want i just want to have a path name of let's say hello world so now i have to type in hello world over here and then obviously a callback function and again just to remind you this is how we create functions in javascript otherwise you can just use the function keyword and remove this arrow symbol and now this callback function 
is going to run whenever we reach this path on this IP address that we enter. So for now, let's just say, and here we are going to have request comma result. So with request, we can access anything that the user provides us with, for example, body or anything. But in get request, I don't think there's any body, but we have result. So what do we want to output on the screen? What do we want to send as a result? So what do we need to do? Well, we are going to send res dot and you can see it provides us with a bunch of options. For now, let's use res dot send. Otherwise, you can use res dot json. The difference is that sends send will send it in a basic text format and json is going to send a json response nothing new we are going to use res.json throughout our application but for now just to demonstrate i can use res.send and then pass in some body so for the body what i'm going to pass in hello world and now this will give me an error because well we need to pass in something right it's not a number we can send a number but we are not passing in a number we are passing in a string and as we know it just to pass in a string we need to pass in double quotes or a single quote anything and now if i save this you see it has been converted to double ticks or double inverted commas and that's because of the prettier format prettier formatter in vs code extension so if you go to the extensions tab and find prettier you can see prettier code formatter and it will format all our code so you can install that now our api our first ever api cre is created it's not giving us any error there are no syntax errors as of now so what we can do is test our application but to test our application we have to specify our ip address which we will do later on but for now since we are not testing on any simulator i can just remove this ip address we are going to add it back don't worry but for now let's just to demonstrate i am going to go to the website with localhost so here i'm going to open google chrome and i'm going to have localhost and then pass in the port name localhost port name with a colon localhost 3000 slash now if i just do this much you can see cannot get slash now this is actually a great indication because it has finally said that it cannot get any slash request that means our server is running it is listening to api calls but we have not created an api call for slash now let's sp specify the path name that we had hello world and now if we do this much it gives us hello world and just to see what we will get if we pass in json then we need to pass in an object over here and what is the object going to be well it's going to be named something like let's say hi and we're going to call it hello world now if i restart this you can see we are getting a json format with hi as a key and hello world as a parameter and i'm getting this formatted because of an extension that i'm using if you click over here i have the json formatter extension you can download it if you're on chrome i'm using the json format extension and that is why it's coming as a formatted string great now this is working now what i want you to do as an exercise is create a get slash request so without having to look at this code just try to write it on your own with whatever you've understood so this is your exercise you can create a get request giving a json response with key of name and value of your name basically i want the format json to look something like slash with the key as the name and the value as rivan for me it's rivan because it's my name you can pass in any name that you have so I want you to have this kind of response. Were you able to do it? If not, then no problem. But if yes, congratulations, you've created your own re request or API on your own. So now just to demonstrate quickly, we are going to create an app.get with slash as a path and then a callback function, which would be request response. And then 
I'm just going to type in not console dot log res dot json, and then the name is going to be Rivan. And save this much. Now, if I restart the browser, I'm getting Rivan with the name property over here. Great. Now, let me remove the comments quickly. You can already see the problem over here. As and when we have more and more API requests, you can see with two, it feels clouded to me. So as and when we get more and more API requests, for example, we have so many features in our application like authentication, admin sided features, products, user, the home screen that we want to see, the product details that we want to see the product that we want to add there are going to be so many requests in all and it's going to be very congested to put them in a single file so to put them in different files what are we going to do just to make our code look neater and when there are multiple people working on it it will be a great relief for them nobody likes to see you know like a hundreds like a hundred thousand line of code put together i'm i'm not saying we are going to have that much code but as if you want to extend this app, it might go to that extent. So now what are we going to do? Well, before doing that, let's just remove all the unnecessary things. Now we are familiar with everything. Let me also remove these two get requests because we don't need that. And now our app is looking great. So now how do we manage different requests? Now we can take this express, take this app, create this again, use this app dot listen in every file that we use. Now this is going to be pretty hectic and we need to run those files individually. We don't want that. We want, we just want to run this index.js file, which will trigger, trigger all the other files. So for that, first of all, let's go to the server, create a routes folder where all our routes are going to be set up. Then we are going to create a file called, let's say auth.js, which is a very first file and the functionality we are going to add in just five minutes or so. First of all, let's ex require express. I mean, <laughs> that's the first thing we need to do, but we don't need any of this. All right. No, no uh, express initialization or listening to anything. We are already listening it over here. Now we are going to create a router. Now with this router, we'll be able to use that instead of this app instance or the express instance saved in app. So what I'm saying is we're going to create an auth router. Let's name it that. And we are going to require it from, and what is this auth router going to be? Well, we are going to use express for it, but we're not going to initialize it using express. Otherwise we'll have to listen it. What we need to do is express dot router. And this, with this, we have access to the express router and we can use auth router now instead of app. Now, instead of doing app dot, our app looks better. So now if I do app router dot get, you can see we are not getting any suggestions for it because dot router shouldn't be initialized like this. It's going to be a function here. We are just storing the address of this router in auth, auth router. We don't want that. We want to use the functionality of auth router, uh, auth router. That's why we are going to now have parameters passed over here. So we are going to have app router dot get, and now we also get the auto complete. And after using auth router dot get, we can, let's say pass in slash user. Now we are again going to have request response. All of this doesn't change. And we are going to return, let's say rest dot JSON message. Revan and that's it. Now, if we go to slash user, we are not going to get anything. For example, if I go over here and pass in slash user, you can see cannot get slash user, even though we created a router over here because this index.js file doesn't know what this auth.js is or what it's doing because we have not required it from anywhere. Index.js basically doesn't even know its existence. So what do we need to do? Well, make sure it knows its existence, right? So what are we going to do? Require this auth router. So what are we going to do? Well, let me add some comments just to 
tell you this part is going to consist of all the imports from packages here we are going to have imports from other files and this is all the initializations I'm going to pass in as init. So this is going to consist of all the initializations. Now let's import from other files. So we have constant auth router equal to require. And now we are going to do relative importing. Just like in flutter, we have to directly do flutter, let's say package flutter slash we have let's say screens slash auth dot dart file we have to do something similar to this but in case you've noticed one thing in flutter you what you can do alternatively is if you're in the lib folder and let's say you're in the main dot dart file and you want to get auth screen dot dart what you can do is import dot slash features slash auth slash screens slash auth screen dot dot this is called relative importing so you have to import according to where you are in your project uh, we are going to do something similar in this because node.js doesn't have the other type of importing or even javascript so now we are going to have require and we are going to require from let me close the lib folder and where are we? We are in the index.js file. We want to get to the auth.js file. So what are we going to do? Dot slash routes slash auth. And then you can pass in .js, but it's not mandatory. You can pass in as auth and it will recognize that you want the JS extension. And then we can save this much. Let's remove this comment. And now we have it. Now still we won't be able to access it you can see and it's not giving us any error but this auth router doesn't even exist for us because these are all private you can consider them as private they, they can be used this variable can be used only in this file not outside this file to access it outside this file we need to export this file or this variable to export this variable what we need to do is module dot exports equal to auth router with this basically you are telling that yeah auth router is not just a private file i mean not a private variable it can be used anywhere in the application so we can save this much and now we have auth router existing i mean still the api won't work because we need to do other configurations as well we need to add something known as middleware now to understand the concept of middleware well we need to understand what exactly are we going to achieve well we have our client side which is flutter and from client side we are going to send data to server side and then with that server is going to return something to client side because we are going to send res.json somewhere so it's going to return something from the server side as well and again going to the client side and there it stops it's not continuous listening because if you want to use continuous listening, we are going to use socket IO for that. It's not in this tutorial. You can check out my other tutorials where I've used socket IO, which is real time communication. So here, as I was explaining, we have client and we're sending data to server. But what if I want to manipulate the data that we're sending? Suppose we send some data. We have a very large team and some person sends some data. He doesn't know what format do we have to send it in well we can specify that format using middleware so this middleware is going to come in over here client sends data to server but this middleware is going to come in middle of client and server and we can use anything that we want so here we are going to have a middleware of app.use this is how you use middleware in node.js applications so what are we going to use auth router and now our f our index.js or our node.js application knows about the existence of auth router or this auth.js file as a whole because we are using auth router everywhere in case you use something else it won't know and it won't use any of that but we are going to use auth router because that's what we are exporting here 
in case you want to export multiple things you have to create an object or a map in dart so here you have to create an object and then you have to pass in something else as that else that you want to access for example you want to pass in your name so you can pass in name like this and pass in rivan if you're wondering why we don't have to mention colon over here that's because it's a short hat syntax if i type over here auth router it will do the same thing that it did earlier but this is just a same way if your key and your value variable is matching you can use this short hand syntax but over here we don't have both of them matching in case i store this rivan in another variable then this name can be used like this but since we don't have this external variable it won't do anything all right now let's just remove this objects and instead use auth router we are going to use objects in somewhere in our application but for now we are just going to have auth router all right now if i restart you can see this site cannot be reached because we are we are getting an error over here cannot access app before initialization as the error suggests we have app initialization over here but we are using middleware over here so let's take this init and put it at the top and now connected at port 3000 we are not getting any error and now let's restart the application and here we have it message rivan now after understanding middleware and all of that stuff finally we can dive in auth.js file and create our sign up and login functionalities so now let's just remove this auth router get request because we don't need that and now create a post request we need to add post because we need to post to our database we are sending a post request from our client side so that we can sign up so we have the slash api slash sign up route it's good to have slash api over here because you are going to have admin panel in our application as well so whenever we use admin admin functionality is going to be like slash admin slash whatever feature that we have or whatever api that we are creating so we are putting slash api over here so that it's you know better to read on later on now i'm going to have rec res and then create a callback function we have done that already multiple times after that let's decide what do we want to do well first of all we want to get the data from the client right because we want the username email password all of that then we need to post that data in database if you look at it from top these are the two things that we need to do and then finally the third thing is just to return that data to the user so that we can save that data in the client side as well so that we don't have to you know manually do something or let the user know that yeah we have successfully done our job so now we need to get the data from the client now how do we get data from the client to get the data from the client it's pretty simple just to demonstrate i'm going to print this out what you need to do is rec dot body as you might have seen in the client side as well whenever you want to pass data in a post request you pass in a body and now to get the body we have to pass in rec dot body if this isn't clear to you when we go to the client side and pass in the body you'll understand what this reg dot body is and i'll explain it to you again later on but basically from now for your what we are telling is to get some data from reg dot body and now what do we want to do we want to access certain things from reg dot body well what is it going to be e name email and password because that's what we need to accept while signing up right we created those text fields now let's get them now whatever we pass in reg dot body is going to be a map because let me just show it to you now itself otherwise it will be impossible for me to explain it to you so your whenever we pass in the body from the client side we are going to have something like name and then the name variable or the name editing controller dot text dot whatever the function that we have so we have to pass this name and let's put an inverted comma this is what we are sending from the client side and similar to that we are going to have email and password given out as well 
these are the three things that we are going to send so now to access this map that we are going to send we are using reg dot body but with reg dot body we are going to get this object now this object or a map in dart we need to accept one of these you know uh properties so like we want name separately in a different variable email in a different variable map password in a different variable so now a shorthand syntax for that in javascript is using const which is just a modifier and then we pass in the curly brackets and then pass in whatever properties that we have name email and password these are the properties and we pass in the same thing so we have name comma email comma password equal to reg dot body and now we have access to all of them but make sure whenever we use this variable we need to make sure these are matching with these keys or properties in our object otherwise it will give us an error so with this we have access to name email and password now we got the data from the client so let's remove that comment next thing is post that data in database so for that we need to uh, get we need to make connection to our database now to make connection to our database again we'll have to go to index.js and here use mongoose with mongoose as i told it's going to help us with mongodb functions so let's just require this and then use that so now we have to make some connections so now here i can just type in connections and then i can have mongoose dot connect and then it will accept a uri which we have to connect to our database when we go there we'll find that out and then finally we have to pass in a then function because as you can see because this is a promise or a future so we need to pass in dot then you have seen the syntax in dart and it's similar to that otherwise you can just use await as well but since we are not in any function any no, none of the function is asynchronous because you're not in any function we have to use dot then and it will give us some value and then we need to make sure that we type it connection successful and if you think there is any error anymore you can just pass in catch and then we can have e and then we can just print that out as well so we have console.log e if you want you can just ignore this but no problem and here you can see we are already getting an error the uri parameter to open uri must be a string got undefined and undefined so undefined in javascript is basically when no value is assigned to any variable or an object before using it so here we have not assigned anything that's why we are not getting any uh, you know we are getting this error now we need the url and for url we need to go to the mongodb website so now let's go go over there in our browser we need to type in mongodb.com then we need to click on sign in or you can click on try free since i already have an account created i'm not going to create it the steps are fairly straightforward it won't be much of an issue so here what we need to do is you can click on sign up and then sign up with google the steps i had are pretty straightforward as i said so no need to worry about it i'm just going to click on login with google and up and see you on the dashboard all right so here i am in my uh, dashboard after signing up you should be on the same screen now what we need to do is click over here on this drop down and click on new project and now we need to name our project for the project name we are going to name it something like let's say flutter amazon clone and i'm just going to type in tutorial as well so that i don't get confused later on after that if you want to add any member set permissions you can do that you can edit this later on as well and now click on create project after that we come to this page and after coming to this page we need to click on build a database and if you want you can just pay it but i'm just going to go with free option then click on create and then select the shared cluster select the default things that it provides us with and then click on create cluster after that how would you like to authenticate your connection so to authenticate a connection and while passing in the uri that we want over here we have to pass in some url with the username and the password so this is a very important step 
So here I'm going to pass in the username as Rivan and then I'm not going to use the default that Savari gives but instead use my own password and then click on create user. Make sure that whatever you pass in you remember it later on. After that we need to scroll down and here enter the IP address that we want because you're not using localhost anymore. We're using IP addresses. So we can just pass in 0.0.0.0, .0. that means allow access from anywhere then click on add entry and then finish and close and now we will go to our database which is currently being created after which we will be able to get our url so let's wait for it to get completed all right so now our cluster is ready over here let's click on connect and then you can see the options here connect with mongodb shell connect your application using mongodb's native drivers or using mongodb compass we are going to use mongodb's native drivers and we don't have to install anything for that because node.js has been installed already in our systems after that it gives us a connection string we can copy this make sure to not use mine because i'm going to anyways disable this project and then click on close and then use this url over here so now i'm going to create a separate url at the top in the init comment and here I'm going to have db equal to and then pass in the URL. After that, here you can see there's my username and then it asked me to enter my password. Let's remove this password and enter my own password instead. Also make sure to remove this angle brackets. It has caused multiple issues with me some many times. So here I'm going to pass in Rivan123 which was my password. Again, make sure to not copy this URL as I'm going to disable my project very soon. After that, we can take this DB and pass it in over here and then click on save. Here you can see connected at port 3000 and connection successful. That means connection to our MongoDB has been made successfully. Great. Now let's just go to our cluster and in the database. So if you want to view the data, you have to go to this collections tab and here you can see since we don't have any data it's not ask uh, it's not showing us any data but you can see we can load a sample data set or add my own data we are going to do that dynamically using our code so now let's get started with it so whenever we are signing up what are the validations that we need to do you always have to keep that in mind what validations can you perform before posting that data in the database what other things that do we have to care about? For example, if you're fire using Firebase, you can see Firebase authentication handles everything for us, be it that your password is six characters, so it will give you an error like weak password. And then it will tell you that your password should at least be six characters. Then you don't need to worry about same account with email, same account with email password, something like this. You don't need to worry about them since Firebase authentication handles everything for us. But here we have to do all on our own manually. So we are introducing same account with email and password that validation. So what do we need to check? Well, we want to check if in our collections, if there is any user with the same email as ours, they can have the same name, they can have the same password as well, but they cannot have the same email. So to check that, first of all, we need to create our own model. If even if you're using Flutter, it's always recommended to build your own models, right? In Node.js and while connecting to MongoDB, we always use Mongoose. I mean, most of the people use Mongoose. There are some people who do it manually, but I feel it's a, way, a great time saver for us. So here I'm going to create a new folder called models. And I'm going to call this model, let's say user.js because that's a user model that we're creating. And here we are going to import mongoose and we don't need to require express or anything over here because we directly are creating a model over here. We are, we are having no interactions with express or with node.js APIs, just a structure of our code. So the very first thing we need to do is create a schema. Schema is basically like a structure of our application or the user model that we are going to have. So to create a new schema or a structure, we are going to do mongoose.schema and then add a parenthesis after which we need to pass in an object like this. 
after that we need to define some properties that are going to be in this model and unlike dart we don't have to specify types anywhere as you might have already seen we are using const everywhere even if uh we don't have to specify anything like string and all of that because JavaScript is not a static type language. It's a dynamically typed language. So let's define some properties. So we need name and that's not how we are going to do it. Name comma. That's not how it's done. We need to specify more properties inside of this name. So we have the name property in the user model, but what is this name going to be like? What it's, what is its type? So, they're going to pass in a type as string. So even if the user enters name as some number, then we are able to identify, oh, he has entered a wrong thing. And as I said, JavaScript is a statically is a dynamic. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language. So here we are just passing in a type string for mongoose. We are not doing this for JavaScript or anything. This is all by mongoose because you can see we are using mongoose.schema. After that, we need to make sure that the user always enters their name. So we are going to set name to true and we can also set trim to true. And you already know what trim means. If the user enters something like Rivan, then it will make sure to give us an output like Rivan, removing all the leading and trailing spaces. So we need to make that cleaning formation, something like that. Then we need to pass in an email and here again, we're going to have required true type is going to be of the type string. Again, trim will be set to true. And then there's additional property that we're going to add in email, which is validator or validate in this validate, as you might have seen in text form field, if we just go there, custom text field. We have not added any validation here, but you can see that it validates everything. Even here, we are going to validate. And for email, what are we going to validate? Well, we are just going to validate if it's matching with all criteria. So like there's at the rate, there's dot com, there's something like that, you know? So now how to validate? Well, in the validate property, we need to pass in validator, which will return to us some value, obviously. And then it's going to be a function. It's similar to the, uh, this line is pretty similar to this line, but just in the syntax of JavaScript. And then we need to ma match certain criteria. So what do we need to validate? Even custom text form field, we are going to do something similar, not the, the validation logic that we are going to perform here, but something similar. So what do we need to validate? Well, as I said, you need to need to pass in at the rate dot com, everything like that. So for this, we are going to use something like regex. So what is a regex? Regex is going to be used somewhere in our application. Again, I'll point it out when we use it, but regular expression or regex is a sequence of characters that specify a search pattern in a text. So if you go to this website, stackoverflow.com, I've I'll mention the link in the description below. And if you want, you can just search on Google validation for email address in JavaScript. And then it will point out this website where you can copy this regex. And if you don't even understand this, then it's no problem. You can just copy this. Have constant re equal to whatever this is. All right. And you don't have to pass it in string because it's a regex. It's not a string. And then you have to use value, which is this value that is here. And we need to match this with the regex. So if you just see over here, it says that matches this function matches a string with the regular expression and returns an array containing the results of that search. So what this does is basically whatever value that you enter, suppose I passed in Rivan at gmail.com, then it will match that value with the regex that we specify. And if any of the criteria get filled, it will return to us an array. So that's what we want to do. So we'll just do re, re, and then return this value because it needs to be returned. And now after that, we have another property over here called message. And then this message property will be run whenever this validator is false. 
that means only if the value over here whatever we enter matches this regex it will tell us that this email is valid and if it's not valid then it will return to us an error and we'll say please enter a valid email address after that we need to specify more properties so we have email after that we have password and we need to store password along with us because this is not firebase authentication so for password we are going to require it as true and then pass in the type as string then we need address we are just storing it right now so address is going to be of the type string but when we sign the user up we are not going to store any address for them right so what are we going to do well default it to an empty string address is not a required field whenever we create a user model we don't want to pass in any address because we don't have an address at that point and it's pretty stupid to again and again just type in an empty string instead we can specify default over here and set it to an empty string after that we are going to specify the user type and this user type can be a seller or an admin and in this app it will only be admin since we will be including only admin feature we don't have any seller but after following this tutorial when you have enough knowledge you can create the seller part of the app as well so here i'm going to have a type of string and by default we are going to set it to user because we don't want everyone to become an admin right so whenever the user just signs up we don't want them to become a uh, an admin so that's why we are specifying user over here with this type we are going to perform multiple logic uh, validations while transitioning to another screen that's great after that we are going to have a, a property called cart and we'll look into that when we get to the cart side of the things but for now let's not pass anything at all great so after this user schema is done obviously we need to export it because well first of all this is a user schema not a model this is just a structure of how a user is going to look like we have not created a model yet so to create a model we need to first save it in a variable and we'll do mongoose dot model with the help of model we are able to specify the model name which is user and then pass in the schema for our model which is user schema and after that as we know javascript will keep all these variables in one particular file which can be used in one particular file so we just use module dot exports equal to user great after having that we can go over here so here we are going to use user let's import that you can see constant user equal to require model slash user and you can see double dots over here these double dots are basically like we are in this auth route slash auth folder so we need to get out of here so we are in the main server folder so we use double dot slash and then we go to the models folder and then in the user file great now we have the user model available with us so we just need to use user dot find one this is a property by mongoose itself so here we are basically telling that we need to find a user but which user do we need to find right so here we are going to specify the properties well we need to specify email property so we need to do email email but we know the shorthand syntax for this in javascript so we can just remove this and we here have user dot find one email so we have gone to our user collection we are checking to find any one document in our user collection with the same email property if it is there then it will return to us an existing user that means we need to stop our app execution right now and just tell yeah this email already exists so one thing to note over here is that find one is a promise so because we are using user dot find one it's going to the mongodb database and then finding one document and it's going to take a lot of time so it's going to be an asynchronous process so we have to mark this function asynchronous first of all so that we can use await over here similar to dart right so here we can pass in asynchronous over here in case you are using function then you have some syntax like this so you can use async here as well both are fine 
so we are going to just make this asynchronous like this and now we can use await to find one user otherwise it will return to us a promise just like in dart if we don't use await it will return to us a type of future right here we would have gotten a, f a promise and we can't access promise values and we need to await for us to for it to return some value to us so here we are going to have if there's an existing user now this will not give us a boolean value but in javascript it basically means that if existing user is already existing with this we are just checking that if existing user is there if this object that it's going to return consists of anything so here we are just checking if existing user is there then we are going to return res dot json and then pass in a message saying that the user with same email already exists sweet so it works but now the problem is and i can't show it to you right now but just believe me for some time as i'm saying this you can see we return res.json value with the message user with same email already exists now what is the problem over here even if we are getting an error over here it will return to us a status code of 200 so now the first question would be what are status codes so if you go to this website developer.mozilla.org link is mentioned in the description below you can check all the status codes that uh, occur when we use http so whenever we send an api request these are the possible status codes that we can get and since we are creating our own api we have the ability to pass status codes like 200 so if we go over your successful responses 200 means okay that yeah the request succeeded so if you have get it will just say the resource has been fetched and transmitted in the message body but we are using post that means the resource describing the result of action is transmitted in the message body these are the parameters when 200 or okay status is given so here if we don't specify anything by default it will think that yeah we have 200 status code but that's not the case right everything did not went well in our api so here what do we need to do is mention a status so here we are going to have status passed in and then with this we are going to change the status code that we are going to send if we don't send any it will be 200 but we don't want to send 200 so that's why we are going to specify some other status so just let's find out what status code is required so you can see here we have client error responses or we have server error responses now what is this message user with same email already exists if the user with the same email is already existing that means it's a client error right it's not anything that happened on the server we are not responsible for it that means we have to use something like 400 now what is this 400 request it says bad request the server cannot or will not process the request due to something that is perceived to be a client error that's exactly the case it's not 401 that means that the http standard specify unauthorized there's nothing like that even 402 even 403 you can find out again and again we have 404 as well which is the most famous one so we are going to use 400 so let's specify 400 over here and there we have it that's all that we need just to specify this and make sure to pass in return over here because if we just specify something like this it will continue to execute the app further we don't want to execute the app further if the user has not already provided us with the email then we just want to stop the app execution over here or the server execution over here that's why we are using return and it will return this status and this message after that if everything went well that means our validation has completed we don't need any other validation for example if password is six letters weak and if you want to add that you can go in user.js model and here pass in a validator so here you can just copy whatever we have done in email and make your own logic over here so that you can perform some validation so for example if you copy this paste it over here and then remove this regex because we don't need regex for this and it's not mandatory to 
obviously put in validators again and again i mean rejects again and again so here what do you need to check well we just need to check if return dot value dot length so whatever string that we are getting over here it's obviously going to be of the type string since password is of the type string say so value dot length is greater than 6 so if value dot length is greater than 6 that means it has been done successfully otherwise we need to specify that we need to enter a long password right but now i'm not going to validate this you and it's your exercise just to perform validations on any object that you think is really useful for you so here i'm now going to create a user model so just like in dart we will specify it so we have user and then we have to use that and pass in an object now as i'm using objects again and again you'll be like what the hell is he doing again and again objects well it's like that only javascript is all objects everything in all, uh, javascript is an object for example string is also an object everything that you can think of is an object in javascript that's why i'm using object term continuously just like in flutter everything is a widget your everything is an object whatever you can think of is an object so here what are we going to specify well first of all you just can't create a user like this you need to specify a new keyword so with this we are creating a new user model and obviously we need to save it so we will have constant user equal to new user but later on we are going to change this user's value with whatever data the mongodb gave, gives us after saving that so what i am I'm going to do i'm going to make this let with let or var this is a keyword in dart as well but we are going to use let because of some scope problems or scope functionality so i'm going to use let for this you can even use var it won't matter but i'm more used to using let if you want to know the differences i'll mention the link in the description below you can check it out in detail so here since i'm going to change this value i'm setting it to let and now i have to specify some properties so we need to specify email then password and then name it doesn't matter what order you pass it in you just need to specify the required arguments and for us if we go to the user model you can see name is required email is required password is required rest of the things are not required great now we have the user model so what do we need to do well we will just use user equal to user dot save you can see we have save over here but now the problem is again we are using mongodb to save it so we are going to use await over here and now it looks great so whenever we save some data you might have seen that we are storing these three data along with some default like empty address and empty type uh, or user type it will give us more two fields for version and id id is going to be the unique id of your document which is pretty cool even in firebase firestore we have our un unique identifier for every document that we create and version is the number of times you are going to edit that file and how many times have we done that it's not really useful for us but it gives us that and then we need to make sure that we send the data to the client side so we can just pass in user and we're not pa passing in something like this because user is again the same thing that i told you you can either specify like this or you can just specify user and now we don't need to worry about the status code over here just like we did over here because by default it's going to be 200 and we want to send 200 right because the user has been created all of our tasks have been done successfully now let's test our application so now you uh, to test our apis we can use something known as postman so if you go to this website postman.com you'll see that we can test apis debug them and over 20 million developers are already using postman it's and it's a great tool for 
people building big big application it's always recommended to use postman but what i'm going to do in this tutorial is use a built in vs code extension known as thunder client so here we have thunder client you can see lightweight rest api client for vs code it's similar to postman but postman has a lot more features and it's very organized for big projects but what i like to do is just have a built in thing in vs code again it's similar to dart so if you want uh, uh, it's similar to thunder client so if you want you can just install that i would highly recommend using this it's a very great tool but for the this tutorial and for the simplicity of it i'm just going to use thunder client so install it i already have it installed so after installing it you'll see this tab over here which is this thunder client extension now you can click on new request over here and then you can see it opens up a new file for us and here we can pass in something so we have the type of the request that we want to send and by type i'll explain to you what i mean in just a bit but over here you can see we have query parameters that we can pass in headers or anything body we are going to use this extensively and any tests that we want to perform we're not going to use this or this anywhere in our application for testing apis but you can do that postman has a lot more features than this so if you want you can just download it so now let me go to my file again and here in auth.js we have this slash api slash sign up now let's pass in the url so we have http colon slash slash and then we can pass in local host for now later on we are going to use our own api or our own ip address sorry so we are going to replace this with ip address everywhere local host instead of that we are going to specify our own ip address by fetching that but only in the client side in the server side we are always going to use local host because i don't want to show you my ip and it will be difficult for me to blur this out as and when i scroll it up so here i need to pass in the path so we have slash api slash sign up and then if we click on send it should give us an error and it has given us an error cannot get slash api slash sign up now the thing about the type of the request is that get request on this same url is different from the post request on this url so you can have two urls for example you can have two apis created of the same url but just the difference in get request so if you have get over here it's different from this auth router dot post api that's the thing i needed to mention if you get any kind of error like this and you've already created your api first of all make sure that you have exported that and used it in the middleware and then make sure that the correct type is given here and here so now if i send this you can see connection was forcibly closed by a peer again we are going to click on send and you can see connection was refused by the server now in the body we need to pass in some json content you can use xml text anything but you know we are going to use json because that's pretty easy and if you don't know json stands for javascript object notation which is just a data exchange format to use text to store and transmit objects so now i'm going to pass in email and if you use single text over here it is definitely going to give you an error so what you need to do is use double inverted commas if you use double inverted commas it won't give you any error but if you use single text it will give you an error so here we need to pass in name and then pass in a test name for now so let's say rivan then pass in an email and again pass in an email let's say rivan and i'm going to pass in rivan for now just to see if our regex in our user.js file is working or not after that we need to click over here again and then pass in a password and now we have test 123 and now when i click on send you can see we are getting this error cannot destructure property name of reg dot body as it is undefined and now this error is mainly because you can see over here in the odd dot js we have used destructuring this is called destructuring that we are continuously using and this destructuring can only be used on 
on object. So just to resolve this error, what we need to do is add another middleware. So you can use app dot use and then pass in express dot json. With this, you can see it returns a middleware that only passes JSON and only looks at requests where the content type header matches the type option. If you don't understand this, it basically passes incoming requests with JSON payloads. That's all it does. See here in auth.js file. Now, if I, we have restarted the server. So now let me just quickly save the file and again restart it. And here now, if I send it, you can see we are getting an error. And this error is because you can see user validation has failed. That means our email property is now working, but you can see it gives kind of a very bad error to us, you know, and if you are client, we don't want to see any of that. So what I'm going to do is wrap it with a try catch block. And that's exactly what we should do whenever we use any asynchronous calls in our code. So let me quickly take this. I'll remove this from here because we have posted the data and got the data as well. And now use a catch block over here and send it over here. So now rest dot, we need to specify some status. And now for the stat, the status for this is going to be 500. So if you go to that website again, you can see over here that server error responses are from 500 to 599. If I click over here, you can see 500 means an internal server error. That means that the server that has encountered a situation it does not know how to handle 501 means not implemented and you can see all of that. But for this tutorial, we're always going to use 500 for this catch error and just pass in dot JSON. And then we are passing in error over here along with E dot message. Now you might have noticed I've used message over here and error over here. And that's plainly because whenever we have some validation issue, we're going to use message for that for that. And whenever we have some server error, then we're going to use error for that. It will be a lot much easier when we go on the client side and see why we are using what we are using over here. For example, when we have error, why are we using error over here? So now if I click on new request again and click on send, you can see we have an error over here that the user validation failed. Email, please enter a valid email address. Great. That's exactly what we needed. So now I'm going, I can enter a, an email of Ravana there at gmail.com and then click on send. You can see we are getting this data and this is the data that we get over here. User is equal to await user dot save and then we are sending it over here. So we have the status 200. Okay. And here we have the name, email, password, address, type, and the ID of the user, which is symbolized using underscore ID. And then we have the version with dot uh, with underscore underscore version, which is zero for now. But if we update this, it will become one, then two, then three and so on. Now, if we go to the MongoDB website and just click on refresh over here, you can see my first database has now a user and the user is Rivan with email, password, address and type. But still you can see that the password over here is plainly plainly given. What if my password or if my database account or my database data is getting hacked? So the user will get the password plainly and all of our users will lose their data and thus it will get some errors and that's not a pretty good thing. So here what are we going to do is before saving the data to MongoDB, we are going to save this password. So how are we going to go about making sure that it's more secure? Well, we are just going to take this password and hash it. We are going to encrypt that password so that even if the data gets stolen by mistake or, you know, there's some error from our side and then the hacker just gets use of the password, it will be useless for him because the password is encrypted. So exactly for this purpose, we are going to make use of a package called bcrypt.js. So if you come to the npmjs.com website, you have bcrypt.js. And now if you're wondering why aren't we doing this in Firebase and all of that, Firebase handles all of it 
within itself and it doesn't give us that complexity but over here we need to do everything on our own because this is our server so we are we have bcrypt and we don't want bcrypt we want bcrypt js so let's again type it now we have bcrypt js so this is optimized bcrypt in javascript with zero dependencies and it has 1.2 million weekly downloads and you can read more about it over here all of that is given over here if you can read that and implement your own hashing then it's pretty good i would advise you to do that and if you're not able to do it at least try it and if you're not able to do it then you can follow along so now let's just copy this command stop our server paste this command and then click on enter let's get rid of this request for now and here we have the password so this is where we need to implement so now first things first we need to import bcrypt js so we have bcrypt js which is equal to require bcrypt js now we can take this bcrypt js and what do we need to do well we need to hash our password so we have bcrypt js dot hash you can see this function over here you can explore multiple functions in your own playground file or anything like that but we have we are going to use hash with the help of the hash function we are going to basically convert whatever string that we pass in over here which is the password string and we are going to hash it and then we are going to hash it and then we need to provide a salt over here which is 8 now what is salt salt is a random string and when we hash a text for example this password we add a salt to it and with this salt the hash algorithms output is no longer predictable to us just to get your doubts cleared 8 is not the length of the string that it should have it's going to be much bigger than this so the same password with no longer yield the same hash the salt that we pass over here gets automatically included with our string so that we don't have to store that salt in a in our database as well over here so here we just need to use the password that this hash functions give us you can see it's a promise of the type string again so what we can do is await this and store it in a new variable and for that we are going to use hashed password and it's going to be a constant because you're not going to change this hashed passwords anytime and now we have to pass that instead of hash password so here we could have passed in like this but that means we are using something like this of a notation and if you see in our user model and just scroll it up this is of the type password not hashed password so instead of pass passing in hashed password what you need to pass in is a password something like this now we have hashed our password so let me start the server again we are using a get request so let's change it to post again enter a body i think i deleted my previous request so you don't need to type it you can use it again but yeah we have let's store a different name this time i'll store naman then we have email as let's say naman at the rate gmail.com then we can use password and the password is going to be test123 and you can also not add this trailing comma in json format so let's just remove this and now if we click on send you can see it got sent but now the password is very different it has hashed this password and it's more secure so even if some hacker gets in between and steals our data he will get a password that he won't understand great so we have our sign up route created with all the validation and logic this was our sign up route let's go to our client side now and connect this sign up api request with our client side but before doing that we again need to make sure that we pass in the ip address as 0.0.0.0 over here all right because i forgot to remove that i mean obviously you can use localhost with this ip address passed in as well but it's usually nice when you have this IP address and you're using the IP address basically. You can use localhost no matter what. Having created the API now, let's go to the auth screen and now connect this API to our UI part so that we can start accessing it. 
here i'm going to work in the services folder so that our business logic is separated from our ui, fi UI files and all that related stuff so here i'm going to create auth service dot dart file then create a class for it called auth service and now we are going to create a function for signing up the user since in this auth service we are going to have another feature or another function for signing up the user for getting user data all of the authentication part services are going to be in this so the very first function that we are going to create is sign up user now this isn't going to return anything so i'll just put an avoid and then call it sign up user now we want to require certain things which is email password and then the name these are the three things that we want and later on i think we we will also need the build function because not build function sorry we will need the build context so that if there is any error we can show the error in the form of a snack bar or something for now let's just give that and now this is going to be an asynchronous process we already know that because we are going to make some http calls and http will give us future now we have the try catch block and now in the try block well first of all let's create a user for this so now we are going to create a model for the model we are going to go in the lib folder and here create a models folder and then call the file user.dart file this user.dart file is containing the structure of our user just like we had something with mongoose over here we are going to have this user model so that later on we can create a provider based on this user because we'll be using state uh, we'll be using provider as a state management tool if you're using any other state management tool you can obviously go along with it as long as you know how to convert provider to any other you know state management tool whatever i'm doing right now sweet so now let's create a class user and it's going to have the same properties as this user file so let's create this class user we'll make all the variables final so we'll have final string id and this id we don't have it in the user.js file or the user.js schema and that's mainly because mongo's or mongodb auto generates it for us but here we are going to have an id after that we will have a name then we are going to have a password then an address then a type which is the type of the user we've already created that you can see over here and i think that's all that we need for now actually we will need another type as well which we will discuss about in just a while when we go to the sign in route so let's create it right now which is token and the cart property that i told in the user dot file as well we have this cart comment we'll add that later on but for now let's have all these things token you can just ignore for now we will jump into that in a bit so now i'm clicking on this bell icon or the bulb icon and then calling generate constructor after this i can again click on this bulb icon and generate json serialization we have all of this stuff after that over here you can see id is map id but whenever we store the user for example let me go to my request over here i'll send one and you can see user with same email address existed let's create one more and you can see we have id with underscore id as the name over here and with this from map we are basically giving it a map later on we will give it a map which will be the object that we get in this request we'll pass in this using user dot from map and when we use this it will take in map at id now map at id is not available because this is of the type underscore id it for example we have name over here so it will get this name we have email so we will get this email password this password but for id we have underscore id so let's put an underscore id for here if we put underscore id over here that would mean that this property is private in this class we can't do that in flutter right that's why 
we are using map underscore id over here i think these many functions are fine for now so let's save this much go over here and create a user model so we'll call this user let's import it at the top as well so we have user user equal to user and then we need to pass in all of this stuff but we don't have any of this i mean except name password and email we don't have anything so we can just put them as an empty string we'll fill that later on for address as well type as well you can pass in user also it doesn't really matter and for token as well now we can save this much after this what we need to do is use http and this is the plugin http you can use that it's by provided by google itself so we can just copy this using our dot dependency we can just add this and if you specify like this also it's not a thing it will just add in but i'll just type in like this so our flutter pub get is running great now we have access to http module so let's uh, uh, right at the top we will have import http http dot dot as http and as the name suggests it will allow us to make api request to this url and now we have you we are using all of the functions that http dot dot provides us with using the prefix http if we don't use http prefix it will cause confusions like this if i just do get you can see we are getting the get request which is from http dot dot but it's really confusing so we are going to use the as http prefix now we can use this http and now we have http dot post because this url if we just go over here we have the post url that we have created and then we need to pass in the url now for url as i told localhost 3000 will work on ios emulators but not on android ones so now to make this work for android what we have to do is go to our global variable and here just above the class of global variables because if we put it in class we'll have to make it static and then use global variables everywhere i don't want that to happen so i'm just creating a global variable called url so here i'm going to add string uri equal to this and now uri is going to consist of our ip address with the port so instead of having localhost this so let's just copy this instead of having local host over here we are just going to replace this with our ip address to get your ip address on mac you can run the command if net config or you can just search up on net if you're on any other operating system you can just find it on your own and then add it over here i'm going to paste mine because i don't want to show you the ip address and it's always good to protect your ip addresses and not show it to everyone uh, so i've added my own ip address make sure it's correct and you know it will work later on if it's not working then there's some issue over there so make sure it's correct so having that i can just use uri which i'll import from global variables dot dot file and i can use it like this without having the need to use global variables dot uri because it's a global variable right now having uri i want to convert it to a string so i'll use string interpolation because i need i've only added localhost 3000 slash or not even slash just localhost 3000 we need to add rest of this right so let's just copy this much and paste it over here so we have local uri which is our ip address slash api slash sign up which is our http dot post request and you will see this error because it doesn't accept the type string it accepts the type uri so we need to convert this string to our uri so to convert it to uri we can use uri dot parse and then pass in this string so here i'm going to replace this uri with this and make you sure to add the slash over here because we have just used localhost or ip address 3000 not the rest of the thing great now after that we need to add a body and if we go back to our auth dot js file you can see in the body we are passing in name email and password because as i said reg dot body and now it's getting clearer right over here we have the body tag and in body we need to add something and now in the body we are adding this name email and password and we are accepting it using reg so we have request dot body and then we can access all of these by object destructuring 
So now for the body, we can manually add using this and just encoding this in a JSON format because we added a middleware. If we just go to our index.js file, you can see we added a middleware of express.json so that it only uses JSON. So whatever string that we provide over here or map that we provide, we need to convert it to JSON. So we can use JSON encode for that. But we don't need to do all of that because we've created a user model for that sole purpose so that there's chances of less error of, you know, typing. So we can just copy this user and use user dot to JSON method that we have created just now. And if we just go to the to JSON method, you can see it uses JSON dot encode calls the to map function. And this is a to map function and it will return this object. We are basically doing what I told you earlier, but in a cleaner format so that there's less of errors, you know, and in the user, I just realized in the user model, we have not added email. So below name, I'll just add final string email. And now you have to add it everywhere. Now, again, a shortcut for this is just to generate a constructor, then generate a JSON serialization and we are good to go. It's as quick as it gets. Now we need to add an email property over here. So let's add email and we have the email from our parameters named parameters. Now we've posted this. Now, since we have used express.json over here in our auth service, what we need to do to make some changes is use headers over here. And now this is going to be of the type string comma string. So let's add string comma string and then pass in the content type, which will be content type as a header. And it's necessary to add this just because of this express.json life. But it also makes our life much, much easier, right? So we have if application slash JSON char set equal to UTF dash eight. If you don't understand this line, it's not a big deal. You can just copy paste this every time we use that but we are going to use it every time when we make some requests now to our own API. And now let's just store this in a variable. You can always use dot then or a cleaner way of doing it is using await and store it in a variable. Now, what is this variable response? So let's have response response equal to this. And now it automatically adds a prefix of HTTP because we are using a response from HTTP module. And now after getting this res variable, you can see we can print it out. We will have res dot body to access whatever data is there inside of this. Otherwise you can also access status code. The ones that we mentioned, like having 200, 500, 400, all of that. And we're going to make use of both of these very much in our application. So now we need to do error handling. You can see over here, we have added a try catch block, but that's not enough. Because this res variable, we are sending some stuff, right? If we just go back on in the auth.js file, you can see we are sending the data. So when it's 200, that means it's success. But when it's 500, there is an error. We need to catch this error. Try catch block is not going to catch those errors, right? We are sending that data. And whenever we get over here, the response variable, it thinks that, yeah, it has sent a response. There's no error for this. So it's not going to get caught in the catch block. And the same for this message that we have, we need to catch this as well. So now what we can do is constantly, we are going to make use of this 400 and 500. So what we can do is in constants, we can create request error handling, let's say error handling dot dot file. So here we are going to have an HTTP error handle function. And then we are going to require HTTP response. So we will have HTTP and let's import the HTTP module. So let's go over here, have HTTP dot dot and pass it over here. Then we can have HTTP dot response. Then we will need a build context so that we can display the snack bar. And then we will need a void callback function. Now this void callback is basically function like this. 
void callback is basically a short form for this you can understand it that way and then we can have on success so what do we do when there's success right because everything will differ for every request we are going to use this so every time we send a request let's say if we are sending now for sign in we are going to do for uh, we are sending for sign up we are going to do it for sign in as well and we are going to use it throughout our application whenever we send responses or requests so the success part is going to differ continuously so that's why we are accepting that from the function as well all right so now we will have switch and in the switch part we will have response dot status code based on status codes we are judging if we are having the error part or we are having some warning or something like that so first case that we have is 200 when there's 200 that means it's a, it is success so we are going to run on success command after that we can break after that we have 400 and then we can run the show snack bar and now we need to create the show snack bar utility function So what is this show snack bar going to do? So this show snack bar is continuously going to display whatever images or sorry whatever text that we want. So here in the constants part we are going to create utils dot dot as well, and here we are going to have void show snack bar build context pass in the string of text because every th where the text is going to differ. so that's what we have and now we're going to have scaffold messenger dot of context dot show snack bar just to avoid a lot of boilerplate code writing just to show a snack bar we are using this utility function and now we can return a text which will display a text now we can take the show snack bar display it over here and now pass in the text the text is going to be what when there's 400 we want to display response dot body at let's say message because if we just go to the auth dot js file you can see we have the message property over here when we are giving a status of 400 so here we have it and now you can see argument type string can't be assigned to parameter type int and this error is basically coming because this is response dot body and we need to decode this json file that we have so here we will just have json decode pass in this response dot body and then we can access the message property on it every time we get response dot body we need to decode this because this is not a string this is json i mean it is a string for us in dart and flutter but this is actually a json format so we need to decode this json so that we can use it later on and now we can again break it and finally we will have case 500 and it's going to be something similar to the show snack bar so we can just copy that paste it and this here is going to be error not message then we are going to break it and then pass in a default so any of the status codes doesn't match what are we going to show well we are just going to show a snack bar where it's going to show response dot body so let's just remove json dot decode so that it can entirely show the json format only because it's very rare when this will go any other way because our api is always giving these three status codes now we can use this http error handling everywhere it's very clean to do it this way in my opinion so here we have http error handle pass in the response so the response is res the context which is context and now we need that context so let's require it at the top great now after having that we need an on success function so whenever a function is success i mean we get a 200 status code what do we need to show well in our application you might have seen in the early starting 1 minute video a uh, 1 minute part that we need to basically show a snack bar whenever we have a success saying that account has been created and we need to log in with the same credentials so if we come back to our application you can see we have to enter name email password after clicking on sign up we have to go to the sign in route and then sign in with those validations and then we'll get signed in 
So here we just need to display login with the same credentials. And here again, we will show a snack bar in case there is any error while sending a request. So we have this error and now we can just type in e.2 string, whatever we get over here. Great, so we have our sign up user function created as well. So we can just bind this sign up user with our UI. So we can go to the auth screen and here create an instance of our function. So we will have final, sorry, for our class, which will be auth service. And we'll call that auth service equal to auth service. And save it in the auth service variable. So we can just copy it from the top and paste it over here. Now we can take this auth service, create a function over here called void sign up user, then use auth service dot sign up user pass in the build context. And there's no need of using build context from here because we are in a stateful widget. And then we have email. So email is going to be email controller dot text. And there's no need to trim this because later on our mongoose class is trimming it. Then we need to do password. So we'll have password controller dot text and then the name. So that will be name controller dot text. And that's all that we need. It's not going to return anything since it's void. So we can just take the sign up user and bind it whenever we click on the sign up user button. So we here. Also here we can see we are in a form, right? Now we need to make some validations which, which we left earlier. Basically over here in this custom button, we are in a form. Our parent is a form and we have a key and every custom text field here has a validator if we go over here. And we need to add this validator, which we will add just right now. So here we just need to make this validations happen. Actually, let's create the validator just now. So we have validator and in this validator, let's validate first of all. So, well, custom text field is going to have the same validations everywhere. For example, over here, the value that we get, and it's very similar to mongoose that we did. So we have value. So here the value can be nullable. So first we want to check if value is equal to null. So if the value is equal to null or the value is empty, so we will have value dot is empty. Then we need to return a text that says enter your and what do we need to enter? Well, enter your hint text, right? Because we are passing in email for the hint text, password for the hint text. So we just want to say enter your hint text. So we'll have enter your email, enter your password, all of that. And then we're going to return null. So either return enter your field or return null because there are no errors. So our validation is successful. That means we need to return null. And now over here, we need to make sure that every text field that we have in this sign up form gets validated. So we'll have if sign up form key dot current state and it's nullable. So we can just have an exclamation mark dot validate. So we want to validate it right now. So after validating, it will give us a Boolean value. You can see so that we can put it in an if condition. So if validation goes well, it will say true. So we can follow along with our functions. That means our form has been validated. Otherwise it will throw us a, an error on the screen itself. So here we'll pass in sign up user and which is this function that we just created. After saving this, let's run our app. So we'll have run without debugging. I've selected the iPhone pro simulator and let's wait for our app to launch. All right. So our app has launched and here we can see we have that. And this is basically coming because this is the demo app. So here we have that. And now let's pass in the name. So we will have Rivan and not enter the email just to see if it's validating and pass in the password as test one, two, three, click on sign up. You can see enter your email, which is the hint text over here. Now let's pass in test one, two, three at the rate gmail.com. Then click on sign up account created login with the same credential and to, and to verify this, we can go to our MongoDB database. And here you can see test123 at the rate gmail.com with the password and the type as user, everything got saved.
and now just to verify we are receiving the right messages let me just remain remove this we'll just pass in test 123.com you can see user validation failed email please enter a valid email address and that's exactly the message that we've given so that's pretty cool now let's now having that in place and we've understood the sign up part let's quickly do the same thing similar thing for sign in now what do we want to do when we sign in right so when we sign in we have these credentials passed in so now we click on sign in we want to make sure that we get something known as jwt so now let's close all the saved files so that it looks cleaner for us let's close the terminal as well and now go to our auth.js file so that we can create a sign in route so let's create a sign in route and now let's do it as an exercise if you want we can have exercise so basically what we need to do is create the sign in route but for that you'll have to open the documentation for json web token and understand how it works i'll just tell you the basic working basically this json web token is going to make sure that we are who we say we are so if I, while sending some data which has to be authenticated data so for suppose we need to get the user data only authenticated users can do that but we need to make sure that we the user is who they say they are so json web token is basically going to help us with that they're going to let us verify that the content that we have have not been tampered with whatever data that we are going to sign it with are not tampered with to know more about this you can just google it online and make sure to download this json web token package and implement it on your own it will be a, a great great task for you but in case you are not able to do it then don't worry you can just follow along well it's going to be a post request just like this because it's going to sign up sign in we'll have to use bcrypt js again because the password that we have over here for example we have the hashed password and then we need to find a user with that same email so we get the password but the password that we get will be a hashed password because we are storing hashed passwords so we need to use bcrypt js again to compare the password that we have in the string format because whatever the user enters over here is going to be plain test123 but whatever the user has on the mongodb database is hashed so we need to make sure that we can use hashing and we can compare both of them so you can refer to the bcrypt.js documentation as well but in case you're not able to do it we will do it together now were you able to do it if not let's do it along and if yes then great job we can just verify if we are on the same page so now we are going to create a post we are going to slash api slash sign in then we can have asynchronous function we will get request and response and we have basically created our boilerplate and now we also need a try catch block because it's an asynchronous function and now in the catch block we can just send res dot status 500 dot json error e dot message here we have it similar to this line after that here we are going to get the email and password from reg.body so we have email password equal to reg.body now we have a basic understanding of how this reg.body is going to work with our client side after that we are going to find the user right we have we will have to find the user because we need need to get the user data so first of all we need to check if that user even exists with that email so we will have constant user equal to await user which is our user model created using mongoose and as you saw in our file over here we had find one option we're going to use the same thing again over here so we will have user dot find one and we're going to find by the email and then we can again pass an email but we knew the shorthand syntax we can just use this after that we can check if we get no user i've explained this to you as well this is not like dart this is not a boolean value this consists of user data but in case this user data is null or undefined then it will give us a true value otherwise it will give us a false value so if there is no user data then we need to return a res that says with a 400 obviously because it's a bad request so we will have json 
saying that this is a message and user with this email does not exist. Great. After that, we have to get to the good stuff. After this, we have performed this validation. That means the user has an email and this email already exists. That means the user is signed up. After this, we need to make sure that the password that the user has entered is matching or not. And as I said, we're going to use bcrypt for that again, because the password that we have is test123. But the one that we have stored in the database is something gibberish. So let's just type in gibberish over here. So how can we compare both of them? Well, a, a very simple thing to do is using bcrypt.js in the build function called compare. With this compare, it will say asynchronously compares the given data against the given hash. Exactly what we want. So we have to pass in password, which is the password from body. And then the second argument should be the hash hashed password. And the hashed password is going to be in the user object, which is called user dot password. And now this is going to be a, a promise. So we can await this and store this in a variable called is match, which basically suggests because compare will give us a Boolean value. You can see over here, it's, it is a Boolean value, a true or false value. So if it is matching, then it will give us true. Otherwise it will give us false. So if is match is there, then we want to proceed forward. But in case if it's not there, so you'll have is match. And in case you're wondering why I'm using like this, putting a negation sign over here and then passing in the data, this is called guard clauses. It helps in uh, writing better and, you know, a readable code. Instead of writing nested if else if conditions, we can just use a negation and use guard clauses for that. So here we are going to return a similar message. So let's just copy this message, paste it over here. And we're going to send, uh, send a message with saying incorrect password. Great. Now this is matching as well. So if it's not matching, then we are saying it's an incorrect password. And just one thing that I forgot to tell you about this bcryptjs.compare. The first approach that you would have thought of is just converting this password into hash using this bcryptjs.hash. And then comparing that hashed password along with this pass, uh, sorry, user dot password that we have. Now that way won't work because of this salt feature that I told you, it adds a random string. So no two passwords are exact same thing. It is going to add a random salt and that will change the whole password. So two passwords, which are same are not going to have the same hashed password. That's a thing to note. So here now we will have now JWT used. So let's use the JSON web token. Let's install it first. So let's take this, copy this, go to our terminal. In the terminal, we'll just exit our server for now and install this. So we'll have npm i JSON web token, click on enter. After having that installed, so let's clear it and run our server again using npm run dev. And let's use JSON web token at the top. So we will have constant JWT, which is it for short. So we can name this anything as long as the required part is using the correct name. So we will have JSON web token. Now we can take this JWT. So we'll have JWT and it provides us with a function called sign. As you can see, it tells that it synchronously signs the given payload into a JSON web token string payload. So here, first of all, we need to provide what we need this JWT to sign with. So we need to pass in an ID and the ID, ID is going to be user dot underscore ID. And then we need to sign, sign in with a key. Now this key will be used to even verify our requests. So later on, when we add auth middleware, which we are going to do basically for authorized, authorized personnel only. We're going to verify that using a secret or a private key. You can see over here. So we need to add that. So we can name this password key. With this key, we will be able to author, uh, verify that JWT is correct or not. As I said, we are using JWT to make sure that the user are who they say they are and they're not hackers. They will let us verify that the contents are not tampered with. 
and this token will be used everywhere in our application to send requests and we'll pass that in the header you'll see that later on but i'm just giving you a spoiler for what's going to come on later then so here we're going to have token equal to jwt dot sign now we will send this token so we'll have res dot json because with this we need to make sure that we store the data first of all we are going to send this token so this token is going to reside in the app's memory so we need to make sure that we send it and also we need to send the user data because we want to store that data in the user provider that we are going to create when we go to the client side because when we click on the sign in we are going to return to the big home page and we want that user data to be accessed anywhere in our application that's why we are going to send both now how to send both well we can just pass in token and then user but now the problem comes in token will be accessed using token and then user but we'll have to specify one more property just to use that user so instead of doing that we will have dot 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 which is object destructuring and then you can have user dot underscore doc with this basically if we have a user property let's say like this let me quickly add some comments so here we have let's say name so we have name as rivan then the email as something rrr@gmail.com something like this so basically we are with using this these three dots you might have seen it in dart as well when we do something for list so it will give us specific property so with this we will have name separately email separately like this and then we are also adding token over here with this basically when we send some data it will just give us in a format like this right it will add token to this user part and now we have used user dot underscore dog because if user is logged to the terminal you can just try to log this in the terminal a big object will come out and that big object is of no use to us you can just try it if you want but that user object is of no use to us so we are using user dot underscore doc which gives us the correct information that we want having that we can save this much and let's try to use this api sign in route in our thunder client or the postman whatever you are using so let's create a new request pass in this use post and then pass in http slash slash localhost 3000 as i said you can use localhost over here and we have sign in so let's just copy this body go to the body paste this body and remove name because we don't need name anymore and then click on send and here we have it we are logged in with a specific token that we have received which is pretty good i again send in it's going to be the same token you can see that great so we have this working now let's bind it to our client side so now let's just close the terminal close these files and quickly go to our auth service dot dart file and create a similar function for sign in so let's create this and i'm not giving you this exercise because this is going to be involving some provider and stuff so let's do it side by side so we have sign in user then we need to get context email and password then we need to remove this user because we don't need that anymore we are not going to send some data we are going to well basically just use email and password then instead of passing in the body as this what we need to do is use json encode pass in a name and an email you can use user model actually my bad i didn't say that earlier but it's just two things i don't find the need to pass in it so we can have email password as password and yeah good and now we need to handle the same error so now everything here is going to remain exactly the same but we need to add some changes and on success if there is some error we want the same things to happen and that's why we created this http error handling part right but now we need to do some stuff differently in on success so here 
if we print our body let's just print it quickly so we have print res dot body and connect to our the sign in user to our auth screen so let's quickly go to our auth screen and have void sign in user then create an empty bracket and just use this pass in and then we'll change this to sign in user remove the name part because we don't need that anymore and now similar to this on tap we're going to copy this on tap paste it over here and now instead of passing in sign up user we'll have sign in user and instead of sign up form key we'll have sign in form key and even here if you've not noticed we have passed in the form as sign up form key we need to change that to sign in form key please do that otherwise you know it's going to give us an error great so now we have binded this let's get our debug console and restart our application and we are going to use test123 again so we have test123 at the rate gmail.com and then pass in test123 click on sign in user with the same email already exists and this error came in because well if we go to our auth service we have not changed this uri right so let's quickly change that and now let's try it so we have sign in here you can see we are getting our data token the id the email the password that means everything is going good now we just need to make sure again let's go to our auth service and now in the on success first of all we need to save this token to our device so that we can persist the state in our application now what is persisting state as you can see if we just sign in over here you'll see that after we hot restart our application or after the user quits the application and starts again we'll again come back to the screen the reason being in the main.dart file we've passed in home as auth screen it is not anything else now how will we do some conditional logic in case we want a, your uh, a home screen so what condition will we put in now the condition is basically that we will use this token that we'll store in our device memory using shared preferences a plugin which we will get to in just a minute and then we will get that data of the user and save it to our database pretty simple right so now first of all we need to add two plugins which are shared preferences and user provider again just to mention shared preferences we will store token in our app memory and with provider we are going to store the user data because when we log in you can see we get this data now we just use this data to save it in our user provider so that it can be accessed throughout our application and we have state manager and we don't have to manually just pass in everywhere through the constructor our user data so now let's quickly go to pub.dev so we have pub.dev use in provider you can see a wrapper around inherited widget to make them easier to use and more reusable so let's quickly save that pass it in the dependency let's stop our app execution as well and also side by side let's have shared preferences done as well and in case as i told before if you want any other state management you can definitely use that as long as you're comfortable to convert them so let's pass in shared preferences and there's no manual installation required for both of them so we are good to go but in case you want to see the usage and try it on your own i would highly recommend that do it on your own and we're going to use something from your only basically to write the data to our app memory we can do final prefs first get the instance then use this instance to set the value to our memory and that's all that we need to read the data which we will use later on while you know persisting the state of our application we will read the data and we'll read it using something like this again get the instance and with this instance we're going to read that using get int and here we have set int it's pretty simple no need to worry about it great now all of these things have happened so here we can have shared preferences 
then we'll save it in the variable prefs and we're basically just getting their instance so we have shared preferences dot get instance and since we are using await over here we need to use asynchronous and now we need to basically set the data now what is our data well this is just token so we have prefs dot set string and then what is the key that we are going to store it with is going to be x auth token now if you want you can store it in a global variable because this x auth token we are going to use whenever we start the application so we're going to make that functionality so that we can process the state and to get the string we have to again pass in the key name where we are storing this data which is x auth token and now we need to pass in a value and the value is going to be pretty simple this token right so we can use response dot body but as we know it we need to encode decode that data so we'll have json decode and let's quickly have that so we have json json decode pass in response dot body and then use token on this which is this and it will save it in our shared preferences and we can get access to them using this key and if you go over here you can see this is future as well so we can just await it and there's no need to use the bool value that it gives us saying that you know this has been a success or it has been a failure no need to worry about it after that we need to use provider and for provider again we have to create some boilerplate code so we can have a new folder called providers which will first have a user provider or dart file so let's create user underscore provider dot dart file and this user provider dot dart file will be called user provider let's quickly create that then we have to extend to change notifier because we already know that's how provider works i'm not diving deep into it you can just check out uh, some tutorials on it it's pretty simple now we are going to create a private variable of user where all of the values are going to be zero or one so let's have them created so we'll have id as empty string name as empty string email as empty string password as empty address as empty type as empty token as empty everything empty after that since it's a private variable we are going to create a getter for this so we have user get user and then return this private variable and create a function so that we can update this user so we have set user and we'll have string user which we will get and this is string mainly because we are going to pass in response dot body to it and response dot body is a string and here we are going to set user which is this private variable equal to user dot from json which is another function in our user model which is this basically this is calling from map and then decoding the data over there and then passing it to from map you got the idea and then we'll pass in the source as the string user after saving that we just need to notify all the listeners that your yeah, user value has been changed please rebuild now we can go over here and have provider dot off and pass in user provider context then we'll set listen to false since we are outside the build function every time we are outside that build function we are going to set listen to false and then we are going to call dot set user pass in the user which will be response dot body and let's take this provider and put it just below the shared preferences it's not anything that would matter but the thing is we are getting the instance then we are saving that data and then only we are setting that odd token and then we just need to navigate to another screen so here we can have features as the home screen and here let's quickly create a screen so let's create a folder for that we'll have screens pass in the home screen and the widgets and all of that we'll create later on but for now let's create basically a stateless widget called home screen actually right now 
let's create a stateful widget right here itself. So we have home screen, pass in the scaffold and here as the body, a centered text, which will tell us the token and the user ID. So, well, the actually let's print out the whole JSON format or the whole user thing itself. So here we can have final user equal to provider dot of user provider context dot user, which is the getter that we created. Now we can take this user, pass in the text user dot to string so that it can be put in the text widget. And now I think most probably it will just tell us instance of user model. So what we can have is user dot to JSON that should give us the right output because user dot to string will just tell us that, yeah, it's an instance of the user model. And that is like, yeah, we already know about it. Here we are going to use navigator dot of context and actually let's remove that so we'll have navigator dot push named and remove until then we need to pass in the new route name so let's quickly give this route name and also let's rename this so we have home screen dot dot and the route name is going to be static constant string route name equal to slash home and we have to register this route name in our router dot dot file. So quickly copy this, paste it down here and we have home screen dot route name and we have to return home screen. Now we can go over here, pass in the route name as home screen dot route name. I'm not explaining any of this code because you've already written it multiple times and it would be a great time waster just to write this again and again, right? After having that, I think it should work. So let's run our application and see if it's working in the very first try. All right, so our application has launched. So let's quickly try to sign in. So we have test123 at the rate gmail.com. Password is test123, click on sign in. And here we are getting an error. This happens because you used a build context that does not include the provider. You added a new provider in your main.dart file and that's mainly because in the main.dart file, we have not registered our provider. So here, basically we need to wrap this my app widget with a multi provider widget so that we can use provider anywhere in our application. And then it accepts a child and then also a list of providers because it's multi provider and then we need to pass in change notifier provider and in create we are going to pass in context and then pass in the user provider also let's quickly get that yep our error now should go away even the warning over here so now quickly restart the app now, if I click on sign in, I'll pass in test123 at the rate gmail.com. Pass in the password test123, click on sign in. Here you can see we are navigated to the another page and it's showing us ID, name, email, password, token, everything. Now, for as of now, there's no need to know, uh, no way to know that a shared preferences data got stored or not. But now the next step is going to do exactly that. We need to get that string in our main dot dot file itself. In this my app widget, we need to convert this to a stateless widget, stateful widget, and then get that data from shared preferences. And then based on that, we can put a conditional logic over here saying if we want to go to the admin, uh, auth screen, admin screen, home screen, whatever. So we are going to do exactly that. So now let's quickly change this my app to a stateful widget because we are going to use init state over here. And now let's create an instance of the class of final auth service auth 
service equal to auth service. Now we can take this auth service and call function on it, which is getting the user data. Now, before getting the user data, let's close all the other saved files and save this one. So before getting all the user data, let's think what we want to do. So in our auth service dot dart file, we want to create a same request because we want to get the user data to get the user data. We want to get the user data from the API, right? I mean, we'll have to ask, create our own API to get the data. Now, before getting the data, we want to get that token. Now to get the token, we are going to use shared preferences, get string method so that we can get the X auth token that we've already stored. Now that X auth token can be null as well because we logged in, but before logging in and starting our application, we are going to again run the get user data function. Now, when that get user data function is run, there's a possibility that token will be null because for, for example, when the user signs, uh, uses the application for the very first time and we call the get user data function because no matter what we are running this init state function, right? So whenever we run that init state function, it is going to get that user data and uh, in that user data, we are using shared preferences dot get string. Now that string that we save in, for example, here we saved in X auth token, but if we are using it for the very first time, that X auth token is null. So you want to check if that token is null, then we want to show that auth screen itself. Otherwise we want to check if that token is valid or not, because that token can be altered, right? It's in the app memory. It can be altered by hackers or even person who knows about the phones very well. So you want to check if that token is valid or not using JWT. And if that token is valid, then we want to get the user data. So there's a lot of validations. So let's create this. Let's use this function just to create another function to check or to get user data. So let's name it that only get user data pass in the build context, remove required argument. And also let's require remove require because there's only one parameter to pass in. What's the use of the named parameters? Cool. Over here before doing any of this, let's comment it out for now. And also let's remove the print statement from here because print is not good in production code. Also remove print from here and let's avoid the HTTP error handling for now. So here we want to first of all, get shared preferences. So we'll have shared preferences equal to await shared preferences dot get instance. After we get that, we will get some tokens. So let's call this string token, which can be nullable. You can see over here because that's what preferences give to us. So you have preferences dot get string, and then we want to pass in the key that where we have stored. So it will be X auth token. If there is no token, it will return null. If there is token, it will give us some data. Now we want to check if that token is null. So if that token is null, we are going to have press dot set string and pass in the key as X auth token and the value as an empty string. So with this, we are basically telling that yeah, user has used the application for the very first time. And now it is an empty string, not null. After that, we want to check if the token is valid for no or not. So for that, we are going to create an API. So let's go to our auth.js file and we're going to create this in auth.js because well, it is related to authentication task only. Let's copy this and I would recommend you to not copy again and again and type it so that you get used to that syntax, right? I'm already used to it. So I'm just copying it again and again. So now the try catch block is going to stay the same. Here we have it. After that, we want nothing from rec dot body and token will be passed through a header, not through body. 
so we have slash token is valid as the name and then we want to remove all the things that we have over here so here what do we want to check first of all get the token so we have token equal to request dot header pass in x auth token then we check if there is no token that is passed or the token is null then we want to return rest dot json and you'll see something great over here we'll just return false no object nothing with this it will just say there is no token because our post is token is valid or not we just want an answer in true or false so we are passing in false over here then we want to use jwt dot verify if the token is there then we want to verify that token that's exactly what this function is for right so here we want to pass in the token which you have received from the header and then you can see the secret or the public key which we signed it with you can see this is the secret or the public key so we can just use that after that we will check if it is verified or not so here we can store it in a variable so we have constant verified or is verified you can uh, take the variable names on your own so if it is not verified then again we have to return res.json as false correct now if the user token is verified then we want to check if the user is available or not because i mean the token can be valid but what if that token is just a random token that turns out to be correct so we want to check if that user also exists or not so you want to check constant user equal to await user dot find and we have always used find one till now but there are many more options you can just see it in auto search find find one find by id find by id and delete and all of those functions but we are going to use find by id because we don't want to delete anything right we just want to get that data now to find by id we are not getting id from request dot body and we are getting id because we have signed that with the user so after using verify we are getting access to that id property that we have stored in it you can see jwt it signs with that id so now we are getting that verified object and in, on that object we are using dot id property now if that user doesn't exist again we are going to return race dot json false and finally if all of these conditions pass in then we are going to pass in rest dot json true great so this is our function for token is valid and we've created our api now so here we are going to have await http dot post again then we need to pass in a url so that will be uri dot parse pass in the url which will be dollar sign uri then slash token is valid or not and we're not testing this api in thunder client mainly because we will have to get this token and pass it through the header instead let's do it right here itself if there's any error we're going to see that error only but in case you want to do it there's absolutely no problem with that you should definitely do it so with this we are going to get the token res so if we put both as res response it will be very confusing so let's name it specifically and now as we told we have to pass in an header so we have headers and headers will consist of string comma string and as i told before multiple times we whenever we use pass in headers we have to pass this content type make sure to do that because we are using express.json and now along with that we will pass in x auth token this is the name we are going to give as well as the name of the shared preferences key both are the same thing and then we need to pass in the token that we got over here and now we have already check if token is null so we can just pass in that the token is not null now we are going to get that response so now we will have where response and then we will just use response dot body so we'll have token response dot body this is the actual response so we have json decode 
pass in the token response dot body so that we can use some objects on this response right so here this response is going to provide us with true or false because that's what we have supplied over here true false 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 like this so we are checking if response is equal to true then we want to do await and get the user data so here we need to create a use api to get the user data to get the user data let's create another api called get user data so here what we are going to do is auth router dot get pass in slash then we'll pass in auth and this is the middleware that we now need to create this middleware will keep make sure that you are authorized that means you only have the capability to access this route if you are signed in so now let's create this auth middleware so here we have server and we are going to call this middlewares and here first middleware is going to be auth.js something similar to this we are, we will have another middleware called admin because we want the similar thing to happen with admin also right admin protected routes should be there and similar to that we have auth protected route so here we are going to get jwt equal to require json web token basically we will pass in the token and we need to verify that token just like we did before so here we are going to create a function this is not going to be a route so we will have asynchronous request res next and next is similar to you know continue on with the next route because we are going to pass it in as a middleware when we reach when we use next i'll explain it to you then we have a try and catch block so we have try catch pass in the error and then pass in res dot status 500 dot json pass in the error as error dot message then use this try block to have constant token equal to request dot header because every time now onwards whenever we use authentication basically to fetch products to you know save it in card we are going to use this auth middleware so we are going to pass it in as a header which is uh, the best thing to do so we will have x auth token and then we are checking if there is no token then we want to return some data so we will have return res dot status 401 and this is 401 because this stands for unauthorized so if you go to the website again you can see we have 401 as unauthorized although the http standard specifies unauthorized semantically this response means unauthenticated and now we will pass in a json saying that the message is no auth token access denied that means that the user has not passed only token what to do now and now we will have verified so let's go to our auth.js and copy this paste it over here and we will verify this token we are getting from here pass in the password key and then we want to return rest dot status 401 again because it's not on or because it is not authorized and then pass in json which will be message as token verification failed authorization denied great now after this what do we need to do this is going to be a very important step so make keep make sure to keep a note of this so here we will have request dot user now we are adding a new object to this request which is user and we are saving something to it which is equal to verified dot id now every time we can't pass in in the body every time we can't pass in the body the user's id right so now what are we doing is adding this auth middleware so that here we can perform all the validations if it's valid or not and if it is valid then we are storing user's id in request.user so whenever we created create some authenticated route like this one where we add the middleware as auth 
we can use rec dot user like we add rec dot header. Now, if I add auth over here, I can have rec dot user, and that will fetch the user's ID to me. Great. Now we can have rec dot token equal to token, and in the same fashion, we can access the token as well because these are the two things that are given over here, and we need to use that later on somewhere in our application. After that, we can call this next callback function. This next, if you don't specify, will not go to the next API route. For example, now here we have request response, and this is going to be asynchronous, obviously. So here, basically, if we don't call next, it will make sure that yeah, it authenticated this, but it won't run this callback function. Next basically means that it can call. The next callback function. So let me quickly add that, and thus we can follow along. So here we can just check constant user equal to await user dot find by id, and now the id we know is rec dot user. If you don't trust me well enough, you can just print this out and see. To print, you can always use console dot log. After that, we are just going to send this. So we will have dot 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 user dot underscore doc. As I mentioned before, we are why we are using dot underscore doc, and then pass in the token, which will be request dot token. Now we should be able to get the user data, so we can go to the auth service and get the user data. So here we can have await http dot get pass in the URL, which will be URI dot parse, and the URI is simply dollar Sorry, like this dollar URI and pass in with a slash. Don't forget this slash because URI is nothing with the slash. We have already talked about it pretty much every time. And also pass in this parenthesis. After that, we will save this in response. So we will call this response HTTP response. Actually, let's call this user response HTTP response is pretty lame. And then uh, obviously we are using get, but we also need to pass in headers, and headers is going to be something similar to this. So we can just copy this and pass it in over here. And token, this exclamation mark is not needed because here we have already told that token can never be null. That's how fast smart Flutter is. So now we can take this user provider. So we have variable. User provider equal to provider dot of user provider pass in the context set listen to false and then say user provider dot set user. Now instead of doing that, you could have obviously used user provider dot set user. It doesn't matter. Pretty sure I did this because it gave me some errors back then, but it won't give anything to you. Then we can just pass in user res dot body to set the user appropriately, and that's all that we need. So let's remove this error handling part. Let's restart our application, and actually this is not working because we need to get the we have to bind this to our UI. So we'll have to run auth service dot get user data pass in the context, and after having that get user data done in the home part, what we can have is provider dot of user provider context, and let's have that. So we'll have context dot user dot token dot is not empty. So if the token is not empty, that means that we have saved some token, and that means we can go to the bottom bar. So we can have constant home screen, and if the token is empty, that means we can go to the auth screen. Saving this much, we can restart our application. So our app has loaded up, but there is one problem over here. You can see in our server we are getting this error. Auth router dot get 
and auth is not defined. So basically in our auth.js, we need to go here and use auth, but we can't use auth because we need to export it. So we can have module dot exports equal to this auth. Now we can use this auth by importing it. So quickly import it and save this much. So our app has started. So let's restart our application. And now we are on the home screen directly. And again, if I restart the application, let's go to our debug console. You can see if I restart the application, we are still on this page. That means our state persistence has also worked. Now we can start working on better things. So now we let's create this bottom navigation bar so that we can navigate between the home page, the product page, or, you know, the profile page, account page, and then finally the card page. Great. Now, now, now let's just create a bottom bar so that we can navigate. So here in the widgets, I'm going to create bottom bar and we're not creating any specific feature for it because it's a bottom bar and it will be used everywhere basically in our application. After that, we're going to create it as a stateful widget and call it bottom bar. Now this will have a route name because we are going to navigate to this bottom bar whenever we are on the hot, sc hot screen and then we need to navigate. So this is the bottom bar that we are going to use. And then we are going to call it a route name and set it equal to let's say actual home because earlier it wasn't home and this is going to be actual home. After that, we can come over here and return a scaffold which will have a body which we will figure out later on because this body is going to be based on what bottom bar item we are on. And now let's create the bottom navigation bar. So let's remove the body so that we can focus on the UI part now. So here we have bottom navigation bar. Then we're going to pass in the current index and the current index is going to be int page equal to zero. This will keep track of the current index and we will change this value whenever we want to change the current index. Then we need to pass in selected item color. So whenever an item is clicked on, what should it for what should its color be? So we are going to pass in selected navbar color, which is present in our global variables file and whatever we copied earlier. Then we need unselected item color and that will be global variables dot unselected navbar. After that, we are going to have a background color, which will be global variables dot background color. And then an icon size, which will be 28. All of this is tried and tested, you know. So in case you're wondering how I got those values, I just put some random values and got that icon size. After that, we are going to have a bottom navigation bar item and pass in an icon as a container, not an icon just, but a container because we want a, we want a green line to appear at the top, right? That's why a container. Then we will pass in a width and we will create width at the top. So that in case we want to change it any time, we can just change it over here because bottom navigation bar or the containers width is going to stay the same for every, every bottom navigation bar item. So here I'm going to pass in double bottom navigation bar width. So let's say bottom bar width and set it equal to 42. Let's grab this and paste it over here. Then we're going to have decoration so that we can add that decoration, right? So we're going to have a border and border will be from the top. So we have border, top, border side. And we'll pass in the color and this color is going to depend on the page we are on, right? So if this is the zeroth element, so if we are on the zeroth element, that means this is the selected item. So if this is the selected item, we want to show the green or the teal color on the top. So what I'm going to check if it's pay, if page is equal to zero, then global variables dot selected nav bar color. Otherwise we can just have the background color so that it mixes in. So we have global var variables dot background color. 
after that let's specify some width otherwise it will be too small so let's do it at the top again because this as well is going to be used in every bottom navigation bar item so we'll call this let's say bottom bar border width and we'll set it to 5 then let's take it from here pass it in over here and save this much and then the container is going to have a child obviously so that we can pass in the icon so it will be just an icon of home so we have icons dot home underscore outlined now copy this much and paste it again but before pasting it actually we need to add label it's actually a required field so if you don't pass it in it will give you an error so make sure to add it so we have to pass in over here as well label which will be an empty string and we need one more navigation bar item so let's put in a third one and quickly let's change their value so over here in the third one we have third one we look after in a while but the second one will have person outline outlined then if page is equal to one then we want this and this looks great now about the third one it's going to be the cart one right so this is for the cart this is for the account or profile and this is going to be the home page so let's save this much and see what we're getting. We're not seeing anything, mainly because we have not used bottom bar anywhere. So let's go to the main.dart file and pass in bottom bar instead of the home screen and make sure to use that home screen.dart. Let's remove that unused import. Save this much. Again, go to the auth service.dart file so that whenever we are navigating to the next screen, so here we have it here we're going to pass in bottom bar dot route name and it's not registered so we need to register it but before that i think yeah this looks great so now let's go to our router dot dart file and register the bottom bar so here we will paste this much have bottom bar dot route name and pass in the bottom bar great now let's try to restart our application and see what we're getting here you can see we are getting an error and this error is because we have probably missed label putting label somewhere that's what i was telling you and that's probably in the last one so let's add it over here saving this much let's restart our application and you can see this is showing up and there's one tick over here that's because we have not changed this so let's change this to two and here we have it Sweet. So now we need to work on the cart feature. Now cart icon is going to be a bit different from other one because we are going to use a package for this. And the package we are going to use is badge so that we can add the number on the top. So if we have a cart here, we can add a number of how many items have already been added. So for that, we are going to use this package. Let's copy this badges and that's a pretty simple usage. Just add this to your popspec.yaml and we can use that. So I'm just going to use dot add dependency, pass in badges and stop our app execution. After this pub get is run, I think I can restart our application and then write the code for it. So here run without debugging. And now in the child, Let's wrap this icon with a widget known as badge, which will be from the badges package. And now the elevation is going to be set to zero because we don't want any other, you know, a popping out thing. We just want it to stay along with the icon. Then we're going to have a badge content and this content is going to depend on the cart. But when we add cart, we look into it. For now, we will just have a text, a constant text actually which will just say a number, which will be two for some reason. And then we will have badge color, which will be colors dot white. Then we have a child and that's all that we need. So let's save this much, restart 
and see what we're getting. You can see two showing up. Also, let's change this to shopping cart outline. Great. Now here we have it. Looks great. Now the next thing is whenever we click on any of the icons, we want this thing to navigate over here and the correct content to show up. So here we are going, we are going, we have to add a pack or we have to add a property for that, which will be on tap. So whenever any item is tapped, what do we need to do? Well, we can create a function right at the top called update page. We will get a page and then we are going to set the state and the global variable page will be equal to the page from the parameter. Pretty simple. Now we can take this update page, pass it in over here and looks great. Now, whenever I click over here, you can see this is shifting. Great. Now the next thing is to correct, to correctly show the information. So here we are going to basically have a list of widget of pages, which will be equal to multiple widgets that we are going to create. For now, we are going to have a constant centered child text saying what this page is. For now, we have account page. But above that, we are going to have our home page and we have already created home page. So no need to pass in, you know, the centered text. But for cart screen and for account screen, we are going to have this. So we can pass in account let's say cart page also. Great. Now let's take this pages in the body. We are going to pass in this pages because it's a list and we're going to access and the body is going to be the widget at the particular index, which we are continuously changing, which is this page over here. Now save this much. And here you can see we are getting the home screen here, the account page, and finally the card page. Now let's design the account page. First of all, then we can design the home screen. So now let's quickly close all of these save files and here we're going to create a new feature. Let's close the home and auth screen and here create a new feature called account. This account is again going to have screens and widgets. We'll create services later on when we need it, but for now we need screens and widgets. So here first thing we're going to have is an account screen dot dot file. Let's import material dot. Let's create a state full widget. Actually, let's try a stateless widget here. Then we'll call it account screen. We are going to return a scaffold. And the app bar is going to be preferred size because here we have, this is the app bar that we need to create. So now we're going to use preferred size for that and then pass in the preferred size that we want. So we want a size that will be from the height 50. After that, we need to have a child, which will be an app bar. And we need to pass in a flexible space. The reason for flexible space is that we need to have a linear gradient over here. But app bar doesn't have a property to add a linear gradient. So we need to use flexible space using which we can specify a widget which will have a linear gradient and that would create that design. So let's quickly look at it. So we have box decoration, pass in the gradient as global variables dot app bar gradient. Great. So now let's take this account screen, go to the bottom bar dot dart file and replace the center text with the actual account screen that we have just created. So now let's look at it. We need to restart it probably. So here we have the app bar showing up. Now let's design this app bar. So in the title, we're going to have a row because we need two things over here, right? This is the Amazon logo, the bell icon and the search icon. So this is going to be considered as one and this is going to be considered as another element. So first of all, let's have a container which will have an alignment of alignment dot top left. Then we need to have a child 
and the child is going to be the Amazon logo. Now to get the logo, what you can do is go to the assets folder on my GitHub repository, go to images and download all of them because you're going to need all of them. I already have them installed, so I'll put it in. So what I'm going to do is in the root of the folder, we're going to create an assets folder. Let's rename this. I don't think I can type it properly, but yeah, we have assets and then we're going to pass in an images folder and then copy this images folders content over here. After you've installed, you can just take them and paste it over here. Here we have it. Now we need to go to the pubspec.yaml file and add that assets. So we have assets slash images and we're not going to manually specify all the images. So put a slash over here so that it can take in all, everything that is provided over here in this folder. After that, we can close it, restart our application and pass it in. So here we are going to have image dot asset, pass in assets slash images slash Amazon in dot PNG. That's the name of a file. And here we are getting an error mainly because we have not passed in children for the row. So we're going to pass in children. And then in the container, we are going to pass in the children. We are going to pass this container. Now, after that, we're going to have a width of 120, a height of 45, and the color is going to be colors dot black because by default, it will take it as a white color. After saving this much, I think our app failed. That's why we have not able to see it. Now let's restart the app and see what we're getting. All right. So our app has loaded up. Let me close the file for file manager and here we have it Amazon in showing up. Sweet. So now we need to create another container which will have a row because as I said, these are two, the two elements are together. So here, first of all, let's give some padding. So we have constant edge and sets dot only from the left. We are going to have 15 from the right. We are going to have 15. Great. Now we are going to have a child, which will be a row. And then that row, we are going to have children, which will all be constant because it is just icons that we are going to display a bell icon and the search icon. So here yeah, we're going to pass in padding, pass in the padding as edge insets dot only from the right side 15. And then we want a child of icon and the icon will be icons dot notification outline. And let's save this much. You can see we are getting this icon. Great. Now we can copy this icon and paste it in again. So we have icons dot search. After saving this much, you can see this showing up again. Now all of them are together. So basically what we've done is this is one element. This is another element. Now we have put them both of them in a row. So now to make them go apart, what we can do is in the parent row, the first most row, we can pass in a property of space evenly. So here, what we can do is go at the top and have main access alignment as main access alignment dot space evenly and actually not space evenly but space between and here you can see it's showing up great now we have the app bar now the next thing is to work on this part which is saying the hello plus the name of the user so for that we're going to first of all minimize this app bar then we are going to pass in a body because this is a scaffold and the body will consist of a column, which will be a column of constant widgets because everything that we are going to pass in here is going to be in the widgets folder so that it doesn't get crowded over here and there's no unnecessary rebuilds as well. So here we're going to have below underscore app bar underscore dot dot. This is the name of a file. I couldn't think of anything else. So here we are importing material dart, creating a stateless widget, calling it below app bar. 
and then returning a container which will have a decoration of constant box decoration so we're going to have a gradient which will be global variables dot app bar gradient after that we're going to have a padding of constant edge inserts dot only from the left we are going to have 10 from the right we are going to have 10 and from bottom we are going to have 10 and let's just name it properly so we have child pass in the row and we have a row mainly because well it's hello admin now we are going to have a rich text over here and rich text is mainly because so that we can have two you know text in one line you could use a row for that but i think te rich text is also a great option for that so here we're going to have a text span where we're going to have a text saying hello and we're going to leave a space over here so that you know there's a space over here like this so here we're going to have a style of constant text style pass in the font size as 22 and color as colors dot black after this much i think we can have children and this children is again going to consist of all the text bands so we can just copy this text band paste it over here and we need to pass in the user's name and we have access to user's name using a provider so why not use it so we have final user equal to provider dot of user provider context dot user now take this user pass in over here so we have user dot name and yep we have it so let's pass in a, par a parenthesis that we've missed and pass in the below app bar over here let's see how it's looking here you can see hello Rivan showing up so now if there is something like this just to resolve this error what we can do is go to the below app bar pass it pass in a row over here so we have wrap it with a row and let's save this much and you can see it extends further sweet otherwise you could have just used container and given it in the media query dot of context dot size dot width and that should have worked as well after that the next thing we want over here is these buttons so let's pass in a size box of height 10 and we've passed in const over here so there's no need of passing in const again and again so here there is some spacing as well now we want to create this layout so first of all let's create a widget known as top buttons the dot dart let's import material dart and then we want a stateful widget and we're going to call it top buttons and then we're going to return a column because you can see they're all in a column column and in that column we are going to have row two rows just to demonstrate it to you we have a column this is a column and in that column we have a row and then again we have another row pretty simple so let's quickly create that so we have return a column and children so let's pass it a row which will be children and will consist of these buttons now you can see these buttons are being excessively used in this place so we can create a separate widget for that which will be reusable so we have account button dot dart file let's import material dart call it a stateless widget and then call it account button and then over here we are going to return a container with margin of constant edge insets dot only left 10 dot symmetric sorry and from horizontal we're going to have 10 that frame that means from the left and from the right we're going to have 10 and we have height 40 
then decoration will be box decoration where the border is border dot all color will be colors dot white and there is no width at all that means there is no border at all let's go over here you can see now we need the border radius so we have border radius as border radius dot circular 50 now in case you're wondering that we can see some border over here but over here we are setting the border width as zero you'll realize later on when we use uh, the button because the button we're going to use is outlined button so that it can give us a nice clean outline we are just setting the border radius over here and if we set the border radius there is going to be an automatic border applied which we are removing over here and then we want a color of colors dot white after that we are going to have a child which will be an outlined button so the child over here is going to be a text and the text will be whatever we get from the constructor so let's have final string text and require this from the constructor then pass it in over here then the style is going to be a constant textile where the color is going to be colors dot black and font weight is going to be font weight dot normal now this is an outline button so we need an on tap also so whenever we click on that what should happen so we want that from the constructor as well let's call this on pressed so let's create it from the constructor as well so we have final void callback on tap require it from the constructor so we have on tap and here in the on press pass in the on tap great now let's use this account button and see how we need to style this account button moving forward so the very first button that we have is your orders so we have your orders and when we click on it nothing is going to happen as of now also we need to pass in top buttons over here just to see any input or output sorry here we see it your orders looks great now let's add a bit of you know curve to it so here in the account button we are going to have a style which will be elevated button dot style from so it will capture elevated button style and the primary color that it's going to have is colors dot black 12 dot with opacity 0.03 this is just a tested value but in case you don't add opacity it will look very good very bad and this is this color that we can see and we add a border radius obviously so let's copy this line paste it over here and before that we need to specify the shape in which we can specify the border radius so we have rounded rectangular border and there we can specify the border radius so we have border radius pass it in over here sweet now if we see over here this looks great now let's just increase its size so to increase its size what we can do is wrap this container with an expanded widget so that it can take all the available space you can see it takes everything now if we add another account button it will diminish its size so here we can have another button that says let's see over here what we have turn seller so we can pass in turn seller you can see they all they both take in the maximum space they can get after creating this row we need to create another row for logout and your wish list so we can just you know copy this row paste it down here and before pasting it we need to space it out so we have constant size box of height 10 now we have logout so we will pass in logout and then we need to pass in a text that will be your wish list sweet so here we have it looks awesome now one thing that i noticed in this app bar the below app bar part we have not bolded this 
So what we need to do is go to the below app bar dot dot file and here in the user dot name we have all this and extra thing that we need is font weight dot bold and if we save this much it becomes too bolded we don't want that so let's pass in w 600 all right this looks great so after restarting this and creating these buttons the next thing we need is again a sized box after which we can have the list of orders so what i'm going to do is space it out even more you can see there's a lot more space over here and now we are going to create a new widget called orders so that will be orders dot dart here we're going to import material dart let's quickly import that then we need to create a stateful widget because we are going to fetch the orders that the user has made and we're going to create an api for that for so we know that in future it's going to be a stateful widget so we can just create it right now so now we have column and then in the column we need to return children now the very first child that it's going to have is going to be well this part which is this part which is a column and then we need a list view builder so that we can build all of these products so these are the two things that we need so let's quickly work on them so we have row pass in the children and the very first child is a container saying actually we need some padding so we have constant edge inserts dot only from the left we need a padding of 15 then we need a child which will be of the constant text saying your orders then we need a style of textile and the textile will be font size as 18 color as colors dot black and i don't think we need to mention that so here we have the color and we'll pass in colors dot black and i don't think we need that so let's just remove that and see if we need that or not later on so we'll pass in the font weight as font weight dot w 600 and with this much let's take the orders and put it in the account screen so we have orders go to this and you can see your orders showing up sweet now we need let's put trailing commas now we need to pass in another container so let's copy this container paste it again and we have c all and one other thing is that we don't need it from the left anymore we need it from the right because it's a it's in the top right so here we're going to have a color and the color is going to be global variables dot let's import it so we have global variables dot selected navbar color let's remove this constant from here and yep let's go over here see let's put this as a small a and now let's space between these two row elements so we have main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot space between here we can see it looks great after that we need a list view builder to display our products so let's create a common display products or order sorry so here we're going to have a fixed size of container and it's very important to mention this height if you don't mention this height it's going to give you a render box flow error you can pass in you know expanded widget but it will take in all the available space and it won't look good also we need to create this outside of the row so let's copy this paste it outside the row in the column put trailing commas so here you can see they're all in line now so now very first thing is padding so we have constant edge and sets dot only from the left we have 10 from the top we have 20 and from the right zero because it's going to be very scrollable after that we have a child with list view builder and for now we are going to pass in constant index and create it like this 
and here we are going to return the product that we are going to create but before doing that but over here we need to pass in an item count which will be three let's say and here to return or to view something just for design we have to create a manual list so you know just a temporary list that we are creating so here what we can have is list which will be called list let's say it's it's temporary so we can name it anything so here what we need to pass in is well first of all the image so we have image and the image is going to be anything that you can find out what i'm going to pass in as the image is from unsplash.com so you can just go over there and search one thing so i'm just going to take this copy image address paste it in over here after that we are going to have the products actually that's all that we need so let's remove it for our for our application for now you know we are just going to have images because here if you see we are just displaying the images of the product so let's copy this paste it paste it paste it let's say four times we can take this list pass it in over here so we have list dot length and then we are going to return a product now to return a product what we are going to return is a widget so let's create a single product dot dot and this is going to be a very very use, useful widget it's going to be reusable everywhere in our application so we're going to have import material dot a stateless widget and it's going to be called single product this will be used even in the admin side even in you know everything basically so we have to pass in a padding which will be const edge insets dot symmetric and from horizontal direction 5 then we need a child as a decorated box so that we can just create you know a decoration we don't need a container for that so we can just pass in decoration as box decoration so we can have border as border dot all pass in the color as colors dot black 12 and the width as 1.5 if you come back if you come back over here you can see that the border over here is like this so we need colors dot black 12 and colors dot black 12 is going to be a very useful color for us because it's going to add act as a separator everywhere now after that we are going to have a border radius which will be border radius dot circular 5 and then the color will be colors dot white then we need a child which will be a container and then the width will be 180 padding will be constant edge inserts dot all 10 you can see there is padding everywhere over here so that it looks neater and cleaner and then the child is going to be an image dot network and then we need to pass in the image now we'll get the image from the constructor so we have final string image now we can click on this bulb icon generate a constructor then pass in the image over here and the fit is going to be box fit dot height fit height so it will fit according to the maximum height that the image can take it doesn't care about rest of the things then we can have width as 180 passed in it should take in the same width as the entire container now we can go over here and return a single product now it requires an image the image will be list at index and that's all right because it is a list of string if you go back there you can see it's a list of string that's all that we need to do later on that when we create our own api and you know create some stuff then you will realize how different this will get so here we have it your orders so now instead of having this as a vertical thing what we can have is scroll direction as axis dot horizontal because right now you can see it's 
vertical that's why rest of the things are not even visible because it's vertical so and the height is 170 now if we save this much you can see we are, it is visible to us now and it looks pretty good so our design for this screen is also completed now the next thing we want to want to work on is the home page ui so let's create that quickly so now let's close the terminal and all the saved files now what do we need to do well close this account page let's go to the home screen dot dot again and create a widgets folder now because we are going to create widgets and it's that ui that we're creating now let's quickly look what we want this is the thing that we're going to create so first of all we need an app bar so let's quickly create that right so now in the scaffold we're going to have an app bar again the preferred size so what i'm going to do is go to the account screen not account button sorry we're going to go in the account screen copy this app bar widget and then again close this much come over here and put in the app bar now obviously we need to make some changes over here but before that let's import app bar gradient now the title is going to completely differ we can see in the title we have this app bar and the mic icon so now what i want to do is instead of returning this container what i'm going to do is wrap it with an expanded widget and remove this alignment we don't need that instead we will give it a height of 42 then a margin that's why we are using a container otherwise we would have used a sized box and then we have only from the left we want to give 15 you can see in the picture let me quickly go there there's some margin over here that's what we are doing after that in the child we want to wrap it with a widget that is called material we don't have any image over here so here we're going to have a material and this materials purpose is just to give some elevation and some border radius so we have border radius dot circular seven we could have wrapped with container and give it it given it a border radius over here but since we want some elevation because you can see this pops out and thus the elevation is going to be one and then we want a child because we're going to have a text form field past 10 over here now we could have used the custom text field but you can see that the design differs so we are going to create the text form field manually over here then we need a decoration the decoration will be input decoration then the prefix icon is going to be an inkwell widget because when we click on it you know it gives us kind of a splash effect that's why so we're going to have an on tap property passed in over here then we need a child which will be a constant padding then the padding is going to be edge insets dot only and from the left we want six let's quickly go there so we have left as six and then the child over here is going to be an icon saying icons dot search the color will be colors dot black and the size is going to be 23 great now let's go over here you can see our funny text form field showing up but there's more of an error because we have this container so let's remove that and here we have it now let's design this to look something like this so the very first thing that we'll do is in the text form fields input decoration itself over here i guess so we have filled passed in as true the fill color is colors dot white the content padding is const edge inserts dot only and from the top we want 10 after that we're going to have a border and the border is going to be constant outline input border and then we want to give this again a border radius of circular 7 so let's just copy this paste it in over here and actually i made a mistake we want to pass in border radius dot all and then the radius dot circular 7 now we can remove this much 
then we need border side as border side dot none let's say this much then we need an enabled border so let's pass in an enabled border and this will be similar to this border so i will just you know copy all of this and pass in actually we need to copy this pass it in over here and the border radius is going to be border side of color colors dot black 38 and the width is going to be one now since this is constant it is giving us an error so let's remove this pass in the constant over here and pass in colors dot black 38 and pass in const again because we made an error cool so if we come over here this looks something like this if we click on this you can see there's some effect due to which it becomes flat otherwise it's elevated let's restart this you can see again there's some border but if we click on this it comes back to normal that's exactly what we want now finally we want to pass in a hint text so let's pass in the hint and we need to pass it in the input decoration and here we're going to pass in search amazon dot in save this much now this doesn't matching with this so we need to pass in the hint text style so we have hint style pass in the constant text style and then the font weight is font weight dot w500 pass in the font size as 17 and that's all that we need so let's save this much here we have it when we look at it it looks great now we just need a mic icon so we can quickly create that since we are in a row so what we can do is over here have a container saying color as colors dot transparent then we need a height 42 then margin of constant edge inserts dot symmetric in the horizontal direction we need 10 and the child is going to have a mic right so we have constant icon as icons dot mic color as colors dot black and the size is going to be 25 if we go back over here now this is matching with this let's restart the application you can see it is matching but still it's not clearly matching and the reason is because you can see there is some spacing over here which here sorry there's some spacing over here but there's no spacing over here that means our app bar size is a small bit smaller so we can just change this to 60. now this looks super good i am pretty satisfied with it so now we can work on this address box part so now what are we going to do well first of all just minimize this app bar it takes in a lot of space and in the body we are going to have a column which will have children and then the first child that we have is an address box so let's create that address box in a separate widget so we have import material dot a stateless widget of address box so here we're going to have a container of height 40 then decoration and this is not going to have the same linear gradient as this you can see it over here we have this linear gradient but this linear gradient differs from this so we're going to manually create it so we have constant box decoration and the gradient is linear gradient pass in the colors so the colors are color dot from argb which stands for alpha red green blue and then we can pass in 255 114 226 and 221 then we can copy this paste it over here 
and here a is again 255 but r is 162 this is 226 so let's change it to 236 and this will be 233 let's take this address box paste it in over here and save it let's put some trailing comma so that we can format the document you can see it's giving us a color similar to this pretty cool now we need some stops so we have stops as 0.5 to 1.0 yep again looks pretty cool and after that obviously we need a row so that we can include this icon then this text and then again this icon so let's go where i have a child as row then the children also here we are going to have a padding of constant edge inserts dot only from the left we are going to have 10 so the row is going to be a constant icon as icons dot location underscore on underscore outline then we have a high size of 20 and also let's put a comma over here let's put some comma so that we can format the document and here you can see we have the icon showing up with some padding now we need to create a text now the problem with this text is first of all it can overflow you can see whenever it overflows meaning the address is too long because usually the address is going to be too long so so in that case what we are doing is making sure there's dot 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 over here and that is done using a property known as text overflow dot ellipses but we also need to make sure that we get as much space as we require for this so we'll have to wrap it with a expanded widget and then only we can use ellipses so that it gives us this dot 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 format so let's do it so we have expanded the child will be padding and the padding will be constant edge inserts dot only from left 5 then the child will be a text and we are not in the children again of the row so let's go over there pass in the trailing commas and here we have the text now the text is going to be well delivery to the name of the user a uh, hyphen then the address of the user so let's quickly write it so we have delivery to and we'll use string interpolation user dot name and let's use user's name so we have final user equal to provider dot of user provider context dot user this is nothing new that's why i'm going quickly over here then we can pass in the uh, dash and then we can pass in user dot address and user dot address can never be null because we are passing it as an empty string and even if it is null at some point we have some uh, work done so that it always shows us an empty string so here if we go you can see there's nothing showing up and you won't be able to see the magic of this expanded widget and then the text overflow but you you need to trust me on this when we just pass in the address you will be able to see so now constant text style will be font weight font weight dot w 500 pass in the overflow and the overflow is text overflow dot ellipses ellipses stands for those dots fade star is when you know the starts uh, the text just fades away but we want ellipses because that's a better user experience in my opinion after this expanded widget finally you will see this drop down icon so we can create that so we have constant padding and the padding is going to be edge inserts dot only from the left we have 5 from the top we have 2 let's see this much and in the child we have icon 
as icons dot arrow underscore drop underscore down outlined then the size will be 18 and yep we have it you can see it's looking pretty cool now since this is expanded you can see the icon is mentioned over here when the address comes in this will look less awful and the way the address is going to work is we are not going to ask for the ask the user for any address in the starting itself what we are going to do is whenever the user clicks on this add to cart goes to the orders page and then for the first time when he enters there uh, you know the address we are going to save it in our database and then we are going to keep track of that address always that's how it's going to work so now having the address box in place let's create this category list so let's close this and here we are going to have a constant sized box let's create that quickly of height 10 then let's remove this so i'll do command full stop and what i'm going to do is so now let's just remove this constant from here pass it in the column and here we have it cool let's also remove this user because we don't need the provider so of course we'll have to remove all of this stuff again sweet so now the next thing is the categories thing so what i'm going to have is pretty simple again we're going to create top underscore categories dot dot file import material dot create a stateful widget for them let's create a stateless widget for now so we have top categories and we're going to have a container of height 60 then the color is going to be colors dot white obviously you can see the color is white and even if we don't mention it's not a deal so let's try to not include it and the child is going to be a list view builder because we have five things over here so let's build it out using list view builder so we have list review dot builder then we have a context and an index passed in then we have an item count and now we need the items for this the items for this we have already installed the images so we have the appliances books these are all category images so we are going to use them but just to initialize them in a list so that you know it stays good enough very editable so we are going to add them in the global variables so if you want to get access to them you can just go to this repository and copy all of these things and put it in the global variables class so here we can go there so here i am in the global variables class i can just paste them over here you can see now save it go over here and access them using global variables dot carousal images dot length and it's not carousal images sorry it's category images dot length then we can get access to return a column because well it is going to be column right you can see over here a column of this image and this mobile text so we're going to have children as the container and the padding going to be constant agent sets dot only from actually let's do symmetric so we have horizontal as 10 then we have child and then we are going to use clip rx for this so that it appears as you know a circular thing or you can use a circle avatar widget for this so i'm going to use clip r rec and then we will specify the border radius which will be border radius dot circular 50 then the child is going to be of image dot asset and it will be global variables dot category images at index at image 
So if you just go in the global variables class, you can see it is a list of map of string comma string. So here we have title, then mobiles image as this image. So we are accessing suppose the zeroth element, then their image property. That's exactly what we're doing over here. And since this can be nullable, we can put an exclamation mark. Now we need to specify their height. So it can be first of all box fit dot cover. Then we can pass in the height as 40, the width as 40 and that's all. So let's save this much and see what we're getting. We're not seeing anything mainly because we have not used top categories. So let's go here, pass in the top categories. And now we are able to see this. Now you can see this is pretty funny. We just need to use them horizontally. So what we can do is scroll direction as axis dot horizontal. Now it looks great. Also, let's give some padding to each and every one. So let's give up a specific extent to which an item can be there. So what I'm going to do is pass in item extent and here pass in 75. Every item is going to have a width or the extent as 75. This looks neater. Also, let's remove this container to say sized box. Now, after this container, we need a text that will say the category that we are uh, having. So here it's going to be something similar to this paste it in over here and it will be title. If you go to the global variables, you can see this is called title. That's why. And now we have style as constant text style and we need to diminish the font size, which will be 12 because it's lower than the usual. And then we can have a font weight of font weight dot W 400. Again, save this and you can see this is coming out pretty cool. The way exactly the way we want it to come out. Looks great. Now the next thing is this carousal image. And now if you haven't noticed it already, this is carousal. So meaning if we swipe on it, it will show us other images. So for that, we're going to use a plugin called carousal image. So here we have carousal slider ready. So this is a plugin that we're going to use. So let's install it. I'm going to use dot add dependency and stop our app execution and close this top categories because we are done over here. Even the global variables file, we don't need to add anything else. And now here create a new widget for carousal image dot dot. So here we're going to import material dot. Uh, Let's import your material art, then call it a stateless widget, call it carousal image, return carousal slider. This is what comes from the package carousal slider dot dot. Let's also get our app running after we've specified the items parameter and the options parameter. What is this options going to be carousal options? So let's quickly add them and now we can get our app running. In the meantime, now we can focus on how it's going to look like. Well, first of all, the items is going to return a list of widgets. You can see that now our items are going to be in a separate list that we have in global variables. We have already added that. So if we go to the global variables, you can see we have carousal images over here. We're going to use each one of them. So what we need to do is map over every image in the list. And then we need to return an image based on that URL. So what I'm going to do is global variables dot carousal images dot map. We will get I. So we have I and then obviously we need to convert it back to a list. So over here, what we need to return with I is a builder widget 
then it will accept a builder parameter and in that builder parameter it will return to us a build context so here we are going to return image.network pass in the image.network which is i when we map over here we get that url and then we are using fit as box fit dot cover and the height as 200 cool this looks good enough now we need to pass in the carousel options but before that let's see how it's looking so here we can again have a size box of height 10 and then finally we will have carousel image save this much and here we have it at least it's now a working carousel but now we need to make sure it takes in all the available width for that what we can do is go to the carousel image in the carousel options we will pass in viewport fraction as 1 and the height as 200 you can see it is still here a specific height so that all images have the particular height in case you want to change it the height does not differ and does not look ugly so here now this looks like a proper carousel and it's working pretty neat finally we need the deal of the day and this deal of the day is going to work on the rating system so after we integrate the rating system in our application we'll be able to show the proper deal of the day product but for now we're going to keep it as a static image and a static text so what i'm going to do is in the widgets have deal of the day dot dot We are going to import material dot, create a stateful widget. As I said, we are going to create an API for this. So we have deal of the day. Then we are going to have to return a column and it will be wrapped by a gesture detector because when we click on this, we need to get to the new page to display the details of the product. But now we are going to have children the container which just says that yeah this is the deal of the day you can see that and it's in the top left so we are going to have alignment as alignment dot top left padding as constant edge and sets dot only from the left 10 from the top 15 after that a child with constant text saying deal of the day And then we need a style of text style with font size 20, save this, this much. We are not seeing anything because we have not bound this to our UI. So let's quickly do that. So just after this, we can have not a constant because we already have a list of constant. So here we just need to type in deal of day. And now we can see deal of the day correctly showing up pretty neat. Now we finally need to show an image.network which will for now just show a static image. So again we can go to unsplash.com and get a new image. So I'm just going to copy this image address and paste it in over here. Now we need to specify certain height you can see but before that we can go to the home screen and wrap this column with a widget known as single child scroll view so that in case there's any render flow error you know it's scrollable always you can see that now in the deal of the day we need to specify certain height so the first of all we're going to have a height of 235 and then we need to make sure that the fit is box fit dot fit height this looks great so in this particular height it's going to fit now for now it's looking very bad but when we add our own products it's going to look neater because it's going to be a png format image and it will contain the entire product's height we don't want them to go according to their width we don't want them to take the entire width all we want to show is the correct height of the product and the correctness that it shows so after that we finally need to add 
all of this price and name of the product all of that stuff so here what we can do is have a container with padding of constant edge inserts dot only from left 15 from top 5 from right 40 and this will be the product name that's exactly what we want so here in the child we are going to have text as the product name for now we can give a static name so let's say Rivan is on sale so we can have max lines as 2 and text overflow so let's have overflow as text overflow dot ellipses again the dot format that I've already told to you and for now let's just give it a constant text because later on it's always going to change so we'll have to remove this constant and let's see how it's looking it's not looking great so here what we can do is make some corrections have a padding uh sorry just have an alignment passed in which will be alignment dot top left here we have it now looks good as the name gets bigger you'll understand why we're using such a small font size but before that we needed to create product right i mean the price of the product so now let's just add that so we have container pass in the padding so let's copy this padding paste it in over here and it will be only from the left 15 pass in the alignment as alignment dot top left and then we need to pass in the child as a text which will be slash dollar because we want to sh display dollar right i mean it's 9.99 dollars so you want to display dollar and if we use dollar it will consider it as string interpolation so we have to pa uh, pass in backslash dollar and then we have dollar as the price but for now we are not depending on the price from the api so we can just pass in 100 like this and also pass in constant over here. Now if we see over here, this looks good, but it's very small. So we can just increase its font size. So we'll have style as a constant text style and pass in font size as 18. Let's remove this for now. And there we go. Dollar hundred looks good. And final thing that you'll not be able to notice as of now as we want to display a list view builder below this so that we can show other images of the same product so to do that we are going to go below add a row of images so let's quickly add that and it will be main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot space between then the children will be the product images so for now we can just create image.network pass in the images so let's quickly grab some of the images from here and let's paste it more times let's say four times more and then we want each of them to have a fixed width height and all of that so let's pass it in so we'll have fit as box fit dot fit width so here it's going to fit according to their width so that you know it stays in a proper constraint and the width can be 100 and the height can be 100 as well so that we create a box right i mean a square that would be good now if we save this much you can see we got a render flow error and that was expected because we need to wrap this row with again a single child scroll view with the help of the single child scroll view, we'll be able to pass in scroll direction, which will be axis dot horizontal. Now, if we save this much, you can see it's scrollable and it looks good enough. And finally, below this, we just need to tell that, yeah, let's see all the deals of the day. So we have container with padding as constant edge and dot only 
and from the left 15 from the top 15 from the bottom 15 and in case you don't want to write all of them 15 what you could have done is pass in symmetric over here and then vertical as sorry over here vertical as 15 because top and bottom is 15 and then you could have removed this left to say copy with left 15. This is also great and the earlier one is also great. Both of them look great. <laughs> so we have alignment dot top left and then the child will be text saying see all deals. Now we just need to pass in the style which will be a text style. Now the color for this is going to be colors dot cyan and the shade will be 800. All of this is tried and tested. If you want you can just use different shades and see which one you like. I'm preferring this one. So now if we scroll here we have see all the deals and it looks magnificent. That's the way I want it. So our home screen UI is also completed and it looks exactly the way it, we want it to look. Now in case you're wondering why deal of the day looks shabby, not like this. When we add great images, you'll understand why it looks great enough on this. Now the next thing we want to work on is the admin screen so that we can add products and use real products so that whenever we click on this mobiles, we can see the proper categories. When we click on this essential, we can click on pro uh, proper categories. We're not going to design cart because we'll design cart only when we are able to add them to our cart. For now, we just need to be able to add products and for that we're going to go to the admin side. And for that we'll always have to do some conditional rendering logic. So here again in the main.dart file, we'll have to check over here if the token is not empty, then we need to check if the user's type is not is a user if it's user then we want to show that otherwise the admin screen so let's quickly do that logic and then work on the adding products feature so it's pretty easy for us well we can just copy this paste it over here and have user dot type and now we want to check if it is equal to user right so if that type is now equal to user, then we want to show the bottom bar, otherwise the admin screen. So for admin screen, let's create a new feature. Let's close all of them and now create admin feature. This will have screens and now the screen over here is going to be admin underscore screen dot dot. Here we are going to import the material dot, create a stateless or stateful widget. And this admin screen is going to work in the same way as the bottom bar because it is going to consist of bottom bar displaying several things like this. Here we have the home button, the analytics button and the orders button. It's going to be pretty similar to the bottom bar. So after having that, let's turn it this into a scaffold. And let's keep it this way for now. Then we can go to the main.dart file and here put a colon and then pass in the admin screen. Sweet. So now if I restart the application, I should see a blank screen. And we are not seeing the blank screen mainly because we have not changed the type of Mo in the MongoDB. So let's click on this edit icon using which you can edit your type of the user or any other field. And then we are going to change this to admin and then click on update. After doing that, we can just click on restart and here we have it, a blank screen. Now in case this is uh, irritating you the debug banner, what you can do is go, we are in the main.dart main file and here we can have debug show check mode banner and set it to false. And now this is gone. Great. So now we can close rest of the files and go to the admin screen. And here, the very first thing is again the app bar that you want to create. You can see this part right here. And to create this kind of app bar, we can just copy it from somewhere. So we can just go to the account screen, copy this app bar that we had minimized. Let's quickly copy all of this. And again, minimize this. 
go in the admin screen, pass in the app bar this app bar, click on save. Obviously, we need to import global variables. And then again, click on save. You can see Amazon.in showing up. Now we need to remove this bell and this kind of icon. So let's remove this whole container and pass in constant text admin with a text style which will be basically that yeah we want to bold this out so we'll have font weight as font weight dot bold now if you go here you can see as i told previously this is of the white color i just wanted to demonstrate this to you so now we can change the color and set it to colors dot black and yep this looks great just similar to this now what we need to do is create the bottom navigation bar and again it's going to be pretty similar so let's copy the contents from our bottom bar dot dart file here i'm just going to select well everything so let's select everything and paste it in the admin screen so bottom i'll minimize the app bar and here have the bottom nav bar here we have it now we need to create these variables so we can create them or actually copy them from here itself here we have everything so now we can just paste it now we need to create some different pages or widgets because we want to render different pages so here i'm just going to copy the centered widget until we make those widgets so we are going to have analytics page and this is going to be the posts page we are going to create post page just right now but for some time let's just keep it so that we don't have to deal with some errors and now we don't want badge in our application so we are going to remove this bottom navbar item and copy this bottom navbar item paste it down here and this is going to be the orders and we are going to check if this is two so if this is two we want this we've done this logic we've covered this logic so no need to worry and this will be all inbox outline here we will have analytics underscore outline because this is analytics and this is posts so we will have home underscore outline only here we can see the correct symbol showing up and it's working now let's create a post page so we will have in the screens itself we will create posts underscore screen dot dot other thing that you could have done is made a views folder and created views in that but i'm not doing that after that it's going to be a stateful widget because in just a while after creating the ui we are going to create the products and display them we are going to create apis for them that's why so now we have scaffold here we are going to return a body and the body for now can be a centered child text saying products and we can put const for them but instead of doing that we are just going to pass in const for center because now we are going to have a floating action button this floating action button you can see is over here so this floating action button is going to help us go to a new page where we can add pro products and instead of post screen this should this should be product screen i'm not sure why i named it that way but now let it be so here i'm going to have a floating action button with child as a constant icon of icons dot add and then on pressed is going to be a function like this and then i'll just save this much and you can't see anything because i've not bound this post screen to the pages widget that we a list of widgets that we have and now we can pass in const over here yep cool now we can go over here restart our application there's absolutely no need but here we have it floating action button 
Now we want this floating action button to appear in the center. So what we can do is floating action button location as floating action button location dot center float. And yep, it appears in the center. Great. Also, another thing that we want to add is a tooltip. Some people won't understand what this is. So if they long tap, they want to see what is happening. So tooltip will help us with exactly that. And we can say add a product. And now if I long click on this, you can see add a product shows up. Great. Now let, let's create add post screen or add product screen right now. So let's name it add product screen dot dot. We will import material dot, create a stateful widget and call it add product screen. You already know why this is a stateful widget because we are going to create APIs and along with that, we're going to have text form field because we are going to create a form. So here we have the UI of this. So now again, we will return a scaffold over here with a body and an app bar. So for app bar, we can copy what was there in the admin screen. So let's quickly copy all of that and paste it over here. Now we just need to import global variables and save this much. And let's navigate to the add product screen to navigate. Uh, of course, we need to create a named route so we can have static constant string route name equal to slash add product. Now let's register this so we can go to router dot dot create this and pass in add product screen dot route name and even your add product screen. All right. Now in the post screen, whenever we click on this button, we want to navigate. So we can create a function over here called void navigate to add product. Pretty simple, just not mixing our UI with our logic. So just creating it at the top. Even if you create it inside of this anonymous function, it won't matter, but I just like to do it this way. Then we will have navigator dot push named and pass in the route name. Route name is add product screen dot route name. Take this navigate to add product, pass it in the on pressed and save this much. Restart our application. And if we click over here, we go on the next screen. Now in the next screen, we don't want this. Instead, we just want a simple title. So now let's close all the other file and work on this. So over here, in the title, we are going to replace this entire row with just a constant text widget saying this is the add product. We need to style this with a text style which has color of black. Now if you go over here, you can see it's pretty similar to that. Now the next thing we need to work on is this container. Now this container looks very different from what we have created so far. And this because, and it is simply because this is bordered and all of that stuff. So for that, we are going to use a plugin known as dotted border. So this is the package that we are going to use. Let's copy this, add it to the dot using dot add dependency. Let's stop our app execution. All right. Now we can run the app again, run without debugging. And in the meantime, what we can do is first of all, minimize this app bar. And now in the body, we will have dotted border. But before that, as you can analyze, we have this image and then we have this product form fields. So for that, obviously we are going to create a form and there's a possibility that this might overflow because every screen is going to be different, but our sizes are fixed. So what we can do is wrap this with a single child scroll view. So here I'm going to have single child scroll view, pass in the child and the child is going to be a form whose key we are going to create in a while, but we will have a child over here and the child is going to be a column whose children 
and the very first children child is going to be a dotted border now we have that so let's create dotted border and it's going to have a child which will be a simply a container so here in this container we will have first of all some properties defined so width will be as much space as it gets radius sorry height will be 150 decoration will be box decoration with border radius as border radius dot circular 10 so that you know we get some border radius it's exactly what we are seeing then we have a child over here which will be a column and this column will specify what contents are inside of this the folder folder thing and select product images so what we can have is children and it will be constant icon icons dot folder open with a size of 40 after that we are going to again leave some space so we have sized box as height 15 and then a text which will be not constant because you're going to use a shade color because if you see over here this is not even gray not even black this is somewhat of a shade of a gray so we are going to use that so it will not be a constant anymore so we have select product images pass in the style which will be textile with a font size of 15 and color of colors dot gray dot shade 400 you can see this is not a const anymore so if i save this much and go on this screen you can see our dotted border is appearing well but we need to leave some space from here and from here but if you analyze the screenshot that we have with the, us you can see there's some spacing left from here and there's some left from here as well and even from the other side so my point is if there is spacing left from all the sides what we can do is wrap the column only with a padding widget makes sense and then we will specify that we want it symmetric and in the horizontal direction we want it let's say 10 now we have that spacing done now in the column we will leave constant size box height 20 now we have that left as well but still it's not looking uh, really cool like this one and that's because we need to specify some properties to make it look good so here we're going to have some properties in the dotted border like border type as border type dot r rec if you pass in circle it will create something like a circle but we want it like a rec r rec so here we have it then we need to specify the radius which will be constant radius dot circular 10 now you can see the curves are appearing pretty well after that we need a dash pattern and it accepts double which will be 10 comma 4 and obviously put in a const because it's a list of integer now these dashes appear very well after that we will have stroke cap as stroke cap dot round you can see it's appearing pretty neat now after that we just need to push this in the center so that should be fairly easy with the column using main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot center and boom here we have it looks insane now we just need a couple of text fields and this text field we can reuse because our custom text field is also of the same look so let's quickly copy it down so let's create first a lot of spacing so we will have a height of 30 because you can see in the start there's a lot of space then the space decreases now we will pass in custom text field pass in the controller and hint text 
So now we will pass in and create a couple of controllers. So we will have final text editing controller as the product name controller, which will be equal to text editing controller. And let's remove this and pass in text editing controller. After that, we can copy it four more times so that we have a description controller. And then we can have price controller and then quantity controller. And I think that much is enough for the text editing controller. So obviously we need to create a dispose for them. So let's dispose them before we forget. Let's take this product name controller called dispose on them. Then a couple of more times. So we can pass in this the price controller and finally the quantity controller. Now we can go down, pass in the very first controller, which will be product name controller and then pass in the hint text, which is product name. Make sure to add not a very descriptive hint text because our validation is based on this hint text. You can see enter your product name or whatever that you want. See. Now, after that, we want a constant size box again, and now this will be smaller. So we will pass in 10. Now we can just copy this format, paste it in again, and this will be well description controller. And now we will just say description. Save this much and here we have it. Now the problem with description controller or the description form is that this is bigger because description can be bigger. So for description, what we need to do is make sure that the max number of lines that a text field can have is bigger. So what we can do is go to this custom text field and now add another input of final int max lines and require this dot max lines. Now the problem is that if we require it everywhere, you can see there are errors in our ad product screen and even in auth screen because we are using custom text field everywhere. Now suppose we have a very big tech, uh, code base now and if we want to make this change, it will ask us to uh, put in max lines everywhere and we are already happy with what we had uh, earlier. So. How do we fix this? Well, we can just remove this required and set it to the default value of one because everywhere the max number of lines was one because by default max number of line is one. Now, in case the user enters the max lines, it will set to the value the user enters from other class. Otherwise, it will take in the value of one. So now I can take this max lines, pass in max lines and pass in max lines from the constructor over here. Now here I'll pass in max lines again and pass in seven. Now here we have it. You can see description is now longer. Now similar to the product name, we are going to have several more fields. So let's quickly add them. I think two more is enough. We need price and quantity. So let's quickly put them in and same for quantity. So we have quantity and pass in quantity controller. Now we have everything. Now the last thing we want is a drop down menu. So whenever we click on this drop down menu, we want a list of categories that are available for us. So now let's create them. So you will have sized box, which will take in all the available space. Because if we don't specify this, it will only take in the amount of width it requires to put in this text, mobiles or whatever. So it will be only this much small. Just me, just let me demonstrate it to you. So it will be only this much long. We don't want that. We want uniformity. So we will just pass in this big. So here we are going to have a child of drop down button, a widget provided by Flutter. Now we will have value and the value will be the items that we create at the top, which will be the list of the product items. 
so here we can create list of string called product categories and then pass in mobiles essentials then appliances books and fashion make sure to use whatever uh, make sure to properly name them according to our global variable so if we go over there you can see mobiles essentials appliances books fashion make sure to have all of these categories and these are very essential for our app because based on this we are going to store the product categories whenever we store the products and this will play a huge role so make sure to not make any typo here so now we can go down and the i value first of all is going to be the category so let's create a global variable called string category and set it to a default value called mobiles because here you can see in our app we have already put a default value of mobiles so whenever the user clicks on the screen the first category or the default category is mobiles so now we can take this category as the value then we need an icon so the icon is going to be a constant icon of icons dot drop down or actually icons dot keyboard arrow down and then we need to pass in the items the list of items that we want in our app so now that items if you hover over this is a list of drop down menu item object so what we need to do is what we have done earlier with the carousel we need to map through the product items that we have so product categories dot map then we have string of items that we get and then we want to return this drop down menu so we will have return drop down menu item and now if you are very confused with the error that are coming in what you need to do is change it to dot to list the error goes away and now in the child we are going to have text or uh, saying the item that we have right now because we loop through it right so product categories is a list we map through them we got a single item and now we are displaying that item put a semicolon over here and now we also want to put in a value so whenever this is changed you can see there's an on change property that we need to add so whenever we click on this we need the value to be assigned right so what is that value going to be well it's just going to be item and that's why i said that this is going to carry the product categories list that we created their names is going to carry a lot of value and finally after this we need an on changed property so we can create on change and we will have string of new value and then just set state to change category equal to the new value that we received and we are pretty sure that it's never going to be null because every value every time we click on a drip drop down menu item it's going to return some value and that's it so here we have the mobiles if we click on this you can see list of options that it gives us and if i click on essentials now it's essentials and that's because of the on change property we rebuilt the whole screen cool and finally after the size box we will need another size box so that we can create a button so a button is going to be pretty simple a custom button now the text is going to be cell and the on tap is going to be the cell product that we need to create right now so here we have it the ui is now created now the next step is to create the api to sell a product let's create that but actually before creating our own api what we need to do is be able to click on a, on this and be able to select an image for exactly that we're going to the utils.dart file and here we are going to create a utility function called pick images this will help us pick images simple and now i've named it pick images because we are allowing a product to have multiple images so it will be a list of file and it will be images which will be empty then we will have a try and a catch block 
and here we are not going to display a show snack bar instead we are just going to print it out because there are very less conditions in which we are going to get any error and whenever we get this error it's mainly because the user does not select any images and that's not a correct way to show the snack bar because if the user doesn't show images we don't need the snack bar and also remove the dot html import and instead do dot io because dot html only works on web sweet so now in the try block we need to select the image for to select the image we need to install a plugin file picker or you can even install image picker as long as you know how to use them there's not much difference in both of them while picking an image or selecting an image so let's add that dot add dependency put in file picker and i'll save this file for now stop our app execution and see if there's any installation required so here in the installation and setup part we can see we need to do something for android ios web desktop or anything so here you can see android all set you should be ready to go as long as you concede runtime permissions so yep it's all good for us after that in the ios it asks us to well use all of this in case of the file type that we are using so we are using file type dot image so let's find one for that and here we have it whenever we use file type dot image or file type dot video we need to add the following key so let's click on this copy it go to our info dot p list file and add it make sure that your info dot p list file is in the ios not mac os paste it down here and then you need to explain why your app uses the photo library well we want images right so we can just write we want image for product and you need to definitely write something that is very more formal but i think for me since i'm not uploading to play store or app store that's fine so now i can rerun my application and while that is happening and actually while the app is launching now we can in the try block add await file picker dot platform dot pick files and now we need to pick files well first of all mention the type which will be file type dot images so that it will on only show us the images of the type file type sorry of uh, files of the type images sorry after that we need to make sure that we allow multiple images to be selected and here we have it also just remove the extra s over here put a semicolon after having that let's store them in a variable called files and this will be of the type file picker result you can see that we have file picker result now with this file picker result first we need to check if files is not equal to null we saw that it can be null and we know you need to check that files dot files dot is not empty so the files list that it gives us is not empty so if this is the case that means file is not null and files is not empty meaning the files which is the variable dot files which is a property which file picker result gives us is not empty so if it's not empty then we need to go to and do for int i equal to 0 we basically need to map over all the files over here so we can have files dot files i is less than files dot files dot link i plus plus and then add all of the files that file picker has to our images list so you'll have images dot add path and file which will take in a path which will be files dot files at i dot path and here you can see the argument type string can't be assigned to the parameter type string so we can just put in an exclamation mark over here and finally we will return this images list and then finally we can give your you know a future list of images or the file as a return type great it's always good to have the return type over here because later on when we use this pick images we won't know what the return type is and it will be dynamic dynamic isn't a very good thing in the add product screen we can create a function called void select images 
and this will be asynchronous again. Here we will just say result is equal to await pick images and we need to import it from the utility file. Then we need to set state of images which is not created yet. So we will create list of file called images and set it to an empty list. We will also import this file and then we will have images equal to result. Now we can take the select images and wrap this around this dotted border. So we will wrap it with a gesture detector and on tap whenever we click on this we want pick images to run. So here we have it. And actually not pick images sorry we want to run select images which is a function that we created over here. Pick images is a function in the utility file. Sweet. So now let's restart our application. Click on this floating action button. Click on select product images. And here I'm able to select the images and I can select multiple images. If I click on add, I don't see any error. That means it has been successful and images now has this. So let's try to display those images on the screen. For that, we are obviously going to use carousal slider again. So for that, we can just copy it from our carousal image.dart file. We could use this function in case we were receiving items from the constructor, but we are not doing that because we have created that in a separate feature. Now, I'm not saying we are not going to reuse some features widgets, but in this case, let's not do it. In case we want the products to show up differently over here, it's great to have a different, you know, widget shown over here. So here I can check if images, the global variable that we created is not empty. So if it's not empty, then we need to obviously show the carousal slider, otherwise a gesture detector. So we can paste it, import the carousal slider, not carousal options. It will only import this, but we want carousal sliders as well as carousal options. Then we can remove this carousal slider, save it and see what the error is. Let's remove this. Yep. Looks great. And also remove this global variables dot carousal images and instead add images dot map this. After that, we receive a, a file over here. And now the file is not going to be image dot network. It is going to be image dot file, which is another widget so that we can display a file. And if we save this, you can see the images are showing up just with the hot reload and everything shows up cleaner and neater. Now, finally, we can go to the API request where we can create our API. So now let's close all the saved files. And in the admin, we're going to create uh, another folder called services. And here we're going to have admin services dot dot file. And here we are just going to create a class called admin services inside of which we are going to have several folders. And the very first function that we're going to have is cell product. Now this is going to require a lot of things. So let's give it a named named parameter. So we will have build context, obviously just to display the errors. Then we will have a name, which is the product name. Then we will require the description which is a product description again. Then we have a price and this will be in double because the user can enter digits or decimal points. Then we can have quantity, which will be double as well. I mean, you can have interior as well. It wouldn't be a problem, but I'm just going to go ahead with double. Then we are going to have category. And then finally, a list of file. Let's copy this. And this will be called images. Now I'll import this from dart IO. And here this is going to be asynchronous and put in a try catch block. Obviously over here we are going to show a snack bar. So you will have e.2 string. And now the very first thing that we need to do is upload the images 
to the database now we could have done that in the server side but doing it in the server side is less easier as compared to doing it in the client side using a plugin which is provided to us first of all where are we going to store these images now we can't store these images in mongo database you can store them but i think it's very difficult to store them and i would not recommend doing that because we have only 512 mb of storage given by mongodb because we are using their shared cluster so instead what i would recommend you to use is cloudinary this is the website for cloudinary.com and this is their client sided usage so we can use cloudinary instead of sending http requests to this cloudinary uh, storage what we can do is use cloudinary public which as it tells here allows us to upload media files directly to cloudinary without exposing our api key or secret key which is huge so now let's quickly log in and you would have to sign up in case you're coming for the first time actually i'll also sign up so you need to enter your name i'll enter rivan ranavat then i'll enter my email after entering the password and the email you don't have to enter company site name then here you need to enter a product so we can just write programmable media for image and video api click on i am not a robot and click on create account all right so after confirming the email here we come welcome to cloudinary what's your main role i'm just going to say developer click on continue then we need to build a new website we can click on done and here we have it now let's first of all delete all the samples we don't need them let's click on refresh we have all of these samples still there let's quickly delete all of them and then here in the settings we need to get two things first of all so actually let me tell you why we need them so here we can just take this cloudinary public add it to our dart dependency let's stop our app execution and now let's create an instance of the cloudinary so let's run our app also so here we have final cloudinary equal to cloudinary public and let's initialize that where in the constructor it asks for a cloud name and the upload preset so for cloud name what we can do is go to the dashboard and here you can see this is the cloud name we can copy this paste it here and then it asks for upload preset as we saw we don't need api key or api secret key anymore so we can just click on settings and get our upload preset so to get the upload preset here we need to click on upload go down enable unsigned uploading delete this signed uploading and then this is our upload preset so we can copy this upload preset go to our dashboard again and here pass in the upload preset as well now make sure to not use whatever i'm using and create your own account because i'm going to be deleting everything after this tutorial great so now we have a file list of files and it is called images so now i'll create list of string called image urls and what we are going to do is essentially map through all of these images and send it to this cloudinary storage so we will have for int i is equal to 0 i is less than images dot length i plus plus then we will have await cloudinary dot upload file and you can also refer to the documentation here which clearly states how to go ahead here it is written so we need to upload file and as we saw over here cloudinary file dot from file is what we need to pass in so we will have cloudinary file dot from file it gives various option like from bytes from from url from future by byte data but we will use from file because we have a file and then we will have images at i and this is a file we'll use that files path and store it over there now we will just use cloudinary response to store it in a response variable 
After that, we can just use images image URLs dot add, which is this list of string, and add the response dot secret URL that it gives us. Sorry, secure URL. So this is the download URL that we get from Firebase or the upload URL, whatever you want to call it. Now we have access to this, so we can send this to our API. But before doing any of that, let's... So now before moving ahead, there's one thing that I would like to tell and one change that I would like to make. That simply, we store all of the files over here. But you can see if we store it, it will store in our, it in our media file uh, library and it will store it here continuously. I mean, there has to be some management in our uploading as well, right? Let's make a folder for this. It won't create a folder by default. It will just store images here like itself. So here we can pass in the folder. So every product that we have will have its own folder inside of which we will have several images. So here we can pass in the folder as the name of the product and save this much. Now we can go ahead. We are not able to test it yet because we don't have all of this stuff. So now let's create a product and finally upload it to our MongoDB as well. Now we will be uploading only URLs to our MongoDB. So now first of all, we have to create a product model. So let's quickly create that product dot dot. So it will be pretty simple class product, whatever we have accepted from the constructor. That's all we need. So we will call it final string name, final string description, final double quantity, final list of string of images. And make sure to not use file over here. We are storing all the download URLs over here. Then we have final string category, final double price. And here we will also have string which can be nullable called ID, a string which can be nullable called user ID. All of this we are not storing right now while sending data to our server but we will store when we get data from our server. And we will also have rating, which we will create later on after we add the rating functionality and make sure to add the final keyword for both of them as well. Now we can create a constructor, then JSON serialization. And like earlier, we made changes for the ID in the from map function. We can pass in map underscore ID over here. You can see in our user dot dot file as well, we have passed in map underscore ID over here. And similar to that, we have map underscore ID in the product as well, because you're we not passing in the ID mongoose or mongo database is going to create it for us. Having that in place, let's create a product model over here. So we will call this product. And now we need to pass in the name. We have a description. We have it quantity. We have it images. We need to pass in the image URLs, category, price, and all of that is done. There's no need to enter rest of the things that it has. For example, ID and user ID because they are nullable. After that, we just need to post that. But before doing that, we need to create that API. So what we can do is go to our server. And here in the routes, we are going to create admin.js route. This will contain all the admin.js functions. So obviously import express. Then we need to create an admin route, which will be equal to admin router, which will be equal to express dot router as a function. And then we need to create a post function so that we can add a product. Now, before starting with this, there's an exercise I would like you to do. Well, it's just creating an admin middleware. Like we have this auth.js middleware, we need to create something like an admin middleware. What different will be admin middleware 
it's basically here the only difference that we need to make is get we have the id we need to get the user by their id and check if the type is admin or not that's the only thing similar to the auth middleware so try it on your own if you can do it then let me know in the comment section otherwise we'll do it together were you able to do it if not let's do it if yes let's verify your work so here in the middleware we are going to create admin dot js then we are going to require jwt so we will have json web token then we will create a function called admin which will be asynchronous and will give request response and next we have already understood what all of them are we need a try catch block and instead of writing all of that let's take in the inspiration from auth you should write it on your own but since i'm already familiar with how to go about it and i've written it multiple times before before even creating this tutorial so i'm just going to copy paste it so over here after if it's not verified and we are setting user to verify dot id and all of that here we can get the user by their id so we will have constant user equal to await user dot find by id we will pass in the verified dot id also get user so we need to require user so we will have constant user which will be equal to require dot dot slash models slash user great now we have that user we also have awaited it and we can use await because it's an asynchronous function so here we can check if user dot type we already have that so if we go to our mongo database you can see if users type is admin so here we are just checking if it is user or the user's type is seller then we need to return a status saying 401 this is unauthorized saying with the message you are not an admin and if it is an admin well obviously request dot user request dot token and here we have it great so now we can create the post route so obviously let's add a comment of adding product so we will have a post route which will be called slash admin now we have already used api but it is for a common user for admin we are going to use slash admin slash add product and in case you want to extend this app further after this tutorial and you don't you want even the sellers to be a normal user what you can add here is auth instead of creating an admin middleware but we are allowing only admin to use that so obviously import admin which will be dot dot slash middleware slash admin now we have passed or admin as a middleware and you can add as many middlewares as you want you want two three four you can add them so obviously we'll have asynchronous request response then we have a try and a catch block over here we are basically going to return res dot status of 500 you should be familiar with this by now we are just making use of this again and again so it should be a good practice for you and here we have to get some things from request dot body obviously we already know how the format of this is so now we can have name description images quantity price and category now just to remind you these names over here should be matching to our product dot dot file so here when we convert it to map you can see all of these should be matching to what we pass in in the routes great so now let's create a product model so now we have to create a product model here as well so we'll have product.js and similar to user model we're going to have all of that so let's paste it down here call it product schema and now we will just have this much 
before we forget let's create a model for this which will be product and it will equal to mongoose dot model pass in the model name which will be product and this will be the product schema and obviously export it which will be equal to product now before forgetting all of this let's do it right here itself now let's define our schema so first of all we need a name which will be of the type string required set to true and trim should also be true then we need a description which will be of the type string required again set to true and trim again set to true after that we let's add images this will be an array so now till now we have not stored any array anywhere in our application right so to store an array what you can do is obviously create like this type of string type of array sorry like this but instead of doing that we are using something fancy over here we are using list and this images list is going to consist of properties which will be type string and or will always be required so it will be set to true so here we are creating an array of images which have these properties after that we need a quantity which will be obviously a number you can't pass in int over here or anything like that you need to pass in a type number or otherwise you can just pass in int 32 array or int something like that then this is also set to true then we need a price which will be of the type number again and will be required let's rename this to number again after having quantity and price we need category the user id we are still left with that so obviously type string required true this is the category which is mobiles or whatever then finally we will have the user id which will store the id of the user who sold this now i don't think it is needed so let's remove this what my idea initially was that we would create user id which would store the id of the admin who sold this but now as i'm thinking i think we will have only one admin in this application which will be ourselves so there's no need of storing user id so we can again go to our product.dart file remove the user id remove this user id again this and this and we are good to go so again we can go to the product.js and finally we are going to have something known as ratings but we will reach there later on now we have all of this so let's create a product model which will be let product equal to product we have imported that and it will be a new product obviously and then we need to pass in in the object the properties that we need so obviously name we know the shorthand syntax now description images quantity price category user id is not there anymore so i think all that is there is this if we go over here you can see name is needed description images quantity price category all of that we have passed in now we need to save it to our database so we will do product is equal to await product dot save what we are doing here is basically using let let will make us change the variable name later on or variable value later on if we use constant we know that from flutter as well if anything is constant it can't change later on but with let it allows us to change and here we are basically creating a new product and assigning it to product then we are saving that product which is a model and it gives us a function dot save we are saving that to mongo database and whatever mongo database returns to us which is a, a product with an underscore id and underscore underscore version that we are saving in product so that we can return product to our client side
So now we could test this API using Thunder client, but instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is directly go to the admin services dot dot file and here directly create a post request to check in our application itself. So I'm going to import HTTP as HTTP. Then we will have HTTP dot post. We have to pass in the URL, which will be URI dot parse, pass in the URL, which will be dollar URI from our global variables slash admin slash add product, pass in the headers. So we have to pass that outside this URI. So we'll pass in the headers because this will be only by authenticated or authorized users because this has a functionality of auth middleware. So obviously we need to pass in the headers. So let's copy the headers from one of the files. So we have auth service and let's find the headers. We have this header. Let's go here, pass in this header. And finally we need to pass in X auth token, which will be from the user provider. So let's create the user provider at the top. It's not an asynchronous function. So we can create this at the top calling it provider dot off user provider context listen set to false and that's it. Now we can take this user provider and use user provider dot user dot token which can never be null. And finally, don't forget to pass in your body because headers are different. We are, we are authorizing ourselves using this header, but with body, we are sending the data that we need. So if we go to admin.js, you can see authorization is done using admin middleware, which looks at the request.header. But here we are looking at request.body. Those are two separate things. So now we need to pass in body, which will be product dot to JSON. After that, we need to do error handling, which will be HTTP error handling, and we need to pass in response. So let's store this in the response called response res equal to await HTTP dot post. Now we can pass this response and in on success, we can display a show snack bar saying product added successfully and then navigator dot pop so that we go back to the main screen. Uh, so if I restart my application now and before doing anything else, let's bind the cell product to our posts, actually add product screen. So now we will create an instance of the class. So we will have final admin services equal to admin services. Now take this admin services call void cell product. Now, obviously we need to validate our form and for that we are going to create a global key for that. So we will have, let's say final underscore add product form key equal to global key of form state. and use that, that add product form key in our form. So let's go down to our form and here use the key add product form key. Now we will be able to use the validate function so that every field in this screen gets validated. We have already looked at it in our auth dot dot file. If you forgot about it, it's a good way to remember about it. So now it will give us a Boolean value to validate. And if the form is correct, all the fields have been passed in, then we can say admin services dot cell product pass in the name, which will be well product name. So let's quickly type in product name controller dot text. Then we will pass in description, which will be description controller dot text price will be price controller dot text quantity. 
and actually this requires a double value so what we can do is double dot parse and since this is a string we can use double dot parse so pass in this so we have this done now we can copy this paste it over here and do the same for quantity controller and here we have it sweet now before even validating the form one thing to note here is that if we validate the form it will not think about this image that is there so here we also need to make sure that the images that we have is not empty so we need to make sure and actually instead of uh, or we need to do and so we need this form to be true that means all the controllers that are there should be filled and the images list that we have should not be empty after doing this much and using the cell product down in the on tab we can pass to it the cell product and restart our application now let's see how it works around I'll select some products. Let's say I select a few iPhones. You can see I'm able to select them. I'll call them iPhone 13 Pro 128 GB. I'll give some description. Let's say great iPhone for great people. I don't know, man. I <laughs> this much. So then in the description, we can say good phone must buy totally worth it. And yeah, now we can pass in the price thousand dollars quantity we have is 20 and it's in mobile section. So now we can click on sell. Nothing is happening. And you can see we got an error cannot post slash admin now anyway when whenever we get this error it we should be sure that the url name is correct so we have that correct url name other thing that we should note is that this admin router should not should be connected to our index.js file so quickly export it and then use it in the index.js file using app.use admin router and here we need to save this and we are still getting an error the reason for that is if we go to our admin router and in the admin we have not exported this so let's quickly export this so we'll have module.exports equal to admin i usually forget that now if we go over here connection has been successful so now let's restart our application and all the data is now gone so i'll quickly fill in and then see you so I filled in all the details. Now I can click on sell. And you can see product added successfully. Now there are no errors over here. Even in the debug console, there are no errors. So now if I just refresh my database to see a new collection over here, which is products. We had a users collection, which consisted of all the user data. Here we have the products collection, which consists of all the products. And this is our very first product. It consists of images and you can see our secure URL. If I just click on edit to grab one of them and paste it in the browser, you can see we have our iPhone here. Also, just to show you the folder management, if I click on refresh, you can see iPhone 13 Pro 128 GB. Both of them are the same folders, but this consists of all the URLs. And this came in two times because there was some error in our script, but still it's fine. This won't happen and repeat again, but here we have it. Our four files showing up. So now our data is getting stored. The next step is to display them over on the screen. It should be very, very easy for us to do it. All right. So now what I want to do is close the terminal, close all the save files so that it looks a bit cleaner and a lot less messy. And now in the admin services dot file, I'm going to go down and create a new function to get all the products. Now, 
to get all the products let's first of all create our own api to create our own api obviously let's go to the admin.js file and this is your fourth exercise to get all your products by all i mean literally every product that is mentioned i want we want that so that we can display it on the screen because we are the admin right and the api name that we want is slash admin slash get products pretty simple so please try it on your own and then we can do it together were you able to do it if not we can do it together otherwise follow along no problem so your admin router dot get should have slash admin slash get products and make sure to make it as a get request because this will not be a post request all we are doing over here is just fetching the products we don't need any input from the client side right we just go on the screen we see the products no input is given so yeah that's it now we need an admin middleware because only admin should be able to access it and then obviously request response and yeah that's it now over here we have our try catch block and then we should have race rest dot status 500 dot json and the json that we will pass in is the product sorry the error saying e dot message and in the try block what are we going to have well we are going to get the products and it's fairly simple await product dot find and then we don't pass in any criteria of what we need to find using find as we have seen before it will get give us a list of documents of whatever id that we pass in for example if you want to pass in if you want to get a particular id then what will we do pass in id over here and pass in the user's id like this suppose this is the user's id if you want the uh let's say product description so with their description if their description is again double a then we can get their description using that and it will fetch us all the products in an array which are with this aa but here we are not specifying only what property we need to find by that means it will get all the products that we need and then simply we just need to return that to the client so we will have res.json products and that is our get products route pretty simple just a bit of logic was required in that and obviously we are going to fetch all the products and what we are going to do over here is quite different from what we did earlier on here we are going to return list of products by converting them for example we send the json products over here right we are sending the products data back to the client side here we in our client side we have access to the product model with that product model we are also able to convert any json format that gives us into a product model so here to use it in our app we are going to return future list of product because we are going to get list of product in a json format and this is obviously going to be asynchronous and thus we will also need a try and a catch block and then we are just going to return a show snack bar with a context and the string that says e.2 string obviously we need to pass in build context over here so that we can appropriately show snack bars then we need a user provider because we know we need to get the token of the user so we have final user provider equal to provider dot of user provider context dot yeah that's it then we can create a list of product as well outside the try block so we have list of product 
called product list which will be empty now this product list will get some data as soon as we convert the json to a product model so for that we need to send a get request so we will have http dot get pass in the url which will be uri dot parse dollar uri slash admin slash get products a lot of boilerplate code again and again we are writing so that you are familiar with what you are writing and you know it becomes a practice to write this way after that all we need is headers because authentication is still needed we don't need to add any body but authentication is still needed so obviously we can copy these two headers paste it in over here and save this in a variable so we will have response response equal to this and then we are going to handle this error so we'll pass in response and then on success what we need to do is convert this json format that it gives us the response dot body whatever json format it gives us we need to convert that to a product model now as you can see we are going to get list of products in json format over here also we are finding products and it will be list of products so what we need to do is run a for loop so that we can get each and every product that we have so we will have for int i is equal to 0 i is smaller than json decode response dot body if we just do response dot body dot length it will give us like 100 characters or so because the response dot body is a string and we are getting that string's length but in if we do json decode it will convert it into a list format that we want and grab its length then we will just do i plus plus then we will just do product list dot add which is this and we need to add product over here so well first of all what we need to do is product dot from json and enter the product now what is the product going to be response dot body whatever it sends us at a particular index which is this for loops index that we have but you can see from json accepts a string if we use json decode it doesn't give us a string so what we need to do is wrap this json from json with json encode and in that we'll have json decode so that we can pass in response dot body at particular index i let me format this so that i can explain it to you again if it's not clear basically what we are doing is we are having product list which is a list of products and empty for now we are adding them then we are using product dot from json which we got from json serialization when we created our product model then we are converting it let's say we are converting it over here we have response dot body we are converting that into a map or a, or a format using which we are able to get the products json a particular products json at that particular index since we are looping it and then we are encoding that because from json accepts a string source we can't just pass in json decode right so if i just try to do this it's not great because it will give us an object so now it's not giving any error because json decode is of the type dynamic but when we run it it will give us a runtime error because from json will accept a string json decode will not give a string finally we will use json encode over here so that we can use a string and it converts that json to a string and then we are converting it into a model and adding it to our product list great this was a bit of twist and trick but that's cool for us we can solve that after that we just need to return that product list and cool we are done now we just need this fetch all products to run whenever we start the screen so now we need to go to the post screen and if you want rename it to product screen and call the init state function and then here we are going to call fetch all products and we can't run that function of admin services this function over here 
in the nth state because nth state cannot be turned asynchronous. If I do it over here, it will not give us any error, but in the runtime, it will give us error because nth state can't be asynchronous. So to avoid that, you can either do it in did change dependencies. Otherwise, you can just create a separate function, fetch all products, which can be asynchronous later on. And obviously create an instance of admin services over here. In case you're wondering why I do it globally every time, that's simply because if we have more admin services feature that we want to use, we don't have to use admin services dot fetch all products or anything. In that case, we can just use admin services instance and get all products. And we've passed in the context. And you can see it has a return type of list of products. So let's await it. And also to display it, we will need a list of products to show up. So what we can do is create list, list of product, which can be nullable called products. And this is nullable and not empty because here we need to show a loading bar as long as we don't fetch the products, which can take some time, right? We are sending, we are getting data from the server. So as long as the data is being fetched, we want to show a loading indicator. Now, whenever we fetch all the products, you might see a bit of delay. Now, to put that loading indicator, we are going to check if it wasn't an empty uh, list, if it was an empty list, suppose, we are going to check if products dot is empty, then we are going to show a loader, otherwise this. But the thing is, initially, even if fetch all products doesn't have any product, for example, before we have added any product, the, the admin is using the app for the very first time. And there are no products at all. Even then the products list will be empty. So that will cause our app to continuously show a pro loading indicator, but that's not the case. We've already fetched it. That's why we are using nullable type over here so that we can check if products is equal to null. That means that the data has not been fetched. And if it's empty, that means that the data has been fetched because list of product is always going to return product list. Uh, if it's empty, then it's not going to add and return an empty list at least. Now let's create a constant over here called actually a widget over here called loader dot dot. And we can import a material dot for that, create a stateless widget, call this loader. And basically we just need to return a centered child showing a circular progress indicator. Obviously mark this as constant nothing else is needed. You can specify the color of this and all of that in loader. But in our case, we've already set in the main dot dot the theme of our application. And that's exactly what we want to show. So we have the loader here, pass in const over here and actually remove this colon. Sweet. Now still it won't show us anything. And that's mainly because, well, we need to run set state so that it fetches all the products, which can take some time. So after the widget has been rebuilt completely, you know, it will show us the loader and then it will set state that, yep, the loading part has been completed. Now let's get our terminal and restart our application just to see if there's any error. And now you can see loader is continuously displaying. The reason for that is pretty simple. You can see the error showing here as well. Here in provider, we have not set listen to false, even if even since we are outside of this post screen, you know, build context function. So now let's restart our application and we are still seeing this loading indicator. The problem again is that we are fetching all the products, but we have not saved it in the products variable. So let's quickly save it and restart the application. Here you can see we are seeing this again. We can restart the application. We get it very quickly, but for a very small time, you could have seen the loading indicator showing up. Now let's display this products on the screen. For that, it's pretty simple. We have the body here. We just need to replace the body with whatever we want to show. 
So first of all, we just need to show a grid view dot builder. So here we have the design of our application. This is how we want to make it. Well, you can see this is the design and this design might seem very similar to the single products that we had created. If you remember, we had created single product dot dot widget. We are going to reuse this widget over here. Even though it's in another feature, it's pretty good. We are just going to reuse that feature everywhere now. So first of all, we need a grid delegate. So the grid delegate is going to be constant sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count. Mainly how many products do you want to show on this uh, in a row side thing in horizontal direction? How many products do you want to show? Well, I just want to show two and then the item builder, which will give us context and index and we're going to return something. So now in the item builder, we are going to get first of all the product data. So let's save it in product data variable. We have product data equal to products, which can never be null index. And we are saying, and we are assuring that this can never be null. Because we are already checking here if the product is null, we are going to show the loader and it will keep showing the loader as long as it's null. So here we can be sure that the product is not null. Then we need to return a column. We are not returning just a product, single product because it's just displaying to us the list of the products, right? I mean, sorry, the image of the product. Here we also need to display the text and the delete icon. So for that, we are going to return a column with children. And the first child is going to be of the sized box. We are going to give it a specific height of 140 saying this is the child, which is the single product. Now single product will receive a type of image. So let's pass in the image, which will be product data dot images at zero. You can see that images can be a list of string, but we only want to access the very first element on that because we can't display a carousal image on that. You know, it, it is going to look very weird. And now finally we want a row so that we can display the text and the delete icon. So let's quickly create a row with some children and obviously main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot space evenly. Then the children is going to have an expanded child of text saying product data dot name overflow is going to be text overflow dot ellipses. We have already looked at this logic, so I'm not explaining it again and again. And then max line is two. If you want, you can set it to three, four, five, whatever, but let's keep it two so that it looks good enough. After that, we need an icon button so that we can create a delete option. We're not going to create a delete option right now, but we will look at it later on. So we have icons dot delete underscore outline and also put a const over here. Yeah, cool. Now we are getting this error and that error is coming mainly because we have not specified the item count in our grid view builder. So the item count is products dot length and also make sure to pass in null, not nullable. Then click on restart. And here we have it. We are able to display the products. Now let's add another product. So we will have a bottle so that, you know, we just have some other category. So let's say stainless steel bottle. This is good non rusty bottle price will be, let's say $30 and the quantity will be 200 and we are going to mark it as essentials. Then click on sell and the product has been added successfully. If you're not able to see it, don't worry. If we come back over here, you can see stainless steel bottle. Just need to refresh it. Great. All right. Now let's just work on the delete product as well. Since we are over here, I know I said that we will touch that later, but now let's just get done with it. I'll close the loader file and in the admin.js, 
let's make this as an exercise for you create a route using which we will be able to delete the product i'm not giving you any clues for this try to use the functions which we haven't touched before actually but you have told to you about it so try it on your own and let me know in the comments if you could do it were you able to do it if not don't worry about it we'll create the api together so that we're using admin router dot get slash admin slash delete product obviously we are going to do admin call this as an asynchronous callback function and have this now obviously this is not going to be get this is going to be post because we need to send in a body of the id of the post that we want to delete or the index So here we are obviously going to have try catch block. So I'll just copy it from here. I'm tired of writing it again and again. And now in the rest dot status we have e dot message. But over here, what we are going to do is first of all grab the ID from request dot body. Then we want to find the product and delete it. So for that I've already mentioned about it. We will use product dot find by ID and delete. This is the function that is given. So we'll find by ID the product. and then delete that product pretty simple so we'll just pass an id and then we will do product is equal to await product dot save so that we save the updated list in our database and then rest dot json send in the product that was deleted now there's no need for this but just to send a status code of 200 we are doing this now we can come to the admin services class and in here we will create a function called void delete product and like other functions we are going to have required build context then product that we want to delete and then a void callback of on success now earlier we saw that whenever we created a product let me just type it out then i can explain so earlier we saw that whenever we created a product or fetched all the products and then maybe added a product you saw that we had to refresh the screen that means go over here and again come back to see that new element now to resolve this what we can do is except from the parameter on success argument when we do this in the on success what we will do is in the post screen whenever we call this method we will take the products and remove that product that we just deleted in the database as well so on the client side also we are deleting what the user sees and even on the server side so on success with the, will help us with that because we are not giving the because if we don't take it from the uh, parameter what will happen is we won't be able to call set state let's suppose we pass in the product list which is this products we pass it over here and then delete the product but to display it on the screen again we need to call set state we can't call it in admin services it's not a stateful widget so for that purpose we are having on success passed in through the parameter now rest of the things are going to stay pretty similar so what i can do is copy this go down again and paste it over here now obviously we'll make some changes now we don't need to create product and cloudinary all of that stuff so let's remove all of that obviously we need to put an asynchronous and in the headers we want to pass that but product we don't want to send in the product we just want to send in the id of the product we can pass in the product dot to json but instead of sending that whole what we can do is just pass in id so that will be id and then pass in product dot id and obviously json encode this and there we have it id sent and we obviously have the headers done make sure to add that then in the error handling on success part we'll just pass in the on success callback function cool now we can take this delete product and use it in our function 
so here we can create void delete product and let me just type it again and it will take in product argument because even here we don't know which product has to be deleted only when we click on that button we will get to know which product has to be deleted and obviously the index so that we can delete it from the client side as well so now we can use admin services dot delete product now context is there product is passed in now in the on success what do we need to do i would highly recommend you to try it on your own and think about it well it's pretty simple right we just take the products and then remove at that particular index that we get it so in the grid view builder we have access to the index so with that index we will remove that particular product simple and now we need to reflect that changes on the screen so we need the build function to rebuild again so we can call set state easy our work is done only if it success it will remove otherwise it won't remove it now we can go down and here call delete product pass in the product which will be product data and the index is obviously there because the index is the same name now we can save this much and whenever we click on suppose let's say iphone 13 pro you can see we are getting an error over here and we got that error because if we go back to the admin services we again forgot to change our url so let's copy the url from here and paste it over here pretty stupid mistakes here we keep making but that's fine now if we click on iphone pro 13 no document found for query this object id so that error came in mainly because if we come back over here we have product is equal to await product dot save and we don't need that whenever we do product dot find by id and delete this will make sure that the product is deleted and the product is saved as well so now we just need to do this and then we can send a json of product i change all of this just to debug what was going wrong but now we know the error we just need to do product dot find by id and delete and then send the product now if i try it again and click on delete you can see we are not getting any error anywhere and now if i restart the application the product is deleted now even if we go to the mongodb database and go to the products you can see query results are zero now let's add uh, some products so that we can see them on the main screen when we move to the user side of the things so after this obviously we are going to move to the move, uh, user side we are not going to work in the admin anymore because there are no features to add in uh, admin as long as we don't allow the user to send the products to anyone right so now i'll add some products like two or three and then see you when i change it to the user side of the app all right so i've added two products over here but i'm still on the admin screen just to notify you that whenever we add a product you could see that it wasn't real time now having the knowledge how to make it look real time you can do this for the add product as well so that you know it looks a good experience for the user or and also now we can go to the users I wanted to demonstrate how I'm shifting to the user part if you have not already noticed. Here I'm just changing the type to user. And I'm clicking on update and then restarting the application. Here we have it. Now what we need to work on is whenever I click on one of the categories, I want to get shifted to another screen and display the catag uh, display the products of that category. So for that we are again coming to the home feature. Let's minimize all the other folders. And in the home screen, we are going to pass in another screen called category deals screen dot dot. Here, obviously, we'll import the material dot, call it as a stateful widget because we need to get the products. And now we are going to create a category deals screen. Now, over here, we're going to do things a bit differently. First of all, we are going to have a scaffold and that's going to be normal. And then we need an app bar that is also going to be normal. So we can go to the admin screen, get the admin screens app bar. So let's quickly copy that and paste it in the app bar space. Then click on import library. 
and in the title instead of a row we want to display a text that just says that this is this category and we are going to get category from the constructor so we can write final string category and this will be required this dot category and we are receiving from the constructor so that whenever we click on one of these screens we get the suppose we click on essential so we get the essential string and based on that we can fetch products over here so here i'm just going to write text as widget dot category and then the style will be obviously the black color so let's quickly add that style so we have style constant textile of color colors dot black great so now over here after this preferred size widget we need to add a body and here the body should be a column showing a list of widgets so the very first thing that we need is saying that that the children are container of padding and then we need to add that padding so we have edge insets dot symmetric from the horizontal direction we have let's say 15 and from the vertical direction we have 10 after that we have to align them so we have alignment dot top left and then we need to have a child saying the text and there this text will basically tell keep shopping for and the category of that so we have keep shopping for dollar widget dot category and i use braces for that because if there is like a dot in full stop and it's not a single word then we need to use brace for that then obviously we need to style this so that we can increase the font size the color will be black so we don't need to worry about that so we have font size as 20 and now just to view it what we are going to do is whenever we click on any of these buttons so let's go to the top categories and here if any of the button is clicked so here it is first of all we'll have to wrap this with a gesture detector so wrap it with a widget called gesture detector and then the on tap is going to be what we tell it to be so it will be void navigate to category page And this will just receive the category that we clicked on because we can't get access to it in the separate function that is created, right? And now we will just say navigator dot push named. And I just realized we didn't create a route for that. So we need to go in the category deal screen and call this static string, static constant string route name which will be equal to slash category deals then we can take this route name and go to the router dot dart obviously paste it over here and this will be called category deals screen dot route name return the category deal screen and this is not and here we need to pass in so here we need to pass in a, an argument that is the category. So let's quickly add that. Now how do we get access to the category that the user passes in? Well, it's very simple. We just say var category equal to settings and it will be route settings because our parameter type is your route settings and this route settings dot arguments. And now if we save this, you can see that the type of category is an object we don't want that we want it to be a string so we can say as string because we know always the user will always enter a string now we can take this category pass it in and it's not a constant value so we can just remove that cool now we also need a build context over here since this is a stateless widget and we have the build context and then finally the route name we want to transfer it to so it will be category deals screen dot route name and finally the argument that we want to pass in which can be done using this arguments argument and then pass in the category as the argument now we can take this navigate to category page and pass it in like this 
and what do we need to pass in well first of all context and then the category to get the category we can just pass in global variables so let's get access to them dot category images add that index where we clicked and it's titan pretty straightforward and here you can see the argument type string can't be assigned to the parameter type int so the error is because we have passed in carousal images over here it is category images and now finally here we can put an exclamation mark because it can be nullable now let's see if we click on any of this keep shopping for essentials it shows up keep shopping for appliances it shows up now the next step is to get the details which we were working on over here so now after this container we need to have another container which will be of the height 170 and let's make it a sized box so we'll have a sized box of height 170 since you only need to specify the height no other property has to be changed and the child will be a grid view builder and just to tell you why we're using grid view builder again it's mainly because builder list view builder grid view builder is always used when we don't know the item count so i mean we know the item count but it's going to be dynamic it's going to keep changing so builder is good in that because it will only build on demand right so here we are going to have constant sliver grid delicate with fixed cross axis count and the cross axis count is one child aspect ratio is 1.4 and main axis spacing is 10. Great, now we can have item builder as context, index, and return something. Now, as of now, item builder is not going to return anything because we don't have access to any of the products. So what we can do is return a text saying hello. And we will specify item count so that it doesn't give us error, like let's say 10. And obviously we'll specify other properties like scroll direction, which will be axis dot horizontal. Then we need some padding. So we will have padding as constant edge inserts dot only and from the left 15. So after saving this much, we can see hello, hello, hello keeps showing up because we've passed in the item count over here as 10 and if we keep scrolling we can see all of them showing up side by side sweet so now let's create an api so that we can get all the data of a certain category so that we can keep displaying them so here in the home we are going to create service is and here we are going to have home services dot dot file here we are going to create home services create a function for that but before that let's quickly rename it and then we are going to return a future of list of products because essentially they're going to be products and we have we've seen this pattern already right so it's not a big deal so we just need to do fetch category products get the build context so we have build context then a category of which we want to get products so we'll have required string category now we can create this function and obviously we need a uh, need to write a lot of boilerplate code again so what i'm going to do is go to the admin services and copy all of this code that we have in the fetch all products part because we need to fetch category products and it's going to be a very similar thing to that so obviously let's import all of the stuff again import http as http dot dot here we have it now obviously make this function asynchronous you should be familiar with the pattern till now and then import global variables import http error handling and import dot convert and finally the utility files show that so that we can show the snack bar great we have everything now let's make some changes that we want to make well first of all 
this line is correct this line is correct we need all of these this is for token this is just for returning the product list then here we need to create our request so i can go to the product.js file and here we don't have it so let's quickly go down and in the routes we will create product.js and this will basically fetch us all the products of a certain category so obviously again we have to write a lot of boilerplate code so what i'm going to do is go to the admin router copy this line paste it over here then copy this line paste it over here and then we are going to create a get request so we can take this and paste it in between now let's change all of these places so i'm going to press option on mac os so that i can grab all of these three things and change it side by side so we have product router and here we have it so now we have to pass in slash api now this is not a uh, admin route this is everyone can access a route so now and finally we need products over here now obviously we need a middleware of auth so let's import that so we have constant auth equal to require dot slash auth and this not this auth because this is a route auth so we'll do dot dot slash middleware slash auth sweet so now over here first of all i want to look i want you to look at this api route that we're creating this is a get request we are not doing a post request anymore because we don't want to post any data to our server we just want to retrieve that data but along with that we need to give a certain kind of you know body to it how do we give that body well it's not a post request so obviously we won't be able to give any body in the get request so now in the url itself we are going to give the body so how are we going to do that well the a url that we have here is api slash products but now it will become and we want the uh from the client side to enter something like category is equal to let's say essentials this is the url that the client side will have to enter so that it can get products of a certain category you can see that so with exclamation mark we are putting a full stop uh, to our path which is the main part which is also the url scheme of our product router and then after that we have the name of our property which will give us the value of these essentials now the thing is if the client side gives us this url how are we going to access this value essentials value now to access that we are going to use this request object again we use this for request dot body we are going to use this for getting this essentials category as well so to do that what we are going to use is request dot query dot category so basically request dot query will get us anything with an exclamation mark uh, with an with a question mark before it so suppose you have another url that is api slash theme question mark so suppose you have another url which is slash api slash suppose let's say amazon and we put in a question mark which will be theme equal to dark that means if we want the if amazon client side to be of the theme dark then we can do this so now to access this dark value what we can do is request dot query dot theme. With this, we get access to this dark variable or the dark parameter, whatever you want to call it. We get access to that. In case you want to have something like API slash products slash sorry products category is equal to essentials. If you want this kind of URL scheme, then you'll have to use request dot params dot category you can see that with this we get access to this essentials value but if we use request dot query it will get us this value when we use question mark i hope that was clear 
now we can just remove all of these comments and get the particular api product so what we can do is uh, obviously console.log it so that i can show it to you so we have request dot query dot we are going to call it category and save this much obviously get the product from the models dot dot file and what do we need to find well a category based on request dot query dot category pretty simple and then we just need to return that to the user as simple as it gets now we can take this slash api slash products go to this and instead of this url we want to pass in slash api slash products and now we need to pass in the category which will be category equal to and then we need to pass in the category which we have access to through the parameter so we have category here we have it now we need to do error handling again and we will get a product list because we are using find over here in the product route so it will fetch us a lot of categories so we can just use for loop and all of this explanation and logic i've done it already and then finally we just need to return this product list now we can take this home services go to our category deals and get all of the products that we need so what we can do is init state and we are going to call this fetch category products we are going to use this fetch category products call this asynchronous and this will be list of product this is pretty similar to what we have already done so i could have given this as an exercise now i think about it but that's fine if you had paused the video and done it by yourself that's a very good initiative by yourself try to do it more often throughout this video because now everything is going to probably be similar except the search functionality and all of that part i think it's pretty similar so now let's quickly build the app we have home service home service equal to home services and then we can take this home services and call home services dot fetch category products pass in the required category so the category is widget dot category because we are getting it through the constructor and then we need to call set state so that the entire widget rebuilds or the build function rebuilds sorry now we have access to this fetch category product and the product list so you are obviously first check in the body that if product list is equal to null then we need to return a constant loader otherwise we need to return a column now we can come down and scroll here so we need to return a column which will have certain children with a sized box of height 130 then a child of decorated box and the decorated box will have decoration of box decoration so now we need a border which will be border dot all and pass in the color as colors dot black 12 width will be 0.5 i'm not explaining this code over here because we have already written so much of ui code that now it should be very familiar what all these properties mean and what will come out on the screen we will see that later on so now we need to pass in a child in the decorated box which will be a padding of padding const edge insets dot all and pass in a value of 10 then we need to pass in a child again which will be image dot network and now we need to get this image network now what is this image network well first of all let's get clear with the product over here so product will be product list that we just created at the top and that particular index that we get over here as we saw grid view builder will return to us an index so at that particular index we are going to have this product now we have access to that product so now we will have image dot network as product dot images at 0 because images is a list so we need to get the very first thing after saving this much let's see what we get outputted on the screen so let's restart our application 
and if I click on essentials yep nothing shows up and that's probably because in our item count here I passed in a static value of 10 so I have to change that to product list dot length and obviously put an exclamation mark before this product list now if I restart the application and close all of these error messages go to let's say mobiles we cannot get slash api slash products so that reason is mainly because we have not correct connected this product dot product router to our index.js file so let's quickly connect it we have forgotten it multiple times so it's a good reminder for you to not forget and not make mistakes like me now if i click on restart and go to mobiles again there's nothing over here to see appliances we have the little macbook showing up that's great now let's return something else below the size box so now the very first thing we need to return is again a container which will be over here in the alignment so we have alignment dot top left then a padding which will be const edge insets dot only and we need to do left zero top five write 15 so let's quickly write that then we need a child which will just say the product name so we have text as product dot name and then max line is going to be one and if it exceeds that then we can just add an overflow saying text overflow dot ellipsis having this much done let's see what we're getting and i'm pretty satisfied with this now if i go to let's say fashion there's nothing to see appliances we add macbook essentials we should see a bottle and we see that great it works exactly as we want it so now the next thing we need to work on is after fetching these categories we need to work on this search part so whenever we search for something it should show up for example if i type s then it should show me stainless steel products on another screen so let's create the UI and API for that. So here we are in the home screen and here what we need to do is click on the search bar and whenever the user hits on enter, then we will get some value and then we need to navigate to the search screen. So first of all, let's close and minimize all the features folder except the home part and in the features, we will create new feature called search and this search will have, well, obviously a screens folder and in that folder, we are going to create search screen dot dot. Then we are going to import the material dot, create a state full widget called search screen and call this a constant. And now we will need a route name for this. So we will create constant static string route name equal to slash search screen, let's say. After that, we can take this route name and register it in the router. So let's go quickly over there and register it. So this will be called search screen dot route name. We have imported that and we will get search query that we need to pass in. So again, we need to pass that to the constructor because every time we are on the home screen, we enter some value, then we will transmit that value to other screen. So here, Along with that, we will need final string search query, which will be equal to, well, not equal to, we have to generate a constructor based on that. So we'll have required this dot search query. Also change this to a scaffold so that we don't see uh, a, a, a container. After that, we can just take in the search query and pass it as a search query. Now you can see the name parameter category is required. So let's see why we need that. And that's because we haven't changed the search screen over here. So let's change it quickly. And here we have it. We have registered the route. Now, whenever the user clicks, we need to navigate to other screen. So here we are going to create a function called navigate to search screen. We will get a query. So we'll have string query and use navigator, use navigator dot push named 
and pass in the context and the route name will be search screen dot route name. Cool. Now let's take this navigate to search screen and find the text form field where we will pass in as the on field submitted this navigate to search screen. So whenever this field is submitted, we will get certain value that we will output it on the screen. So just to test if it's working till now, what I'm going to do is pass in the body a centered widget, which will be the widget dot search query. So if I type hello over here and then click on enter and we are getting this error because here we haven't passed in the argument. So the argument that we need to pass in is the query. Don't forget to do that. Make sure to add this. Now, if we again type in hello and click on enter, you can see hello showing up. If I type something else, let's say great, click on enter, we see great. Sweet. So now let's work on the search services instead of designing it first. We are going to work on the services part so that we can create our own API first, fetch those products and then display it on the screen. That would be real fun. So here I'm going to create search services dot dot file and obviously let's remove the capitalized s create a class called search services and now we need to fetch the searched product so what we can do is go to the home services and copy the same thing that we have done earlier so let's quickly copy all of this because we are going to fetch certain things and it's again going to be a get request so yeah, we have that. So let's import all of these stuff that is needed quickly. So we have provider, user provider we have imported. We need provider. Let's import HTTP with namespaces. Then we need the URI global variable. Then we need the error handling. Then we need JSON encode and decode. And the show snack bar utility. Great. Now we have that we have copied the same function again because we are going to fetch the same product. So we are fetch the product. So we are going to have HTTP dot get request. We just need to change the URL over here and we need to return the product list again because we need to display them on the screen, right? That's why. And now instead of category here, we need the search query. That's the change we need to make and here name it as fetch searched product your change the API. So our API is going to be API slash products slash search and then dollar search query. Now, if you don't understand this API, that's fine. Now we are going to go there and create it out. But basically what we are doing is slash API so that everyone is accessing slash products so that, you know, that's the convention of our URL. Then we need to search and then we are passing in the search query since this is a get request. If I just show it to you over here, get request doesn't allow us to add any body element. That's why we need to pass it in the URL itself. Now, how do we get access to this extra search query that we are passing in? We have already talked about it when we were creating in the uh, an API in the products.js file. So here, when we created slash API slash products, you saw we used rec dot query dot category because we were using question mark in here. But when I, I told you that whenever we use something like this, suppose search, then we are going to use request dot params dot category or request dot params dot whatever is the name or just request dot params. You get the idea. So that's what we are going to use. Let me remove this console log. It's not needed. And also this URL, it was just to demonstrate it to you. And now I would have given to you, given this to you as an exercise, or you can actually do it as an exercise to create an API, create a get request to search products and get them. Well, pretty straightforward, but this is going to be a bit different. If you want to try it out, Google it out and use it and find the correct solution, you're free to do it. But if you want, we can go along. This is a bit different from what we have done in the past. So obviously we are going to copy all of this and call this slash API slash products. But after that we want slash search 
if we go to the search services you can see we have slash search and then the search query now we want to get access to this search query so what we will do is slash search and the name with this we can get access to the name so just putting a colon over here we get access to it now if we parse something over here and suppose we get a request to the url that we have already passed in the client side so we have slash api slash products slash search slash let's say i want to find an iphone so i pass an i so we want to get the access to this i to get access to this i now i can simply use request dot params dot name because you have named it as name now if i type in over here let's say hello now to access this part we can have slash dot hello if i have another param after this let's say great i can access this great using request dot params dot great you can see this is how easy it is even if it's all hello and it gives us the auto correct option that means we are doing it everything correctly so now having that idea what we are going to do is remove this and make it in a readable format and now what do we need to find well obviously this part is going to change we are going to save it in products and we are going to await use product dot find but the condition over here is going to be a bit different remember when we used regex in our application we are going to use regex now earlier we used regex so that we could validate our email and we found out that regex is used to is used in search patterns so exactly what we want over here we need to use search patterns so that we can get that now mongoose and mongodb have built in support for that so what we can do is pass in the name because we want to find products by their name and then pass in the regex so we have dollar regex and then pass in request dot params dot name and then options i with this we are able to find the products based on their name even if the name is iphone and we find out and we type in i it will fetch us this product which is pretty cool and then we just send in this product nothing else after creating this api which was very simple and actually before going there an alternate of, uh, approach you could have taken is finding the product based on this name itself so we just pass in name as request dot params dot name now this would have worked if you passed in iphone if your product name was iphone and you passed in iphone then only the product would show up but it would, wouldn't be a search pattern to get search patterns and some products with similar names we have to use this regex part over here great now we can go to the search services pass in the url that we have correctly we need all of this again i've explained it to you earlier you must type it out so that you get a hang of it and if you have a better approach make sure to try that approach first and then use it in your application if you find that as a better way and then we are going to return the product list now let's go to the search screen use the init state function and we've done that loads of time so we are going to do it again so we have list of product called products now we can take this products and set it equal to well first of all we need to get create a new function so we have fetch searched product then we need this fetch searched product function created and now we will have products equal to and well final search services search services equal to search services we can take this pass it in and fetch the search product pass in the context and the search query widget which is widget dot search query because we are receiving it through the constructor and await this now obviously we need to set state because we changed the value of products and now here we can check if products is equal equal to null then we need to return a constant loader you might be familiar with this pattern already by now it's just a practice of writing it again and again 
So you're used to it and you get confident to build any other application that you want. So now if we restart it, let's see what we get. Here basically let's type in hi. So here let's type in hi. And you can see hi is showing up but we have not printed any products and it's not giving us any error again here as well. That means it is a success. So now let's build the UI of this app. So here we have the UI of the app that we need to create. Well, first of all, it's the same app bar. So let's quickly create this app bar at the top right now. So we can go to the home screen, copy this app bar, paste it in the search screen. After that, import everything. We need to create this function, but we can import this. And now go to the home screen again, just to import that function not import actually create that function and now paste it over here there we have it great now if you come over here looks great now the next thing we need to work on is first minimize this so that it looks less gigantic and in the body we are going to have column and in the children we are going to display first of all the address box so we have already created a widget for that which is called address box let's have that Great. Also remove the loader from here and paste it in the body. Put a space over here. Yep. Otherwise, you know, the scaffold won't be there and it would be an ugly bar that is showing up continuously, which is not what we want. After that, we need a sized box. So we have constant sized box of height 10. Then we need an expanded widget so that it can take whatever space is available because the rest of the space is all for our search products. And we need to display a list view builder so that and list view builder will give us an error if we don't specify some height. And what height do we want? Well, all the available height for us. So we can quickly wrap it with an expanded widget. After that list view builder, we will get a context and an index. And then we need to return a product or a widget that we will call search products and create it manually. But we also need to specify item count for that. And we, the item count is products dot link. Here we are going to return the search product. So let's create a widget for that. In the widget, we will have searched product dot dot. We will import material dot create a stateless widget call it searched product then we will receive the product from the parameter so that we can display the details successfully in the product after that we are going to return a column because if you see let's break it down so if i break it down really quick for you we have a column widget inside of which we have a row and in that row, first of all, we have this image. And after that, we have again a column. With that column, we have a text that is showing this, a rating widget for which we are going to use a package, then a text again just to show the price, and then eligible for free shipping and in stock that is there. So now we're going to return a column here, the children, and the first child is going to be a container with some margin because you can see there's some man margin from the top from the left and the right side for the top we use size box but we need it from the left and the right side so we are going to have a container so that we can pass in certain margin then we need constant edge inserts dot symmetric and in the horizontal direction we need 10 because they're both left and right if you're wondering why i'm always using horizontal if you click over here and come over here you can see horizontal horizontal is for the value of left and right both vertical is for top and bottom instead of specifying dot only and right 10 left 10 what you can do is symmetric horizontal 10 after that we need a child and the child is going to be row as i talk we need an image and the description of the product later on so we have image dot network and here the first image that we're going to show is product dot images at zero. If you want, you can create a carousel, but it would be really laggy and wouldn't make our app look feel really good, you know? So here we will have fit as box fit dot 
height fit height and let's see why we're getting this error and that's mainly because here we didn't pass in the children for the row so let's pass it in take this image.network paste it in and well the height should be 135 width should be 135 now let's go over here just to return the search product and see what result we are getting till now and then pass in the product for us the product is going to be product products at index and there we have it because this is a list and we are accessing a particular product using their index now we save this much and restart the app open up the debug console and the and let me just remember the products that we are so here we have stainless steel product so i'm going to type in big s because it's in small s so i'll just type in this and you can see stainless steel pops up amazing now after that we need to display the products of the uh sorry the description of this so we will have again a column with children and the very first thing we are going to have is a container of width 235 then padding of constant edge sets dot symmetric in the horizontal direction 10 then a child just displaying the product's name so we have product dot name pass in the style as constant text style of font size 16 and now if we see this stainless steel pops up it will go up as and when we get new products but also let's add max lines as 2 after which it will just cut it down so that it doesn't exceed you can see that then we need another container so let's copy this paste it down we need a container of it 235 but the padding here will change the padding will become from the left we are going to have 10 sorry left 10 and from the top we are going to have 5 and change this to only then the child is going to be the stars because here the next is stars for stars we are going to create a separate reusable widget over here in common so we have stars dot dart let's import the material dart create a stateless widget for stars and here we are going to make use of an external package so the package we'll be using is this flutter rating bar we can copy that paste it down here and you can see it supports on all the platforms so as soon as google pay apple pay start supporting android ios it does support that but linux mac os web and windows we can start deploying it everywhere because none of the pa other packages need any other thing so obviously we are going to get the rating from here and for now we're as long as you're not working on the rating section we're going to tell that the rating is going to be a static value just after we create the rating we are going to change those ratings so here in the terminal we are going to pass in rating bar indicator and we are using rating bar indicator because it is only a view widget view only widget and we want the direction to be axis dot horizontal after that the item count is going to be 5 and the rating is going to be the rating that we get from the constructor item count specifies how many stars do we want to see and rating will tell us how many stars should be filled then we specify a fixed item size which will be 15 then an item builder which will give us context and other thing that we know don't need and we will just have to display an icon what is the icon that we want to display well icons dot star and the color should be global variables dot secondary color because that's the golden color that we need now we can take the stars paste it in 
instead of the product's name and pass in the rating for now it's going to be a static value so just to see if it's working or not we are going to have four and mark this as constant save it here we have it four stars are filled and it looks great next thing again is going to be a container so let's quickly copy this paste it down and what do we need to show well the price so let's quickly have a width of 235 again but over here again we are going to have the same padding as the rating one we can copy that and paste it over here and the text is going to differ so here we are going to use string interpolation because we want to use a dollar sign and as we saw for dollar sign we are going to have dollar dollar product dot price max line is set to true two and font size should be 20 if we save this dollar 10 shows up let's just bold it so we have font weight as font weight dot bold and now it's bolded looks sick after that we can just copy this container just to write free shipping and in stock so we can have two of the same thing and we want here only left as 10 and we'll just say a text with nothing as the styling and say eligible for free shipping and we can have a constant after that we will have in stock so we will have in stock max lines will be two and the color is going to be colors dot teal let's quickly write that out and remove the constant from everywhere press on command full stop and add a const modifier instead of passing it over here we need to pass it over here great now we can see it's looking similar to this and it looks great exactly the way we want it to look so now just to check if it's working or not i'll write mac and click on enter you can see macbook air m1 showing up and if this photo looks ugly to you what you can do is change it so in image.network we will have fit width and if we save this much this whole picture comes in now the next thing we need to work on is whenever we click on any of the products we want to see their details all right so here is the design of the product detail screen that we need to create so what we need to do is minimize let's say some of the folders and in the features folder create a new folder called product details and then click on the again folder sign so that we can create screens folder and then create the product details screen dot dot file so here we are going to import material dot create a stateful widget and call this product details screen obviously add a const over here and now we want to return a scaffold with an app bar right if you come back to the way here you can see this is the app bar that we need to create so to create that app bar we will go to the home screen copy this method paste it over here then import search screen after that we can again go to this home screen so we just need to copy this app bar copy this and paste it in the product details screen so let's come over here and paste it down there after that we will need global variables import and we have already passed in the function over here great now to test this application uh, to test the screen till now we can have a static constant string route name which will be slash product details screen so we can just name it like this and obviously we need a product so that we can display its details and we will require this to the constructor so let's click on generate constructor and here we have it now let's register this in the router dot dot file so copy this paste it down here we will have product details screen dot route name then call this product details screen pass in the product and the product will be received from the argument so here it is product and we will treat this as a product 
and now just pass in product over here and our router is set as well. Now we can close all the save files, go to the product details screen because that's what we need to style. And in here, after this app bar, we need to work on the body section. So let's see what we need. Well, first of all, we need the ratings part and the ID of the product. So let's quickly create that. So we will have a single child scroll view because you can see different screen sizes. And as I mentioned before, different screen sizes will lead this to scroll. And if there's too much of description, if added for any product, we want it to be scrollable. So after having that, we can create a child, which will be a column. And then in the column, we need children. And the first child we are going to have here is this row. So let's create this row. It's children will be text saying the products ID. So we will have widget dot product dot ID. So here we can see that it can be null. So here we have it. ID can never be null. After that, we can have stars widget, which will be reused and the rating will be well for now a static. So we can just pass in four. After we calculate and add the rating part, we can change this to something real. After that, we need to add the main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot space between and save this much. Also to see whatever result we need, we can just use broader product detail screen dot route name. So where do we want it exactly? Well, whenever we click on this category and click on this product. So we need to go to the category deal screen. And whenever we return a certain product here, we need to wrap it with a widget called gesture detector. And we'll pass in the on tap, which will be just navigator dot push named and then we need to pass in the route name, which will be product details screen dot route name. And then finally, not to forget arguments, which will be the product. After that, let's save this much and here we come. So if we click over here, here we are, we are seeing the correct things. Now we want a little bit of padding from the side. So what we can do is go to the products layer and in the row, we are going to add a padding. So wrap it with a padding of const agencies dot all eight. Now this looks better. After this, the next thing is the title. So let's have a padding widget again so that we can leave space from the side and the top. So we will have padding constant agencies dot symmetric from the vertical side. We want 20 and from the horizontal side, we need 10. After that, we need a child in it and the child is going to show the widgets product name. So we will have widget dot product dot name. And let's configure the size for it. So it will be constant textile font size will be, let's say 15. After saving this much, you can see stainless steel bottle showing. Now, in case you want it to start from here, what we can do is in the column pass in cross axis alignment as cross axis alignment dot start. Now we can come over here and you can see it's showing up pretty cool. After that, we need the image and this image is not just one image. It's going to be a carousal of images. So what we can do is after this padding again, create a carousal slider. And for that, we have already created a widget. So let's just copy this, paste it over here and import carousal slider over here. The item is widget dot product dot images that we need to map through and every image will give us I and all of that is fine. Now let's remove this parenthesis and put a comma and here we have it looks great. Just that the image size isn't matching. So we can change this height to 300, not this height. Let's say the height over here, we can change it to 300 and yeah, this looks bigger and cleaner. 
After that, you can see we need a bit of divider or spacing. For that, we're going to use something cool. We're just going to use a container. But in that, we're going to pass in the color property of colors.black12. With that, we get this kind of layout, but you can't see it. So let's increase its height. So that will be five. And after doing that much, you can see this great divider exactly like Amazon showing up. After that, we need to show this price. So after the container, this is the deal price. Now observe the differences in the text. Here you will see that the deal price is a small text and this is a bigger text in different color. And as you've already seen, we can use row widget for it. Otherwise, we can use rich text and text span. That's exactly what we're going to do. So obviously have a padding so that it doesn't mix up all. And we will have edge inserts dot all eight, after which we will have a child of text span, rich text, sorry. That will take in a text and the text will is going to be a text span. And in that text span, we're going to enter the deal price. So we'll have deal price. And also it is a named argument. So we need to pass in text over here. Also put a trailing comma over here. After that, we need to specify some style, which will be constant text style. And the font size will be 16. Color will be colors.black. Even if we don't mention it, it will be black. But since we are having a difference of colors in the next text span, let's mention it. And then finally, we'll have font weight, which will be font weight bold. Let's put some commas. And also put uh, spacing over here so that in the next children child that we have there will be a little of space great now it looks good now we just need a uh, price so for price we can pass in in the rich text in the text span sorry children and the first child is going to be a text span so let's just copy this text span paste it in over here and we need another parenthesis and here we need to display the price so obviously we are going to have dollar which will be backslash dollar and then dollar widget dot product dot price now all of our warnings faded away because this child one of the children has a text which is dependent on a state variable so to say since we are depending on the constructor it can't be a constant value because it, it can change anytime. It will not be constant. Now, if you come over here, we can see no difference in the text font size or anything. So let's make it 22 and change this to colors.red. Now, if we save this much, this still looks, you know, this flashes in the eyes, the red color. So we can change this to font weight.w500. After that, this looks great. Now the next thing is leaving some space. We want the description. So let's copy this much. After the rich text, we are again going to have padding, but we will add that later on. So we have widget dot product dot description. And also let's put it after the padding widget. And then see, this is stainless steel. Great. Now we will just wrap it with a padding widget because we want all const edge inserts dot all eight after saving this much you can see this looks neat but when we have a bigger description this all will make sense after that after that you will see that we need a kind of again this container so we can just copy it paste it down here and then we need the buttons. So we need a buy now button and add to cart button. So obviously we're going to have custom button. Text will be buy now. And on tap will be empty function or an anonymous function for now. After that, we can just see what we're getting. This isn't looking really good. So what we can add is a padding widget again. And in that padding widget, we're going to have constant edge inserts dot symmetric from the vertical direction 10 and from the horizontal direction also 10. 
so what we can have is 10 overall instead of vertical 10 horizontal 10 i didn't realize that while writing the code myself but now we have it great now we can just copy this again and paste it down after a sized box of 10 so that it, they both don't stick together and now this will change to add to cart now if we come back you can see the color change oh sorry the product two buttons showing up but now we need to change the color for that we can go to the custom button and here here we will accept a few arguments so we will have final color color and this is only needed for product details page so we can have this dot color with not required and no default value this is not needed because here we are going to pass in the style the primary color which can be null you can hover over this and see this can be null so this can also be null and if we don't specify anything primary color will be null and will default to the main theme of our application which is this orange color now if we go to this add to cart and pass in the color and the color is going to be constant color dot from rgbo 254 216 19 and 1 and if we save this much you can see the difference but now we need to change this color as well so now to change the custom buttons color inside of the text what we can have is a style and the style will be a text style where the where the color will be a conditional operator so we will check here if color is null that means that the user does not enter anything then we want it to be white because here we never mentioned anything right that's why the color was white over here but in case we mention it we want it to be colors dot black simple enough and now we get the black color great after this padding widget we can have a sized box again of the height 10 and after that a container so let's quickly copy that and save this much here we have it now final thing if we see the rate product so the rate the product is going to be fairly simple we are going to have a padding of text so let's quickly just copy one of the text let's copy this one paste it down here so the edge insets will be symmetric and from the horizontal direction we need 10 then in the child the text is going to be read the product then we can have some styles passed in so we'll have style constant text style and let's remove constant from everywhere and put it in the padding widget because we know everything is static over here so the textile is going to be font size 22 and font weight will be font weight dot bold after saving this much we have read the product scene now finally we want the rating bar that we have created at the top as well but now we can't use the same widget because as i said it was view only now we want to make changes whenever we tap on it we want to rate the product so for that purpose, we are going to create rating bar dot builder, which is another widget provided by the same package flutter rating bar. So if we come back over here, you will see in the item builder, we get context and an index, but we don't need the index for now. And we just need to return a constant icon of icons dot star with color as global variable dot secondary color after saving this much we need on rating update so whenever the rating updates what do we need to do well it has returned to us some rating that the user clicked and on then what do we need to do so we will configure this in just a while after creating this ui and then let's see what we get here we have it so if we save this much you can see we can rate it anywhere but there's still a bit of you know configurations i want to do so first of all i want to add an initial rating and initial rating will be dependent on the average ratings that we've received so far so in case 10 users have passed the value for the rating and then 
each one has passed in suppose 5 4 3 4 3 something like that we need to take average of them and show it as the initial rating so that the user can rate that much uh, uh, as a rating then the minimum rating that the user can give is 1 we don't want the user to get 0 then the direction will be direction axis dot horizontal and we will allow half rating so after that the user will be able to give half values as well so if i click over here you can see half value is given great so that the double value that we stored in our mongoose comes into use and finally we know item count which is 5 and item padding so that this doesn't look so much congested so we will have constant edge inserts dot symmetric from the horizontal direction pass in 4 and great we have a rating widget created now This looks great. All right. So now having that that UI created, let's bind it to the search product as well. So if we search suppose MacBook and click on Enter, and if we click over here, we should be able to go there. This is fairly straightforward. What we can do is go to the searched product. Sorry, search screen. And whenever we return the search product, we want to wrap it with a widget called as gesture detector. And again on on tab, we want to navigate. So we have navigator. dot push named pass in the route name which will be product details screen dot route name and then pass in the arguments which will be a product now the product is the product list that we have over here you can see that and that particular index so we can just copy this and pass it as the argument and it won't give us any errors now if i click on this you can see we are seeing the product but still the image looks very bad so what we can do is go to the product details screen and in here in the image dot network part we can have fit dot contain and now we have it looks great exactly what we want so now let's work on the rate product functionality All right, so now let's create a new folder in product details called services, and this will be called product details services dot dot file, and this will obviously we have product details services. So the very first function that we're going to have is the rate product function. So let's create that quickly. So we have rate product. this will be taking in a build context actually instead of writing all of that again and again i would recommend you to do that but i'm just tired of writing it again and again so what i'm going to do is go in one of the services and extract it so i'll just paste it over here after that name this to rate product and i require build context so i'll take that then i require the all of this is not required even this now what's required is the product that i want to rate so let's take that so that we get the products id which we can take in the server side and then obviously required is the rating that the user given after that we need the token of the user so we need provider after that all this cloudinary stuff is not needed even the product thing and then we need to import http as http dot dart see so here we have that line and then we need global variables and after that the utility file and even this http error handling part great so now let's see if this much so here first of all it's going to be a post request that's correct because you're going to send body data to it so we have the headers also there and the body that we're going to send is well first of all json encoded don't forget to do that then we need to pass in an id which will be product dot id and then the rating so let's pass in the rating and great we have that and also change the api over here so we'll have slash api slash rate product now saving this much 
we are good to go. Now also remove all of this. We don't need any of this in the on success. Now let's create an API for rating the product. So we'll go to the product.js model first of all. And here we have the comment of ratings. So we need to change that model. We will create the ratings property. And this ratings is going to be an array, right? Because many users can pass in and it will be an array of object. We have never used this part before. So let me just create one. So we'll have rating.js. This rating.js is going to contain the structure of this rating that we're going to have. So we are going to have constant mongoose equal to require mongoose. And then we're going to create the rating schema. And we'll have mongoose dot schema. And here we're going to pass in the user ID, the person who rated this. So what is that user ID so that they can't, you know, change the rating again. If they do change, we're going to add the logic to remove the previous rating and add the current rating. And then we're going to add this as a type of string and going to require it as true. And if you're wondering why this is not a type of object ID, which is a thing over here. So something like this, the object ID. That's because we are getting the token from the client side and that token is going to be a string. Sorry, the ID is going to be a string over here, which is understood. Now we need a rating, which is going to be a number. So we'll have type number and required set to true. Now we are not going to make a model out of this. That, that is a key thing to note. Whenever we just want to provide a structure, we don't need to provide it with a model. If we provide a model, it will create an entirely new model in our file and also add that in the product model, the rating schema. And it will also give us the underscore ID and underscore underscore version part, which we don't need, right? So we will just use module dot exports equal to rating schema. Now we can come over here and pass in the rating schema as the object. So this ratings is going to be an array of all the rating schemas that we're going to have. And it will be like an object which will contain multiple objects of various users. Now we can come to the product.js route and create a route for that. I give you that exercise of creating a post request route to rate the product. With this, with the knowledge we have, I think it's pretty easy for you to go ahead and use that to rate the product. And if you get stuck anywhere, like you want to delete the products, like you want to delete an object from the products array, I would recommend you to search it up on web on how to delete an object from an array in JavaScript. Googling is a part of this task, so I hope you can do it. Were you able to do it? If you were, then you're all set with Node.js. That's my guarantee to you. So now we have product router dot post slash API slash rate product. Then we need to have authentication. Then we are going to have asynchronous request response. And then this created, then a try and a catch block. Then we need to return a res dot status of 500 dot JSON and send in the error message in case there is any error. Now in the try block, first of all, we need to extract the ID and the rating from the user. So we have ID rating equal to request dot body because we sent it from here, the body part. After that, we are going to find the product because we need to make changes in that product's properties. So let's quickly find that product. So we will not make it a constant because we need to change the properties and our product equal to product dot find by ID and we will find that ID and we're not using find by ID and delete because that will delete the entire product. We don't want to delete the entire product. We just want to add or remove a rating. And why do we want to remove a rating? We will see that logic now. So first of all, what we need to do is run a for loop on all the ratings that the product has. So in case the product has something like this, let's quickly draw it out. So here is the user ID. And here is the rating. 
let's say 2.5 and then we have again this passed in so let's quickly add that and here the user id is a bit different and the rating is 4. now this is all a uh, part of the ratings array on the product property so this objects can be accessed using product dot ratings right now what we need to do is loop through each one of them checking if the user id is matching with the id that we have passed in which is this user id so the user id from request.body if that is equal to this user id that means we have already rated that product so that means we need to remove that product's ratings correct pretty simple till now so let's quickly create that we have for let i is equal to zero i is less than product dot ratings dot length and then i plus plus the reason we are able to use length on this is pretty similar to dot we have product dot ratings which is an array now we can access all the properties that are there on arrays like length includes all of that stuff and then we are looping through here we are checking if product dot ratings at i so that means product properties ratings at i so we will get access to one rating over here and this rating doesn't mean this rating this rating means the entire object over here if that ratings user id which gives us access to this for example when we are on zero when we are on one it will give access to this if that is equal to request dot users id so here we are checking if product dot ratings at i dot user id which is this is equal to request dot user which is the users id this is not users id it was my bad it was the product id but here we get access to users id using request dot user because of the auth middleware so if that both is equal what we are going to do is product dot ratings dot splice i comma one now splice is a new feature or you know a different feature from dart this is available on arrays basically it will allow us to add or delete anything uh, yeah. if we have access to the index so if we just remove this again and i'll show you you can see we need to pass in the start number and the delete count so that we can delete it off and we can even add products using splice but i'm not going to show it here you can google it out but with this we are basically deleting the product because we have access to their index so here we will start the number so from what number do we need to start deleting so i'll pass in i and how many numbers should we delete or how many objects do we delete well we are going to delete only one object because we need only one object to be deleted and after that is deleted we can just break it because we are not running it for an extra loop and wasting our time after that if there is any extra rating it will get removed and then we are going to add that rating schema so here we are going to have rating schema equal to first of all the user id and strings are not needed like this in javascript so we have user id as request dot user and rating as the rating so we can have a shorthand syntax for that which is this we have access to this now we can use product dot ratings dot push and as i told we have access to all of the array methods push is like add in javascript so we are going to use push and it will push to the end of the array a new element and what is that element the rating schema because that's exactly what ratings needs after that we will use product is equal to await product dot save and we will have rest dot json as product and now we will remove all the ratings and save this much now we will copy this make sure it's the same over here great now we are rating the product part and now we want to bind this function to our rate product so what we can do is in the product details screen we can go there initialize it so we have final 
product details screen call product details screen equal to product details screen uh, sorry we don't need product details screen we need product details services product details services equal to product details services and then we're going to have final and also push this function down great now we have access to this product detail services so we can go down in the on rating update where i told you we're going to make some changes so here we can pass in product detail services dot rate product pass in the required context which we get from build context then the product which is widget dot product getting it from the constructor and the rating this rating is from on rating update it will give us the correct value of which we correct cl clicked so if we click over here it will give us five if we click on half the part it will give us 4.5 great value so now if we save this much and we've not added anything in on saved on success we will open up our debug console and our terminal to see if there is any error nope we can go to the essentials by a stainless steel we will give it a 5 and see if there is any error nothing at all so now if we come back go in the appliances again not appliances sorry essentials stainless steel we can't see anything because you have not showing anything but in case we show it so just to see if it is success or not we can just go in our products more uh, collection in our collections and here pass in the ratings so here we have the ratings as rating as 5 and the user id given now in case i change it again to let's say 1.5 let's see if we have that so if i just go there and refresh the app Here, let's see the array. Here we have it 1.5 and it has removed the earlier rating that we had, which was 5 because of the logic that we created over here in the product.js file, this logic. Great. Now let's just see the ratings on the screen. So whenever we come over here, we should be able to see the correct rating. So for that, what we need to do is first of all, go to this product.dart model and in this models folder, we are going to create a new model called rating.js and actually not rating.js, sorry, rating.dart. And here we are going to have class rating. We will initialize the properties of string user ID and double rating. So we have final double rating. After that, we will generate a constructor for them generate json serialization and great we have that done now we can come over here in the product.dart file and pass in a property called final list of rating which can be null called rating now we need to pass this in so we have re this is not required so we have final this dot id so this not this dot id but this dot rating after that we can come over here pass in the rating as rating and here the rating will be a bit different so here we will first check if map ratings and make sure to name it as ratings because in your json app or your product dot js model you've named this as ratings so make sure to make that change so map ratings, if it is not equal to null, then we will do something. Otherwise, we will return null because it can be null. Then we are going to check if list of rating dot from map at ratings. We are going to check if that's nullable. If it is nullable, then also we need to map over this. So we will get access to x and then we will convert it to a json model called rating dot from map and pass in the x value not the map and here we have it this is the logic that we need to create so let's put some commas 
yeah great so we have the rating model created now we just need to display that rating so here at the top we are going to create an init state function in that init state well first of all we need global variables of double average rating which will be set to zero initially and an variable for my rating so average rating is going to show up over here because that is average rating and my rating consists of the rating that is to be shown here so now double total rating is going to be in the init state function because total rating is not needed anywhere globally so it's good to have a member function over here and now we are going to run it so we have for int i is equal to 0 i is less than widget dot product dot rating dot length and we can't this can't be a question mark it has to be exclamation mark and then we have i plus plus so here what we'll do is total rating plus equals widget dot product dot rating at i dot rating and here there has to be this here we are basically calculating the total rating that the product has ever gotten we can't calculate the average over here because first we need the sum and then only we can move forward with calculating the average rating but even over here we need to check first if widget dot product dot rating at i dot user id is equal to provider dot off and let's have provider dot off user provider context listen set to false dot user dot id so if both of them match the user id in the rating and over here then we need to make sure that we change my rating so we have my rating equal to widget dot product dot rating actually let's copy this one pretty simple logic don't get scared by the complexity of code that is seen here but just the logic is pretty simple nothing else we are doing and here outside of this for loop in this for loop we are putting an if condition so that we don't have to run an another for loop it's running from i0 till i this i plus plus just to get the user's rating we can do that over here as well and now we are just checking if total rating is not equal to zero then average rating which we created as a global variable is equal to total rating divided by widget dot product dot rating dot length basically we are checking if total rating is not equal to zero so if total rating is equal to zero and we perform this operation it will give us an error of nan which means it is not a number if it is not a number then we cannot divide it by anything in dot so we are checking over here if it is not equal to zero then average rating will be equal to the total rating which is the sum of all the ratings that we com computed over here divided by the length of the ratings array that we created now we can just take this average rating and total rating and pass it down so here in the stars we are going to have average rating and remove this constant it's not a constant anymore let's see we are not seeing anything and now if we go down to the rating bar dot builder here the initial rating is going to be my rating with the user has already filled it and the minimum rating can be one and all of that is still valid now if i restart the application and see what we are getting till now i'll go to the essential stainless steel and you can see 1.5 stars over here and even over here if i make it five go back come back over here you can see five stars given that means the rating part is working really well now we just need to add the rating part in the search so here if i type macbook you can see four stars is a constant that shows up now instead of doing that and just to show you even if we do it for stainless steel here we have four stars showing 
in fact it should be five stars so what we can do is go to the product Sorry, search screen and searched product over here. We are using stars somewhere. We can go there and pass in the rating. But what is the rating going to be like? So for this, we are going to go over here in our build function and create the same logic that we did in the detail screen. But instead of the init state function, we're going to do it over here. So let's just copy all of this. Paste it in and we don't need this if logic again here and we also need to remove all of this product part widget dot product sorry because this is not a state full widget this is a stateless widget and that is the reason why we are doing this in the build function that screen was already an a uh, stateful widget so we could use in its state now instead of creating it as a stateful widget we can just compute it over here because anyways no, uh, no set state is happening over here. This does the job of only displaying it. So the widget rebuild is not going to happen ever again. So build function is a safe place to do it, at least in this case. So here we are going to create a variable called double average rating and set it equal to zero. If you do it over here, then you'll have to remove a constant and then we don't get any benefit of using a stateless widget instead of a function. After using this, we can take this average rating and pass it to our stars. Now say this much and here we see five stars. Now again over here, if you had a problem with this image, obviously you can change it to contain and it will contain the entire image and this will look good. Great. So we have the ratings part completed. The next part is the add to cart feature. Whenever we click on this add to cart, it will add to our cart and then we need to make a UI for that as well. All right. So to get the deal of the day, what we are going to do is go to the product.js route and in here, we are going to create a getter for deal of the day. If you want, you can take it as an exercise to do it on your own and scratch your brains until you do it. It would be really great. But just to mention deal of the day is going to depend on the rating. So whichever product gets the highest rating is going to be the deal of the day. Pretty simple. So I'm going to call this API deal of the day, then auth as the middleware and then request response as this and then a try catch block just to display any error if we get any. So I'm just going to have this passed in. Great. Now in the try block, we are going to have first fetch all the products so we are going to get let products is equal to await product dot find and this should be equal to sign not minus and also pass the semicolon away so here we are just getting all the products now what we're going to do is what the logic is that we are going to sort all of these products based on their ratings so we are going to take each product's ratings, match them against their own and then check whoever and then sort them in a descending order so that we get the very first element as the best element. So suppose there are product A and then there is product B. So product A has a total rating of 10. First of all, we need to calculate all the ratings of the product A. And if the product B has a total rating of let's say 30. So we're and let's say we also have C. So C has 50. So it will check the total. It will first calculate the total points of A, B and C together. And then it is going to check if 10 is greater than 30. If it's greater than 30, then it will just sort it out in a descending order so that C comes on the top. B is the second and A is the third. Now to get the deal of the day, we have a sorted products array. We can just access the very first element since it's in descending order and has the highest number of points. Great, pretty easy. So what we are going to use for this is products.sort, which is a method provided by JavaScript. It just sorts a value and it will sort the value based on what we output. But here we will get A and B, which are two numbers. Now, if you think there will be any confusion from your side, you can just name it something like product one, product two, but I'm just going to go forward with A and B. And here we are going to create a function based on which it is going to sort itself. So first of all, we will create a temporary variable called a sum. 
and don't worry this sorting is basically it will go through all the products and then sort one against each other it will run some sorting algorithm inside of it which we don't need to worry about so here we have b sum zero so even if products are more than two don't worry this a and b just symbolize product one product two which keep on changing every time so now what i'm going to do is calculate the a sum for that we are going to use for loop so we'll have for let i is equal to zero i is less than products dot sorry not products but a dot ratings dot length so ratings is the model property that we created on product and then we are going to increment by one and then we are what we are going to do is a sum plus equals so that whatever pre value that we have is added plus a dot ratings at i so we get the particular object which now consists of the rating as the number and the user's id so now we will do rating and that's it we have a sum ready now similarly we have to do the same thing for b sum so we can pass it in over here and we have b dot ratings dot length and b sum plus equals b dot ratings at i dot rating we can't do both of them in a single for loop because this will run till a dot ratings dot length and this till b dot ratings dot length both can differ after that we just need to return a condition so based on which it can sort over here we have not yet provided the condition on which it should sort so here we are just returning that a sum should be smaller than b sum so if a sum is smaller than b sum then we want to return one otherwise we want to return negative one why are we returning this if you hover over this you can see sorts an array in place this method mutates the array and returns a reference to the same array that means we are going to get an array so what we are going to do here is products equal to this so it will just mutate the array so that we can get the reference to the same array that means it will give us the same array sorted but here what does this mean so again we hover over this and scroll down you can see function used to determine the order of the elements it is expected to return a negative value if the first argument is less than the second argument zero if they are equal and a positive value otherwise so here we could have done a sum minus b sum and removed all of that but i like to do it this way it is like a convention for me so here i'm just checking if a sum is less than b sum that means that b takes precedence over a so b sum will be pushed at the top so, and negative one means the opposite that is a takes precedence over b and thus it is arranged in a descending order after having that array and storing it to products what we need to do is just return that and we don't want to return the array of the products we want to return the only one product and that one product is going to be the topmost element since it's in descending order so we have products at zero and there we have it we created the api now you can test it in thunder client but now you might be used to it i'm not doing that it's very good for you if you do it after that we can go to the home component let's minimize search product deals and admin in the home part we have deal of the day and home services so first of all let's create an api and home services so i'm going to copy this paste it in over here and we are going to return just a single product which will be a future so let me just have product return and this will be named fetch deal of day we are going to require nothing else but the build context so that you know we can show snack bars and use provider now we have product list instead of that we just need a product which will be product product equal to and now we need to instantiate this so that later on i'll tell you why we need to instantiate this and we are not putting this as null but you might already have guessed why we are doing this because we have done this so much that we now understand the need for it so i'm just going to pass in empty for now the images is going to be an empty list 
category is going to be empty string and price is going to be zero put in a semicolon and here also the quantity will be zero after that we have the try block for response and we are sending response to this particular url so we can copy this paste it over here and yep now after the headers part and http error handling here we need to remove all of this for loop and instead just have product equal to product dot from json we have already done this we are basically getting the json format so we are taking that json and converting it to a product model so we have response dot body and that's it and now we just need to return that product now we are going to use this function now so we can just copy this go to the deal of the day and instead of returning all of this we're going to have init state pass in the function as fetch deal of day and then create that function so we have fetch deal of the day which is asynchronous and will not return anything we are used to the convention by now so we have product which can be nullable and just to revise if you've forgotten till now and you're wondering why every time i use null so that we can just check if it is going to be empty over here and now let's explain why we even created this empty model instead of this question mark as i said this product over here can be null so if we just check if product is null so suppose i check over here product is equal equal to null that would mean that we need to display a loader that means that the data is being fetched so thus we are checking and putting a column over here but here we suppose we don't get the perfect deal of the day because there are no products only there so the user will continuously see a loading bar and the reason is well because this wasn't initialized and it was also nullable but here now it removes everything and instead if the product is null we are going to show a loader otherwise if it is empty so we can check over here now we can't check product is empty because there is no function like that created on product model and it should not be created how do we check if it's a product is an empty product like how so here basically we are going to check if the product property on product which is name is empty then we are going to show a constant sized box otherwise a column now we are going to create this fetch deal of the day so we'll have product equal to await and let's use home service so we have final home services home services equal to home services take this home services and use home services dot fetch deal of the day pass in the context and yep now we will call set state so that the build build function rebuilds and yep looks good so now we have this loading bar showing up let's restart the application and here we are still not seeing the correct deal of the day because we have not bound it but we're not getting any errors as such that's a very good thing so what we need to do is go down here and instead of returning so many image networks i'm going to delete the rest of the three and keep one there so that i can map through them so here in the children also i'm going to remove this list and instead what we're going to do is product dot images dot map and we're going to map through them so that we can display them in a horizontal direction if you see over here we are displaying them in the horizontal direction and that's how we are going to do it now i'm going to take this image network and paste it over here and also convert it to list don't forget to do that if you don't convert it to a list it won't know because this will return to us an iter iterable and to list just converts it to a list because that's what a row wants list of widgets and here we are returning a widget in case you return something like you know a string over here you can see we get an error because type list of string can't be assigned to the parameter type list of widget so here we are returning the image dot network and here we have it great now let's restart our application and the correct thing is still not showing up because we need to use e so we have e passed in now now if we save this we can see stainless steel bottle showing 
and if we go at the top just to display a product image which will be product dot images at zero and also put that not null so that we can save it and here we have it and we are seeing two same images because here we have used it that way we are product we are mapping through the product images again and again if you want you can ignore them but i'm quite happy with what i've got after that whenever we click on this we need to go to the product detail screen that we've already created so what i'm going to do is wrap this entire column with a widget known as gesture detector and also create a function void navigate to details screen then i'm going to call this navigator dot push named pass in the route name as product details screen dot route name with an argument and here we need to pass in the argument which will be the product variable that we have created at the top so let's pass in product and this much is enough so we can copy this paste it down in the on tab property of this gesture detector after saving it this much let's click over here and here we have it we are at the right place and it's showing everything very correctly super cool now the next thing is to work on the cart feature so whenever i click on this add to cart i want to see it over here the displaying part and also this number should get updated all right so now what we're going to do is close all the other save files close this terminal and now we're going to go to the user model and in this user model what we're going to have is another property which is cart that i commented so in this cart property we need to have two things so first of all let's write the cart property properly so how is this card going to be like? Well, first of all, it's an array. So let's quickly create this array kind of thing. Exactly that we did for ratings. Now in the rating, if you remember, we passed in the rating schema. Exactly for this, we're going to pass in the product schema. But cart isn't just going to con uh, contain the product schema, right? It will have the quantity as well. So we have the product schema as well as in how much quantity do we want this product? So it's going to be look something like this. So the cart array has a property of product. So let's wrap this. So cart is going to have a property of product. So we're going to create like this and it will have product called product schema and we can just pass that in. Now we need to get this product schema because we have not imported it or even exported it. So here we are going to have this kind of destructuring. So to send a product, we are going to do something like this. Comma, we are going to send the product schema. We've seen this before. To send two products, we are going to send it in a map or an object. So to pass in the object, we have product and product schema. Now, whenever we use product in some other route, so let's quickly go through some of the routes. We have product over here. So now to access that product, we need to wrap it with a curly brace so that we can destructure that particular object like we did over here you can see that we did this for the product over here the same thing we're going to have for auth so now over here there's nothing for product and obviously in the product route we're going to have that product but so if we come to the user and again call product schema you can see we get the import so let's quickly import that and this comes in this format great now the next property that we need is the quantity so here we can have quantity and pass in the quantity how it's going to look like now we're not going to create a separate quantity schema so here just manually type in number and required set to true so here we have the quantity property which is of this structure and we have product which is of the following structure great we are not passing in product over here because we can't pass in model right it we need to pass in the product schema we have already discussed about that so now if i come to user.js the route which we haven't yet created so in the routes you're going to create a new route called user.js and this time i completely remember my mistakes from previous times i'm going to require express oh sorry Let's close the files that are not required. So what I can have is remove models, the auth file, 
the admin we need just for reference and product and product model. So here I'm going to require express, create the router, copy the post request because that's the very first request that we're going to need, add to cart. And then we need module.exports for this. Let's quickly rename and then make sure to add the middleware in the index.js which we've forgotten so many times or I've forgotten. All right. So we have user router, pass in the user router over here and even over here. Now quickly let's go to index.js and here require the user router. So we have user router and now you can see as our project is expanding instead of creating so many routes here itself, we are just using a cleaner way of app.use that makes our app less congested and this looks great. So here we're going to have API of add to cart and this requires auth. So let's quickly import that. So we have const auth equal to require dot dot slash middleware slash auth. Now we're going to have first of all, remove all of these stuff. This is not needed. And what do we need? Well, first of all, we want to get the ID of the product so that we can find the product. So we will have constant ID equal to request dot body. Great. Now we can have product, which will be equal to await product dot find by ID. And then we need to pass in the particular ID that we got. Now we also need to find the user because we are storing all of this in user model. And the reason we are storing the cart property in the user model is so that we don't need to fetch the data every time the user clicks on that cart icon, right? So we are just going to display it using provider, which will be a very neat way of doing it in my opinion, because we are using cart everywhere in our application, right? Now to continuously post there and get from there, it's going to be a hectic job. So instead of doing that, we're going to save it in the provider. And that's why we are storing it in the user model. Also, even in dart, we are going to in this user dot dart model, we're going to change there. So here, first of all, find the correct user. So we already know to find the correct user. We are going to do await user dot find by ID, pass in the request dot user as the user ID. And now we are going to check if users cart dot length is equal equal to zero. All right. So now we are checking if the length of the cart is zero. So if it is zero, then we need to do user dot cart dot push. And I have already explained whenever there is an array, we need to push stuff. And this is like add in dot. So we are going to push to the end of the array, the product. And we need to exactly put it like this. And the next thing was quantity and the quantity is going to be one because the user clicked on add to cart only once. Whenever the user clicks on the add to cart another time, the quantity will increase. But whenever the user dot cart length is zero, it is going to be quantity one because user is adding product for the very first time, right? Else, what are we going to have now? Well, obviously you can use guard clauses over here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use nesting over here. And this is very important now. So we're going to have for loop for let i is equal to zero. I is less than user dot cart dot length and increase i by one. So we have i plus plus and we here we are looping through all the products and checking if the particular product that we have over here is already there in the user's cart. If it is already there, then we want to increase their quantity by one. Otherwise, we need to just add that product for the very first time, just like we did over here. So here we have that logic. So we have user dot cart at I dot product dot underscore ID. So here we have user dot cart at I. So we get access to the very cart item so that we can look at the product because now if we come back over here, here we could either use quantity or product. We are using product and we are getting that product's ID. To get that product's ID, we are using underscore ID because remember, 
underscore id is what is given by mongoose or mongodb and what we are checking if is if it is equal to the product dot underscore id which is this otherwise you could have just used this id and it wouldn't matter but it's the same thing after that we can check this much and i think this is a and actually sorry my bad you couldn't use id over here because if you use id it is of the type string but over here the id is of the type object id because here we are not converting it to string right you could obviously do dot to string and that's a method allowed in javascript as well as i said it's very similar so we have dot to string and then you could compare with id but here we are just comparing two object ids now object ids if you don't understand so if we go to our products model and check every id is not a string it is an object id now object id is randomly given by mongodb and it's like a particular type for an id in mongoose so here we are not comparing strings we are comparing object ids that's why we are not even using equal to equal to over here if we use equal to equal to it will not be a valid comparison and it will always give false even though both are the same thing the reason for that is we are comparing mongoose id or mongodb id and that's why we are using equals great now what you want to do is if that is the case then we're going to create a flag at the top so what we're going to have here is in the else block let is product found equal to false so if that product if any existing product is found we are going to set it to true and the reason why we are not setting you know directly doing the stuff over here is because it is in a loop now first of all why is this variable there it is just a flag to say that yeah we found a product now what do we need to do so now we are going to have is product set to true whenever we find it so if that product is found we need to just increment its value otherwise we need to add that new product to the cart now if we directly add the logic for adding to the cart over here if that is equal to that then that would mean we don't have to loop forward and if we loop forward and find again then we are adding it again now that would be really bad so here what we're going to do is if is product found so just like dart we don't need to specify is equal equal to true we can just do if is product found then we need to find that product that means that the product already exists so we need to find that particular product and we're going to name it with three t's because you already use product over here and we're going to use product with double t uh, in just a second so we have user dot cart which is an array and javascript provides us with tons of functions another one of them is dot find on array so here you can see find calls predicate once for each element of the array in ascending order until it finds one where predicate returns to as you can suggest the name itself says it that we are finding a product and we are using double t over here that's why the triple t over here and a single t over here now if that is confusing you can rename it but to your essentially what we're doing is finding the product which matches a certain criteria so here we have to pass in a certain criteria in the function you can see this is a function format and like dart we have single arrow operations as well i'm not sure if i mentioned but you can just have a single arrow in case you want to return something which is just a one liner which is a short hand for doing it even in dart right so here when do we want to return a product right where if we find a product whose quantity you want to increase we use dot find and what is the criteria to find that particular product well the product's ids should match so we have product with double t which is this dot product now not to get confused product 
is one of the products that user dot cart has. We are we you can consider it like looping. So we are looping through every cart product and finding the particular product. So find is a short way of doing that. We could have used find over here as well, but the reason we did not do that is because we needed to use i. So here we have product dot product, which is the product property in the user's cart. I couldn't show it to you over here because we have not added anything to cart yet. But product and instead of having your product, we could have quantity. Now I think it explains well. Dot underscore id, and we are again comparing the MongoDB IDs. So we can just do dot equals product dot underscore id. Great. Now after having access to that product, and in case you are wondering why we are not using this product that we already have, and that's because we are not storing that product anywhere. So now we can do is product with triple T, which is this one dot quantity. And increase it by one because that product already exists. We found that by looping. So if that product already exists, then we are just going to increase its quantity by one. Otherwise, we are just going to push to cart like this. So we can have here like this. Now, in case you are wondering why did we have this condition over here? If user dot cart dot length is zero, then user dot cart dot push this. Now just think about it. If the cart's length is zero, then will it run through all of this? So we have i less than zero, i is equal to zero, i is less than zero. So here it's not going to run at all, and that's why we are not using that. After that, we have the else condition, and here we are just going to use user is equal to await user dot save because we updated the user's cart, right? We don't need to do anything with product now. We don't really care about it, and we're not making any changes over there. After that, we just need to return a user. Now, after returning this user, you might have guessed we need to update the provider in our client side. So let's quickly go over there and have that. So before even doing that, glad I remember it. We need to go to the user dot dot, and in here add a new generate a new thing. So the new thing that we have here is final list dynamic of cart. And now we need to generate everything. And in case you're wondering why this is dynamic and not map of string of dynamic, and that's because when we get the data from our API, it will not know that the cart property that we extract is mapped. Thus, it will give us an error like type list dynamic is not a subtype of list map string dynamic. You know that's why we are using list dynamic. So here we need to add this required argument. So we have required this dot cart. Then down here we have cart. Whenever we create two map, I don't think specifically we need that, but let's just have it. And even here, the cart is going to be list of map of string comma dynamic dot from, and pass in the elements which will be map at Cart, you know that because when we send it over, we will have map dot cart whenever we use from map, map cart, which can be nullable dot map x, and it will return map of string comma dynamic dot from x. Great. Now after having that, let's see why we are getting this error. We need to pass in a parenthesis over here. And I think at the end, also let's see why we are getting this. We need to remove that semicolon. It's just the parenthesis, and all should be good. Make sure this cart property is like this. By default, it would give something else, I guess, and that's why I manually wrote it. Now we can go to the user provider and here add cart functionality, which will be by default an empty list. So now. We can close this, and now where do we want to go? Well, if you come back over here, you can see the Add to Cart button is present on Product Details screen. So let's go over there, and I see an error in the Auth part. So we can go there, and in the Auth service, we can add the empty cart that we need. Right now, after saving that, we can go to the Product Details screen, 
and in the services of that. The first functionality that we want over here is going to be a post request again. So we can copy this, paste it, and now we're going to name this, let's say, add to cart. And this function is going to be pretty usable because we're going to use this add to cart even in the cart screen when we need to increment it by one. And we, here we need the required as build context and the product so that we can get the product's ID. After that, we need the user provider as well. We need to send a post request and here we just need to send in the ID, which is product.id. We have passed in the correct headers. After that, we need to do the error handling part. Now the error handling part is going to be something tough. So we're going to make it very easy for us. So as we already know, we will get the cart if we go to the user.js part in the routes we are sending user over here now instead of just manually doing you know something like user dot from map and pass in the res dot body instead of doing that while json decoding it and all that stuff you know Instead of doing all of this work, instead of updating this entire user, which will lead to us going back to the auth screen because we updated the user's map for some time, it was null. So that kind of errors we will get. You can try it on your own. You will get it. I face the same thing. So what I've done instead is in the user model again, let's go there. Here, let's go on the top, click on this bulb icon and create copy with class. With this copy class, we'll be able to only use and copy with one value. For example, if we have the ID, name, email, password, all of this typed in, and we just need to pass in the token as a, sorry, cart as a different thing, then we can use copy with. It will copy with all the other features that it has along with this. It is similar to, you know, theme of dot context dot uh, you know theme dot dark dot copy with it's doing the exactly the same thing so we can create this copy with function now what we can do is go to the product details screen and here have user provider dot user which is the current user with all its details dot copy with now since this is an instance of the user class we get access to this copy with function and now we need to copy with this cart and this card should pass in the JSON decode, which is response.body. If we send in response.body, we are sending in the whole user part. We don't want to send that. So we will just send in the cart. After decoding this JSON, we get access to cart property. And then we are just doing that. And we're going to se se uh, store it in a separate variable. But now we need to update this, right? User provider is still not updated. To update it, we always used user dot set user from model. We don't want to do that. User dot set user. So whenever we wanted to set a new user, we would do user dot set user. You saw that user provider dot set user. Sorry, but now we can't do that because set user takes in a string and we don't have a string anymore. We have a user model. So what now we are going to do is go to the user provider class. Let's go there. And here create a new function. So let's create void set user from model. As the name suggests, it will take in the parameter type as a user. And then it will make sure that the private variable user that we have over here is equal to this parameter type user. And then we just need to set notify listeners to notify all the listeners. After that, we can just come over here and pass in user provider dot set user from model and pass in the correct user. Sweet. So after that, we can save this and let's see what we will get. So just to see if there is any changes, what we can do is go to the bottom bar and in here, we can have final user cart length equal to now, instead of typing in provider dot of context, all of that stuff, let's 
first of all import provider we can use a short syntax that i've not used till now so we can use context dot watch this is a short syntax for provider dot of context and we have it and also pass and use a provider over here and here we have it and now we can have dot user dot cart dot link so this will fetch us the user's cart link we can copy this go to the badge and instead of passing in two we are going to pass in user cart link also remove this constant and here convert this to a string great now if we come over here we are getting this error because we need to restart it and here we have it zero displaying which is the correct cart link now if i click over here click on add to cart come back over here nothing has changed and that's because we have not bound this function of add to cart to our product detail screen so let's use that let's also go down so we are going to create a new function called add to cart we will have product detail services dot add to cart pass in the context the product and to get the product we will just do widget dot product great now we can take this void add to cart and go down where we have add to cart and pass it the on tab this add to cart and after saving it we can click on add to cart you can see product validation failed ratings dot zero rating let's quickly see that path rating is required let's see why do we need that so if we go to add to cart add to cart and we have passed in rate product over here so we need to change that to add to cart always keep making stupid errors but here we have it now let's click on add to cart let's go back you can see one over here and in case we again type add click on add to cart it should not give us two it should only give us one with increased quantity so if i click on add to cart it's still one but if we go to our users let's click on refresh here let's scroll down just to find the user we have the cart the zeroth object quantity here you can see two a random id generated and then we have our product object and we click stainless steel now what do we do if we have macbook so let's quickly type in macbook so let's quickly type in macbook and click on enter and you can see in the debug console we have this keyboard error so we are going to restart it and try it again it won't happen on release version so don't worry now if i click on enter macbook air let's click on add to cart go over there we have two showing up sweet so now our cart uh, function is working let's display it over here which should be fairly easy because we are going to copy paste a lot of code from searched product all right so now what we're going to do is close all the save files minimize all the folders that we have and now create a new feature called cart also let's minimize account now in the cart we're going to have screens and services obviously the services will now consist of decrementing the cart so that's fine and now we need cart screen dot dot let's quickly build out the cart screen and display the products that we have we are waiting for it so we have a stateful widget where we're going to call this as a cart screen and create a constant cart screen after that we're going to return a scaffold and go to the home screen to copy this app bar which we've already copied over here let's paste it down there after that we're going to create global variables copy this obviously copy the function so that we can navigate to the search screen and paste it over here after that we are going to import them great now what we want to do is after this app bar let's bind this to our bottom bar so that we see the correct cart screen and see it on the screen so we have constant cart screen and pass it over here now let's restart our app 
if we go to this card we see the correct thing and it is the same thing as this one now in the home sorry in the card screen let's close both of them in the body now we need a single child scroll view and i've already uh, told you the purpose of this single child scroll view after that we need a child and the child is going to be a column and the column is going to be children or first of all an address box this address box is going to consist of the address <laughs> no brainer we have this address and save this much we see the address box showing up correctly after that we need the subtitle for that we're going to create a separate widget so in the cart we have widgets and pass in something known as cart subtotal dot dot let's import the material dot for it call it as a stateless widget and call this cart subtotal here in the stateless widget we're going to first of all have final user equal to provider dot of context so let's quickly add that and actually let's use context dot watch use the user provider and then use the user's property on it after that we have margin and from const edge inserts dot all we want a margin of 10 after that we need a child of row and in that row we are going to have subtotal with 1500 you can always use a text span but i'm just showing you an alternate approach of doing it so we have a constant text that says sub total we are going to leave some space and not put a colon and put in a style as text style font size of 20 after that we need a text which will show the total subtotal now to calculate the subtotal we are going to do this in the build function itself so we have int sum equal to zero and here we have user dot cart and we need to map through all the elements of the user dot cart so that we can get their price and add it to the sum so we have e and now we can use sum plus equals e at quantity and since this is a map but we have used it as a dynamic we can use e quantity into e product now if you're wondering why we are doing what we are doing well we are just well, we are just using quantity, e quantity and multiplying it with the product's price because the subtotal will be how many products did you buy. So if in case over here, let's see, we have iPhone and we have three iPhones. We want to display 4,500. So if we click on three, it will be 4,500. That's what we are doing. Multiplying quantity with product's price. And then we're going to treat them as an integer because they don't know. And obviously convert this to list later on otherwise it won't do anything at all it will stay in an iterable after that we can take the sum pass it in the text so let's copy the text also pass it in the text which has the font size of 20 but font weight is font weight dot bold and here the price is going to be slash dollar dollar sum so that will make it dollar with whatever sum there is like 20 now if we save this much come over here we can't see anything because we have not bound this widget but here we have it now let's go over here and have constant cart subtotal and great also we need to import it so let's quickly import it now if we come over here you can see subtotal 1019 i'm not sure how much did he buy that we're getting this but we'll verify once we get the products showing up so now the next thing is this button so well for that we already know what we're going to use it's going to be custom button here the text is going to be proceed to buy pass in the how many items there are you can see one items so we're going to have dollar user dot cart dot length and now we need to create this user so we can just come up here take this user paste it in the build function import user provider 
and also import watch from provider dot dot and here we have it user dot cart dot link items then we need an on tap so we have on tap and after seeing this much we can see this but now we first of all need to shrink its size and then change its color let's do it together so we have padding wrap it with padding of agent sets dot all eight and after that the color is going to be colors dot yellow at 600 and now if we come over here we see a correct thing showing up after that we need a slight border below which we can show this product item so what we're going to have is a constant sized box of height 15 then a container which will be of the color colors dot black 12 and now we want it to look very slight you know black 12 is uh, having a lot of impact so we can have dot with opacity not 0 0.8 but 0 0.08 which is very very mild and obviously mention a height which would be one saving this much we see correct thing showing up after that we can again leave a space we have not left space over here but now i realize this problem so i can leave this over here let's say five only and then we want to display the list of products for the list of products we are going to use list view dot builder get a context and an index after which we are also going to get an item count so we have item count and now the item count first of all is going to be user dot card dot link and the item builder for that we're going to create a different widget altogether. So in this widgets we are going to have cart underscore product dot dot and not dot product but cart product. After that we're going to import material dot create a stateless widget call it cart product and this cart product is going to be very similar to the searched product that we've already created. So what I'm going to do is first of all even convert it to stateful widget. The reason for that is we are going to click on increase and decrease product, right? So their state is going to change. So we need to make sure we add that. After that, we are going to go to the search product and copy the whole thing from the search product and then make some changes. So I'm going to copy this entire column, paste it over here. And let's see the errors. Well, first of all, we need to remove stars because over here we don't need to, to display the stars. Then we need the product name. Well, we are going to get that from stateful widget. I mean, this is a cart, right? So we just need its index so that we can display. So we have final int index required this dot index. And based on this index, we can show the cart products. So obviously in the build function, we will have final product, which will be equal to provider. And instead of using provider again, I'm used to it. So we can have watch and pass in user provider dot user dot cart. And we want to get access to that particular product. So we're going to have widget dot index. Great. Now we have that product. But now for the ease of our using itself, what we're going to do is pretty smart. You can see that we have product. We're going to name this, let's say product cart, very less descriptive, but I know you can change it. I'm very bad at naming. So here we're going to do final product, which is equal to product dot from map. This will allow us to get, you know, auto completion and we'll make sure that we don't have to use those annoying brackets because they reduce, they, they increase our chance of typos and bugs. So here we can just pass in product dot product cart. I'm a big fan of using these models because they make my life much more easier. So I can go to the down and we have the product created already. And now just to see what we have and then make certain changes more. What I'm going to do is return the cart product over here. So here we have it. We have mentioned the index as well. And now we're not seeing anything. 
we can see list view builder has an error over here and that error can be resolved by either wrapping it with expanded or setting shrink wrap to true here we see a type null is not a subtype of type iterable dynamic if we just restart our app it won't do anything but it will let us know what we are doing wrong somewhere and the reason we are getting this null issue is if we go to the card product we have passed in product dot from map product card but the product card that we are sending includes both product and the quantity we forgot to take that into account so we have cart but now that cart consists of an object so let's see over here we have an object which has product and there is the product object and after that we also have quantity so it passed in this entire object which is giving us the issue so here we want to specifically tell that we have product that we have passed in saving this much we can see correct things showing up that's insane all of these things are matching <laughs> that's pretty cool to see now the only thing that we need to change is this button part so let's quickly create those buttons so we're going to have them after the in stock part let's close this and here in the row just below this image dot network and column and actually not even in the row because if we put it in the row it will come back over here we don't want it over here we want it over here so we're going to pass this below the row which is in the column because we have a column first so here we want it so now we're just going to have a container for increment decrement button so here we have margin which will be constant edge inserts dot all 10 then we need a child of row and that row is because we need these three places so here in the children well first of all we need main access alignment which is the main access alignment dot space between and then we have a container and we have a decoration which will be box decoration and then we pass in border which will be border dot all and then the color will be colors dot black 12 and width will be 1.5 after saving this much we can't see anything on the screen but that's fine we're going to have a border radius of border radius dot circular 5 and we're just designing the outside of this you know this part over here so now we are going to have this and then the color which will be colors dot black 12. After that we need a child in the container itself which will be a row. And in that row we are going to have children which will first uh, give the icon of this minus sign. So we can have container again which will be of the width. 35 and height 32 and now we need to align this container that's why we used and container otherwise we use y size box you can see that so here we're going to have alignment as alignment dot center and then the child as constant icon icons dot remove with size 18 let's save this much and come back over here you can see minus sign is coming and it's looking good after that we need this quantity showing icon but for quantity showing icon the color should be white so what i can do is first of all wrap this container with an inkwell widget which we will do later on because we need to decrement after that we have container which just shows a text which will be of the quantity so we'll have quantity so let's quickly go up and have final quantity equal to product card quantity let's take that quantity go down here pass the quantity and pass in dot to string because this is going to be a number right 
now if we go over here you can see two is showing up but we need to change its color so to change its color we can just wrap it with a decorated box instead of wrapping it with a container we are doing decorated box and then we can pass in box decoration the border will be border dot all color as colors dot black 12 with 1.5 and yeah save it come back over here there's no big change as such so now we're going to pass in the color which will be colors dot white now you'll see the color change which is this color but we also have a bit of you know this color border that we have and then we just need to make sure that there is no you know border radius so we can just pass in border radius as border radius dot circular zero saving this much we come back and there's no border this you can see the border radius is diminishing for this this part if you zoom in and see it after that we again need this container actually let's copy this container because it's going to be pretty similar to this just an icon change will be which will be icons dot add now save this much and we have it looks exactly like here and it looks pretty good and here we are seeing the correct you know the product quantity as well now let's just calculate what we said 1090 so we have one product of macbook air m1 so we have 999 plus 2 times 20 which is 20 so 1019 this is absolutely correct now whenever we click on this we need to increase the quantity we have already created a function for that we need to create for decrease quantity so let's quickly bind that increase quantity one and create one for decrease quantity so we will have final product details services product details services equal to product details services and then we are going to create a function void increase quantity product product and now we want to increase this products quantity so we have product details services dot add to cart and we have already added the logic for adding to cart you can see that we have add to cart we passed in the product and we are increasing its quantity and we've already added the feature of checking if the cart already exists then we just need to add one to this quantity and we've done all that stuff already so we don't need to worry about it as such so we can just reuse this function and it's pretty cool now we can just go down use this increase quantity again so here wrap this container with an inkwell widget or a gesture detector whatever you feel better with i think i'll use inkwell so that user feels that yeah they're clicking something you know not just a stupid button you know it gives a kind of good feeling so here we're going to have an on tap and then pass in the function which will be increase quantity pass in the product which we already have done and yep now if we click on this product it is three this is two and it's increasing real time this is absolutely insane now the same thing we're going to have for decrease quantity so we can create a services of cart services Otherwise, you can just do it in product details services, but I think it's cleaner to have cart services as well because this function is only used over here in this cart services. Obviously, we're going to go to the product details services and copy this entire file and paste it over here. Now, let's rename stuff. We have cart services. We are going to have, well, remove rate to product. We don't need that. And in here, we're going to have this named as remove from cart this is going to be a required product field we are going to get the user provider and then we're going to pass in the api that is http dot delete this is something new so we we looked at get 
update and post but we didn't look at delete so this is the final crude function which will also tell you that we are nearing to the end we are coming very close to the end of this application there are just a few features left you can look in the timestamps below but the point is we are using delete over here so obviously there is no body over here and for delete we are not going to pass in any body but we are going to use that url format that we had so we have api slash remove from cart and then pass in the product id in the url and you already know how you're going to access it in the server we're going to use request.params but here we can worry about product.id passing it in carefully <laughs> after that after that is done good enough we're going to get user user we need to copy that cart and set user from model all of that similar to add to cart. Now we just need to create a different URL for this thing. So I think I'll just copy this part and go to user.js and in the routes, we are going to create a delete post. I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here. And this is going to be called user.delete. And again, we need to copy that URL. So you are copy it, paste it over here and we are going to pass in the id well the id can be accessed using request.params and here make sure to add this colon don't forget it by any chance and here we are going to re use request.params as the id otherwise you can just use request.params.id i mean both of them are the same thing but i just wanted to show you another way of doing it which is this after that, we're going to find the product. We're going to find the user. And here, we're, we're, we do not want is product found and all of that stuff. We already know the product is there. That's why the user is even able to click on that remove from cart button. So here, we're going to remove this is product found part, even this else block, this if block, and even this let variable is product found variable. Now we're going to check from going from zero to card dot link i plus plus checking if users product id is equal to the product id that we have then we are going to do user dot cart dot splice because we want to remove it and as we already know splice helps us with that just to make you remember again what this slice will do it will delete the product based on whatever you enter. So we need to enter the start number and how many elements do we need to delete after that? And in case you're wondering why we are not using find function over here on user.card.find and that's exactly for this reason. We are using i over here. We want the i so that we can splice it out. So here we have i comma one and after splicing it, we are good to go. So if the user cards product exist and if it is equal, then we need to splice it out. Otherwise, we just need to display the cart. And actually, not this. We will splice this out. But now the thing is, this product ID equals to this product ID. I mean, the cart's product ID that while we are looping is equal to the product ID that we found. Then we need to splice it up. But what if the quantity is 1? It will just change it quantity to zero, but it will still say stay in this cart object as an array and it will still display on the screen showing that this is zero. So what we need to do to avoid overcrowding in our database is check here if user dot cart at i dot quantity is equal equal to one. So when the user clicks on the delete button and we get call to this remove from cart API, then we will check if the quantity is one, that means that the user is just about to remove this entire product, then we are just going to use this user.cart.splice. Otherwise, we are going to use user.cart this line, but here instead of equal equal to, we'll have minus equal to one. That means user content cart user.cart at i dot quantity will be equal to user.cart at i dot quantity minus one. It will decrease its value by one. And in case 
you get confused and you use user dot cart at i dot product dot quantity. Don't do that. You know, we don't need to use that because it will give us the number of total products left, not the quantity we will have in the product. So we are essentially changing the products quantity over here. Both of these match. So if you decrease this products quantity, it wouldn't even matter because you're not even looking at it. So we are just decreasing it by one. So we are just going to have user dot cart at i dot quantity minus equal to one. After that, we are going to save it and return it. Now let's bind this function to our cart per screen. Let's go at the top and actually in the cart product, we will avoid decrease quantity and use final cart services cart services equal to cart services take this cart services and have dot remove from cart pass in the context and the product and then use this decrease quantity so we can wrap this container with an inkwell widget use the on tap feature and here we have decrease quantity pass in the required product and boom we have it now if i click on minus sign we set it to two we set this to one we set this to two and the value is also changing if i restart the application we should see the same state of our application so if I come over here, one and two, 2008. Now the next thing we need to work on is whenever we click on this, we get to an address box form and there we do some validations to check if the user has already entered the address. If the user has already entered the address, then we give them an input box saying that you want to use this address or the one that you want to newly form it. And then we can click on the Apple or Google Pay, whatever is provided and continue with that. Let's quickly do that. All right. So now for the address screen, I'm going to close all the save files again. And here I'm going to create a new feature called address. This will again have screens and services. So let's quickly create them. And now this screen will have address screen dot dot. We're going to import material dot, create a stateful widget and then call this address screen. After that, we are going to call this as a constant constructor. And here we are going to return a scaffold, which will have a simple app bar. If you come over here, this is the design of the application. So you can see this is a pretty basic thing. We just have a gradient. So now just to have a gradient, what we're going to do is go to the home screen, copy this app bar till let's say year only, and then add the remaining parentheses by ourselves. We can do that much. After that, we will import this package and also this parentheses. Great. Now, whenever I click on this, I want to navigate over here. So obviously we're going to call this static constant string route name called address. And we are not going to get any constructor receiver or anything. So that's good. Now we can copy this address screen, go to the router, create a new route for it. And we will call this address screen dot route name, nothing in the constructor. So let's remove that and have address screen, remove this from the constructor as well and call this as a constant address screen. Now, whenever we go over here, whenever we click on this proceed to buy. So let's go to the cart screen and create a function called navigate to address. So let's copy this, paste it here and have navigate to address and to this address, we are just going to pass in address screen dot route name. I don't think we need anything else in case we need, we have to make that changes. So let's quickly remove that out and here navigate to address in that on tab, we are going to pass in the navigate to address function. 
here the argument is nothing so let's have this much and yep whenever we click on this we come back to the screen great now what is this logic going to be like i i've already mentioned it to you whenever we have an address then we make sure that we show this otherwise and ask the user if they want to use this otherwise the form so now we are going to just have a form in the address screen so for that form let's close the card screen and have or screen dot dot file where we are going to copy all the form content that we have and paste it in the air scaffold which is this body and paste it down here after that we need a custom text field so we're going to import that library we also need these controllers so let's see what controllers we need these four controllers so well let's name them we have flat house number building after that we have area street then we have pin code after that we need one more which is town and city so let's copy this much paste it down here and have town or city and import custom button so let's import that library and here in the on tab we will validate later on but for now let's remove that and the text is not going to be sign up and actually we don't even need this custom button we need an apple pay button right now quickly create all of these custom text field controllers and a sign up form key so let's quickly go on the top and have those text editing controllers created so we have text editing controller first of all flat building controller which will be equal to text editing controller after that we paste it three four more times three more times actually we have area controller pin code controller and finally city controller now copy these controllers so we have flat building controller area controller then the pin code controller and finally the city controller also dispose them off and create the global variable so take them and dispose it over here and we're going to do it more times so we have four more times area controller dot dispose pin code controller dot dispose and city controller dot dispose also create a global key which will be final underscore not gynal final address form key which will be equal to global key and then we are going to have a form state we have already looked at it we created this in auth screen so let's take this address form key paste it in the sign up form key and have that done now let's see what we're getting this looks good enough now let's create the conditional logic for showing this address if it exists in the first place so what are we going to have well first of all get let's get the user address so we have variable address equal to context dot watch and here we need to import it so let's get that import provider and this will be of the type user provider pass in dot user over here and also dot address because we need to get the user's address and now we need to check before rendering the form so we will check here and before even checking let's actually add a padding to this because you can see there is no space left from the left so we can wrap this with the padding widget save this much and here we have it looks good now we are going to have conditional logic but before that let's even add the single child scroll view so that it's scrollable and when the screen size decreases we have discussed a lot about this but if the screen size discusses uh, decreases it's going to be of a much much big use to us 
when you use smaller screen sizes you'll notice that so here in the column in the form before rendering the form here we are going to first have a column and in this column we are going to check if address that we have is not empty then we want to display this container with the text so again this will be a column and why this is a column well so that we can add this text and even this orb text that we have along with the sized box over here that's why we are having them so we have children and in the children we are going to have a container of decoration which will be box decoration have border which will be border dot all pass in the color which will be colors dot black 12 after that in the container we will have child and the child will be a text saying that this is the address and then style it out which will be constant textile and font size 18 after that let's see what we're getting we can't see anything because address is empty in case we change the value for now so let's say 101 fake street and come back you can see fake street showing up just for designing we're going to use this fake address but after we do that designing part we can again come back to this address so here in the child we're going to wrap this with a padding so that it looks much much neater and better so we have padding also we can specify a width of double dot infinity this looks great after that we will have a sized box of height 20 after that a constant text saying this is or and then have a style of textile well font size 18 because we want the size to be lower than the usual a uh, higher than the usual size sorry because you can see this is seemingly very big also after this we again need to leave some space for the bottom so we can copy this size box paste it down here come back this looks great after that we finally need an apple or a google pay button so for that we are going to use this play pay plugin so we can copy this use dot add dependency to add this we need to stop the app execution and let's read through the documentation you can see it only supports android and ios till now that was the problem in case that get, uh, gets updated in the future, I'll add a, a video or a documentation using which you can add it to your own app in the pinned comment below. Be on a lookout for that. So here we have Apple Pay and it tells us the get started instructions. I'm going to use a test payment service so that I can test it out. But if you are a business and looking forward to it, this is a pretty well documented thing. You can just uh, take a look at it I'll if I do this and if I cover this part it will be the exact same things mentioned over here so I don't find the need to do it again after this we just need to add this to our dependency which we already did and here you can see create a payment profile with the desired configuration for your payment either using a local file or loading it from a remote server we are going to use a local file for it and to use the local file we're going to go the, to this repository link is mentioned in the description below in the assets where there is images we're going to copy both of these files apple pay.json and gpay.json if you're not on mac os then don't worry don't have apple pay.json but in case you want apple pay it's great enough you can have it it will display on android phones but i would recommend you to not use this we will just use gpay for Android devices and we're going to test it on Android as well. We have not used it till now, but that's fine. Over here in the assets, I've already installed it. So I'm just going to copy it. So I'm just going to take these files and paste them in the assets. Make sure they are in the assets, not, not in the images folder. 
and now what we need to do is go to the pubspec.yaml file and add these two assets. So I'm just going to copy this path and pass in apple pay dot json. If we see over here, let's see the name. If it's correct or not, apple pay dot json, correct. And we don't need to add this slash because this is a JSON file. This is a file. This was a folder and we needed to include all the images in this folder. But for JSON, we don't need to do that. And exactly the same for gpay.json. If you want, you could have done assets. But the thing is, it would have loaded unnecessary assets in a file as well in case our app gets bigger. So that would mean it would cause the app memory to increase. And that's why I'm not doing that. Great. Having that and the pay plugin installed, I'm going to get out of this form also and here introduce the Apple Pay button. Now obviously I have to run this but before that I need to set up the payment configuration asset and this is basically asking for the payment config file that we have just created and then we just need to pass in Apple Pay.json. No need to mention asset slash images and all of that part because here in the documentation it is already written that we need to pass it in the assets folder. Example meaning the name of your project slash assets folder. So here it will just navigate through that and check if there is Apple Pay. If there is, if it is mentioned in any other folder, it will give us an error. And on payment result, we need to create a function for that. So let's quickly create that on the top. It will be called void on apple pay result here we are going to get the result and yep that's it let's go down again pass in the result after that we need payment items which for now is going to be nullable actually let's create it at the top again so it will be list of payment item called payment items which will be an empty list for now but we're going to update it later on in in later on i mean in just some time and now let's run our application to see what we are getting till now i'll go in the debug console and see and here our build has failed because here you can see this is only available in ios 11.0 or newer so we need to go to our pod file and change this platform ios version from 9 to let's say 11 now save this much open up a new terminal and in the amazon clone tutorial root folder we are going to go to the ios and in there we are going to run pod install here you can see pod installation was completed now i can clear it go back to the root folder again clear it and then run the file after that we are going to stop all of this and let's see what we're getting now all right so our app has loaded up and now if we go to our cart click on proceed to buy two items we can see the apple pay button let's design this apple pay button now so here first of all we want the width to be increased so we will have double dot infinity whatever space we get in terms of width here we have it now let's specify the style so here we want to apple pay button style dot and you get a lot of values to choose from what i'm going to do is white let's see what we get in white not looking good so let's try a different thing let's say white outline let's save this much and here we have apple pay so let's change its type so we have apple pay button type dot buy because we need to buy nothing else let's save this much and let's restart our application because for some thing for some reason the changes aren't showing up let's quickly click on proceed to buy and you can see there are certain changes created now after that we need some spacing from the top so what we can have is a constant size box of height 10 given also, let's increase its height. So what we can have is over here, the height as 50. Let's save this much, looks good enough. Let's add some margin from the top again. 
uh, not just this you know the app size works but over here also it gives us margin which will be constant edge inserts dot only and from the top 15 using this also we have the top margin created great so now let's add the apple pay button so we can have constant sized box let's remove it from here and paste it over here we have constant size box of height 10 to leave some white space and now we are going to have google pay button so we have google pay button we need to pass in the payment configuration asset as gpay.json then the on pay result payment result which will be on google pay result just like on apple pay result so we are just going to copy this paste it over here and have on google pay result paste it over here and have on google pay result after that we have passed in the payment items we won't be able to see it because apple doesn't support viewing other pay services so on iphone only google pay button is visible only i apple pay button is visible so that's the issue so let's specify certain properties that i've tried and tested on android phone earlier so that you know you can copy them and when we check it on android you can see that if you are checking on android already that's great let me know in the comment section if i got it right so we are going to have google play button style as black and the type is going to be google pay button type dot buy after that we already need this margin so let's add that margin and also don't forget to add a loading indicator which will be just a constant centered child widget of circular progress indicator having that much done we have apple and google pay buttons ready now if we click on them nothing really is happening and that's because we have not mentioned payment items anywhere the payment item is going to consist of the total bill in our application if you want you can mention each and every item that the payment items has like you know if we added iphone max and everything you can create those payment items but here we are just going to store the total amount so to get the total amount i think we have to use this so we have final string amount and we'll call this total amount and require it from the constructor so let's quickly click on the bulb icon and generate total amount constructor now we need to go to the router dot dot also save this go to the router dot dot add this line paste it over here and we know this is called total amount we need to pass it in the address screen so we have total amount total amount and we need to treat it as a string here we have it now whenever we use this address screen which is cart screen we need to make sure that we pass in the arguments which is the total price that it took us so now we will have int sum and now we need to convert this argument to sum dot to string great now we can come back over here and now we need to pass in that like this if we store it like this it will call the function we don't need to call the function we need to store the address of this function and that's why we're using this kind of thing and now we need to pass in the sum which will be the sum that we created over here and we actually haven't created that so let's create it very quickly well we can just copy it and we can copy it from card subtotal so let's quickly copy this part paste it over here and click clo close the card subtotal part and now we need to pass in the sum which we already did great now whenever we let's restart our application click on router dot dot and even in the init state let's create that part so whenever we create the init state 
what we need to do is add to the payment items this amount so we have payment items dot add and then we will have this payment item that we need to pass in so the amount is widget dot total amount and this is a string then we have the label called total amount and the status is going to be payment item status dot and you can see what is this item status like is it final price or the bargainer can negotiate or it's not known to us so we can have final price done and great after having this much done we can come over here click on proceed to buy two items click on buy with pay and here we have it the correct amount is showing here two thousand eight dollars here we have the correct name as well and now if we just click on done we can even click on pay with passcode now that is not going to happen right now because we have not validated on apple pay result and all of that stuff and that's mainly because we still need to make one more validation so whenever the user clicks on this buy with apple pay or google what we need to check is if the user is using this address that they have already provided us with or this form if they're using this address then so how are we going to validate that right so you're basically we're going to check if the user has not entered in any of our forms anything that means everything is blank then we are going to use this thing otherwise we are going to ask them to validate this form so we are going to create a new third function we look into this on apple pay result on google pay result later on but this we have pay pressed and this will get us the address from the provider let's name it that only so this address from provider will fetch us the value from this address that we will fetch from provider but for now just for testing we have changed it and here we are going to first create a variable called string address to be used so let's quickly create that and have string address to be used is equal to empty then we are going to take this address to be used and pass it in over here so we have address to be used as empty again so if the user clicks on the pay button twice we need to make sure that we use different addresses every time and the pre-existing value gets removed after that we need to check if the user is using the form or the address from provider so here we are just checking boolean is form and we just need to check if all of these are empty or not so we are just going to use flat building controller dot text dot is not empty or or and then just use it three to four more times so let's quickly copy that paste it paste it paste it and i think paste it yeah <laughs> now save this much and now we will use this area controller pin code controller and city controller we are just checking if they are not empty if any of the controllers are false meaning any of the controllers are empty then the form is also false and that means we don't need to use the form here we will check if it is form then so if the form is true then we just need to validate the form right so we just use address form key dot current state dot validate so if it is a form then we need to make sure that it validates and if the validations also go well then the address to be used is equal to dollar flat building controller dot text let's have this and i think i pasted it twice so let me remove it once so this is the layout flat building controller dot text then we need to pass in the area controller so we have 101 let's say 101 building then we have 
the area controller so let's say this is some area like wall street <laughs> i'm just making that up then we are going to have a city controller so we have city controller dot text and then we are going to have an hyphen just to show a pin code so we have dollar pin code controller dot text after that we are going to save this much and this is the address we need to show show otherwise we need to throw an exception we can't just use a you know a snack bar otherwise it will further execute our application but we don't want that we just want to show an error on the screen so we will have please enter all the values also we are doing this through exception because we are going to use this pay pressed on on tap of this function so whenever we click on the on tap and if there is no exception then the button like this will pop up and it will still allow even if the user is not authenticated it will still allow to show all of this uh, you know this payment methods we don't want that so here we are throwing an exception so that we get the exception in the debug console itself and the button doesn't show up after that we are going to have an else if checking if address from provider is not empty so if address from provider is not empty also i think we forgot a brace over here yep this is the if and else block but this else if stands for this main block over here sorry this block over here so we have address from provider if it is not empty then the address to be used is going to be address from provider right if it is not empty then obviously we are going to take that otherwise we need to show a snack bar saying error and this is very rare it's just for error handling part great we have imported that now let's see what errors we are getting down but and the error is there because we added an extra brace so let's remove that extra brace and here all the errors go away now we just need to take this pay pressed and add it to the on pressed so let's go down to google pay button and have on pressed passed in so we need to pass in the pay pressed and the address which will be from the provider again we can copy this pass it to the apple pay button so let's go there and here pass it in in the pay sorry on pressed pass in this sweet so now if we see click on buy with pay it will select the address so let's also print the address that it is selecting so we will have print address to be used and let's see what address gets outputted so i'm just going to restart the whole thing and if it's 101 fake street then that would mean that we are using the address and we have not filled the form so now if i click on buy with apple pay you can see 101 fake street awesome that's working now if i type let's say 101 click on buy with pay you can see enter your area street and all of that here an exception should come in that enter all the values and also you can see the apple pay button doesn't show up if you just comment this line out and the else condition also it will throw you it will also after showing this validation error it will also show you the button that's not what we want great so now i'm just going to enter everything so let's say wall street pin code will be let's say 10001 and the town will be washington and let's click on buy with pay and come back over here this is the thing that we're using exactly what we want awesome now we just need to create an api because on apple pay result on google pay result handles the authentication part so these functions will get called only when there is success so if the user suppose fails the success or just clicks on x these functions won't be called so we just need to work on the api part of it so that we store the order and then afterwards we just need to display these orders all right so now i'll just close this terminal i'll restart the application and before i forget 
here i'm going to use address as a correct address so that will be context dot watch pass in the user provider and use dot user dot address great now also remove this address to be used we don't need that anymore we are pretty sure of the value that we have now in the on apple pay result which we are going to copy in on google pay result both are going to have the same thing here we are going to check if provider dot of user provider context dot user dot address is empty so if the user's address is empty then we want to make sure that we store that address so for example if we go over here and now we don't have that box so now if we enter in all the uh, addresses and click on buy with pay and then click on buy with pay then we want that this address gets stored we don't want to formally ask the user to you know uh, enter the address separately so here exactly what we are doing so now we will create a services called address services dot dot file and also we are going to have s a small dot dot after that we are going to come copy most of the things from admin services so let's quickly copy that paste it over here let's remove unnecessary stuff here we are not going to require any of this even any of this and now in the address services first thing that we need to create is save user address this will only require the user's address and will be from the user provider so we need that after that we need to use http.post called api slash save user address after that we need to pass in the headers and the body will be json encoded and we need to pass in the address to the server side so we have this address great now we just need to error handle this error and after this is success we don't need to show a snack bar but we need to store this address in the user provider so we will have user provider dot user dot copy with and then use the address so now we will just decode this and have response dot body pass in the address exactly what we have done multiple times before and here this will return to us a user model so let's import that user model and now we need to set this user provider using the model so we have user provider dot set user from model pass in the user model great we have that created and the data on the user address is being updated now we can come in the address screen create final address services and we have not called this address services that is change the name of the file also remove these unused imports and let's call this address services copy this class paste it over here call this address services equal to address services copy this address services and in the if condition itself we are going to save the address and the address here is going to be address to be used make sure to not enter provider dot of user provider dot user dot address that will store in the provider's user address and not the address from the form if the user enters one after this we just need to save that data also we need to create the save user address api so let's quickly create both of the apis together so the first one is going to be your exercise so in the user.js file what i want you to do is create a post request to save the user address all right that's your task you can go ahead anywhere uh, how whatever you want to do with it 
I highly recommend you to do this exercise so that you get to know how much you are understanding. If you're not, then later on while we perform other exercises, you can just know if you're understanding or not and then learn from it again. Were you able to do it? I really hope you were able to do it. That would be really great to know in the comment section. So we have slash API slash save user slash hyphen address. Then we want auth, then async request response, and then we are going to have a try and a catch block. And we are going to have res dot status 500 dot json as the error with e dot message. After that, in the try block, we want to get the user's address. So we have constant address equal to request dot body. After that, we want to find the user so that we can store in the user's address property this user. So we have await user dot find by ID and find it using request dot user. After that, we can use user dot address, which is a property on user equal to the address we receive from the request dot body. And after that, we just need to save it. Don't forget to save it. Otherwise, it won't reflect in the database. Even though it will change for some time, you know, because in the client side, the on success will pass in. But over here, when we restart the application, it won't be saved because in the database, it is not saved. And then we need to make sure that we send the user back. And over here, we are just using that address part of the user to change it. Great. After that, we I promised you without testing, <laughs> we are going to move on to ordering product so that we have some self confidence in ourselves. It's really bad, I know, but let's try to do it since we're doing it for fun right now. So here we are going to have something similar, a post request to order a product. And we're going to call this basically simply order. And from here, we are going to get the cart. So the entire cart that the user is ordering, then the total price and then the address of the user so that we get to know where we are delivering, right? Now we don't need the user part over here. So let's quickly remove all of that stuff. And now create a model for order. So we have order.js. Let's quickly create the order. So we have constant mongoose, which is equal to require mongoose. And then we require, well, order schema, which will be equal to mongoose dot schema. Also create an order out of this, which will be a model. So we have mongoose dot model. And we will call this order and pass in the order schema. Also make sure to module dot export this order model. And I don't think anywhere we will be needing this order schema thing. Great. So now we want this mongoose dot schema. Now, how is our order schema going to look like? Now, I would like to give you this as an exercise as well. Just brainstorm and think what all things are required and what are the types going to be in this order schema. Don't worry if it's different from mine later on, but just try it on your own. And if both of them match according to you and you think you'll be able to convert the code ahead, I would, I would really appreciate that. And please go ahead and try that on your own. Were you able to do it? So now we are going to have products as an array and here, first of all, we are going to have product, which will be the product schema. After that, we need a quantity. So we have quantity as a type of number and it is required. This is simply similar to the cart that we have because cart is going to store the products. Then we have total price and total price 
we already saw is of the type number and it is required as well after that we have address so we want that so we have type string required set to true after that we have user id and then we want that to be required as well user id will basically store who ordered this right after that this will be of the type string then ordered at so the time it was ordered at so it will be of the type number we are basically going to convert everything in date time to the number which will be milliseconds since epoch which will be from the date milliseconds since you know january 1 1970 and then required set to true everything is required except this last part which is the status so what is the status of my order it is going to be of the type number and will be default to zero So why is this of the type number? Well, it's mainly because zero is pending. That means that the user has just ordered. One will mean completed. Two will mean received. And three will mean delivered. So zero pending means that the user has just placed the order. Completed will mean that the user or our product has been delivered from our side. Received means that the user has tick marked it and delivered means yeah both the parties have agreed and all is done. So now we can come to this order and in this order what do we need to do? Well first of all create a products temporary variable at the top which will be an empty array. Here we will have for let i is equal to 0 i is less than card dot length i plus plus so the card is going to be again in the json format we're going to convert it to json because we can't give you know like a model to our server now we want to find that particular product from which we are converting to the product you know from mongoose so we have let product equal to await product.findbyid pass in the id as cart at i dot product dot underscore id then why are we getting this product now we just need to check if the quantity is greater than the quantity that we are asked so if we have the very first product, let's say iPhone, we, uh, we order 20 product, 20 quantities of it and that much don't exist only. What do we do? So we are just checking over here if product dot quantity, if it's greater than or equal to cart's quantity, that means that the quantity that the admin has decided is greater than what the user is ordering, then the order will be successful so we want product dot quantity minus equal to cart at i dot quantity then we will just use products which is this temporary array that we created dot push because we now need to push to this array this product the quantity which will be cart at i dot quantity that means that the order is being placed so we are just setting up the order products and now we will just say await product dot save and we are using this await product dot save in the loop itself so that the uh, because the products are going to keep changing right so we just need to save it as soon as the product is here and the product is accessed using this i variable which is in the for loop after that we are going to have this else condition saying return res.json with a message saying with the backticks i have already mentioned what this backticks are 
uh, it will allow us for string interpolation which will be product dot name is out of stock and also this will change the status code which will be 400 called bad request so res dot status 400 dot json product is out of stock after that is done we need to make sure that the cart is empty so we are now finding the user using their user id after that we are making sure that the user dot cart is set to empty list and then we are just using user is equal to await user dot save now we need to create a new order so we have let order equal to new order then we pass in the particular thing so what is the first thing that we need well let's see oops i went too far ahead so we need products total price address user id order at let's see if i remember them so we have products total price address user id and now the user id you can see we can't pass it in like this because the user id is request dot user all of these had the same name same key and same value but user id has a bit of different and let's see what else is there and we have status as well and ordered at so we have ordered at new date dot get time get milliseconds whatever you want we're just going to store it in milliseconds you can see gets the milliseconds of a date using local time great 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 and if we use get time you can see it will get us a time value in milliseconds so i think i'm going to use it the get time and then i will use order is equal to await order dot save and rest dot json the order because we don't really care about the user now user will save and when this is success we'll make sure that their cart is also empty so now let's go back to address services and instead of fetching all the products we are going to place the order so let's change this to void place order we are going to receive a build context so let's quickly add this required build context then required string address and then we require the total sum that we have after that let's remove this product list and now we are going to have slash admin nope we have slash api slash order this is the simplest url that we have created so i remember it and we don't need get we need post after that we need a body which will be json encode and then we need to pass in certain things well first of all is cart so we have user provider dot item dot user dot cart and this is already in json format or in a list format we don't need to worry about it and we have address as address and total price let's convert it to a string total price is total sum if we go to our user.js we have cart total price and address we have total price passed in over here great after this we need to error handling so here we just need to make sure that the cart is empty and we also tell the user that your product has been or your order has been placed so let me remove the return product list because this is void and here first of all we will have user user equal to user provider dot user dot copy with and we're going to copy with cart as an empty list now we will do user provider dot set user from model pass in the correct user and here we have it also let's show a snack bar saying that the order has been placed so we will say your order has been placed saving this much and let's restart our application also in the address screen let's bind it all together finally so we have address services dot place order 
pass in the context then the address will be address to be used and the total sum is going to be widget dot total amount dot to string to fix this error well we have converted it to string and the reason we converted it to string was actually if we see this widget dot total amount is of the type double so we just need to convert it to a double so we will have double dot parse pass in the widget dot total amount and this will convert it to a double format great also let's copy this and paste it down in case it doesn't work then we can obviously change it later on all of these functions are bound to each other so let's quickly see and wish our app is now successful also let us just proceed to buy two items so i'm going to enter 101 wall street call this area <laughs> what do i call this now let's say 101 fake building then this will be called wall street this will be the pin code so let's say 10001 and the town or city let's say washington i'll click on buy with apple pay and close this nothing shows up nothing is done so now i can click on done and pay with the passcode and that part is done nothing really shows up i notice some kind of error you can see in this on google pay result we have not set listen to false and even here uh, if we go to the on apple pay we have not set listen to false now let's try to run our application so if i click on well again enter some useless information we're going to call the street 1001 and the town as Washington then we can click on buy and then click on pay with passcode you can see your order has been placed this address is showing up that's a very good sign and if you go back the cart is cleared off and now everywhere our address is being seen so now if I restart the application you can see this address is showing up even if I refresh the browser over here we can see in the orders a new order is placed with a total price of 2008 ordered at these many milliseconds the status right now is zero and this is the address where we want to deliver it great so now the next thing is over here quickly let's display the orders that we have and when we click on them we want to display the orders details all right so now i will just close all the other tabs again and here in the account details so let's go to the account part and in the screens part let's go to the account screen and here we have the orders now in the orders we need to display stuff so here we have the order screen instead of displaying the static images we need to display our orders now that should be very easy to do so here in the account we're going to create a new folder called services add account services and let's give this as an exercise that we need to fetch all the orders of the particular user so try it on your own i'm not even giving hints for this one so go ahead pause the video and do it on your own were you able to do it if not let's do it and make sure that you understand the logic behind this if not you can ask me in the comment section below so here we are just going to have a get request because we need to fetch all the orders right so I'm just going to go ahead and copy some stuff from home services and it will be a list of products. So I'm going to copy this one because we're going to get all the products of the user. I mean all the orders of the user. So here we can just name this as fetch my orders. Then we require the build context, then the provider, then user provider, all of that stuff. Then import http as http after that we need to do error handling and then the uri should be imported from global variables and then the json decode thing and i think we'll have to remove this and instead add our own uh, instead of product we will need uh, order from json and we'll have to create that model 
but we'll create that after creating the API for our orders. So here the API is going to change with API slash orders slash me. So it will get all the orders of the user and we don't need to pass in the UID of the user because well, we have it in request.user. So now we will go to user.js because it's a user route. We want the uh, user's orders. So here we're going to have user router dot get slash API slash orders slash me and pass in auth middleware and have asynchronous request response and then use try and catch block to catch any errors and then just send in any error with the status code of five and the name error with e dot message. After that, we can just come over here and have let orders equal to await order dot find pass in the required user ID and pass in request dot user, which will be the user's ID. And after that, we will just send in this order. Also, let's put const over here because we are doing nothing else. So here we are basically finding all the orders with this user's ID and the user ID is with request.user. Now we should be able to get hold of this. So let's go to the account services and in here, first of all, we need to create a model for the user or uh, for order. So let's quickly go down and create order.dart file. Let's create, create an order class and define some properties of this order class. It's going to have a string of ID, then a list of products, which we are going to change. So whatever product that we get, we need to convert that into a product model as well. After that, we need a list of integer of quantity. So every product that we are going to store later on will have its own quantity. Now, instead of storing it in a map, we are storing it as two different lists. I think it's a better way of doing it because whenever uh, ahead, when we see, when we create the to map and from map functions, you'll see that this products will get access to only the product because this is a list of product. And here we also need the quantity, right? So we're creating a separate property for it. Then we need a string address, then the string user ID, then the timestamp. So let's see what we call as a timestamp in our order.js model. So it is called ordered at. So let's copy this and call this ordered at. Then we need final int status. And then we need to generate a constructor for this. After that, we need to create, create JSON serialization. And here the to map is fine, but from map, we need to make some changes. You can see it takes in list of products from map of products. And then we are mapping through each and every one to get product dot from map X. So here, when we map through the products, we have both another map in that product and quantity. You remember that? So if we come over here, you can see this is the products array that it is counting. So we have map out products. So it's mapping through everything and then creating a product from that mapped product. So we have access to only one product. So we have access to this whole object over here. So it's creating the product from this whole object and this whole object consists of product and quantity both. So here it will give us an error. It will give us null, whatever that we have, because we can't create a product from map of an object, right? So here we need to pass in product and the same thing for quantity over here. So if we are here, we are list of int from map of products fell first of all. And then we need to map through all of them. So we have get, we get access to X and then we will have X at quantity as the returning value. So we map through the products and then we have X dot uh, X quantity returned. This should be great for us. Also the ID should be map underscore ID. Make sure to make that change because here the ID is underscore ID. After that, we can go to the account services and 
instead of having product list name we are going to change it so i'm pressing option on mac just to grab each and everything here and then convert this to well order list and here it didn't get selected so let me remove this and here we have it order list and it will be a list of orders so here also we are going to have a list of order and here we are going to con have order dot from json and then all the logic that we have this will convert it to json this will convert string to uh, co convert json to string and then this will convert this to a order model and then return it then we need to go in the orders and create and remove this temporary list that we add and instead of that we are going to have list of orders which will be called orders let's import order now we will create init state remove the implement init state functionality thing then here we are going to have fetch orders take this fetch orders create a void function for it call it asynchronous and now also initialize account services we are already familiar with all of that stuff again and again we are doing this i hope it's good practice now we will have account services equal to account services now we can take this account services set it to orders and this will be equal to await account services dot fetch my orders we will pass in the build context and it doesn't require any category so we need to go to our function and update it so let's go to a function remove this category thing also remove this product dot dot no necessary imports and then call set state so that our build function rebuilds and here we will check if order is equal equal to null then show a constant loader otherwise a column also let's go down here and instead of item count as list dot length we are going to have orders dot length and even here the image is going to be orders at particular index dot products at zero dot images at not index but zero so here what we are doing is grabbing one particular order because we are in a list view builder so we are grabbing one particular order its products and products can be an array so we are grabbing the very first element or the very first product and then showing its very first image now if we save this much let's see what we get we are getting a loading indicator that seems to be good let's see in the debug console what we get when we click over here we have our orders showing up now the next thing is whenever we click on this we need to go to the order details screen and she see the details of this order this should be very easy to do so let's implement it quickly all right so now let's close all the save files even the terminal and in here we are going to create another feature called order details and then create a screen for that called order details screen so let's create it Now this order detail screen is going to be repeated throughout our application now. So even the admin screen we are going to use it. So that's pretty cool. Now we are going to create a stateful widget out of this and we will call this order details screen. And also here we need to get access to the order because we need to display an order based on what order we get right. Just like the single product widget that we created. So here we have required this dot order also create a route name for this so we have static constant string route name equal to slash order details now after this we can take this route name go to the router dot dot and pass it in so we have order details screen dot route name so let's remove this extra route name and here whatever we get should be treated as an order and here we will call this order also let's take this pass it in over here and pass in the order details screen after that we also need an order great so after having this much we need to create the ui of our application now how do we go about it well first of all convert this in a scaffold and here we see the very first thing is an app bar so 
we'll go to the home screen copy this entire app bar and paste it over here now obviously we will also need the navigate to search screen thing so we will paste that also then we also need to import global variables import search screen and great we have this now let's save this much go to our orders.dart file and here we are going to wrap this single product with a gesture detector again now this gesture detector will help us navigate to this particular order detail screen so we have navigator dot push named pass in the route name which will be order detail screen dot route name pass in the arguments which will be orders at particular index so that we pass in one particular order and this will fetch us from the list a particular order now we can come back to orders detail screen and if we click over here we get navigated great now the very first thing that we need to see is this text and this box with order date order id and order total let's quickly set it up so we have a body where we are going to have a single child scroll view obviously because this has a very great chance of scrolling then we have a child and then a column and column has many children so the first child is going to be the text that just says view order details so we have constant text view order uh, i think yep then we need to pass in style which will be text style of font size 22 and font weight of font weight dot bold after that we can just see what we're getting looking great then we just need to wrap it with a container so that we can show this box with some borders so we'll wrap it with a container with a child as a column of these texts and this container will have some border like this so obviously we're going to wrap it with a container then we need to pass in a decoration so that we can have a border so it will be box decoration and box decoration will have border as border dot all color as colors dot black 12 after that we are going to have the child as a column of all these text so we can pass it in so we have children and the very first text that we have is order date so we have order date as widget dot order dot created at or ordered at let's see order that and then i think this much is enough so let's quickly save this and see what we are getting all right order date is showing up this is correct but we need to format this so we can just see if so to format this well we have to use another dependency called intel you should be very familiar with this because it's a very great date formatter for us so we are going to stop our app execution and now even though it's looking great, well, there are certain changes. You can see that it's very sticking to the left side. So let's add a padding to this entire column and wrap this with a padding. This is called refactoring. And now we are not able to see the changes, but there would be something. All right, let's run without debugging and see what we're getting. All right, so our app has loaded up. I'll cancel the debug console and here, I'll go to the my orders and you can see some padding has been created, but now we can also use Intel. So now we can have date format and let's see why we are not getting anything. So we need to import Intel. So we ha I have imported it at the top. So I'll do date format dot and you can see it gives us all the methods, but we're going to use its object to format it. And here we need to pass in a date. So here now we need to pass in the date time. So now to create date time from milliseconds, we can use date time dot from milliseconds since epoch and epoch refers to gen, uh, milliseconds uh, micro, not microseconds, milliseconds from milliseconds. Let's quickly format this milliseconds since epoch and now 
epoch refers to january 1 1970 so we just need to pass in the milliseconds that have passed from then and this will convert it to day time and we are passing it in let's see what we are getting so here we have may 13 2022 110 54a that looks great so after this well first of all let's design the container it's not taking the ava entire available space so what we can pass into this container is padding no sorry width of double dot infinity and it will take in all the available space and now we need to make sure that there's some bit bit of padding here inside as well so we have constant edge insets dot all 10 and now this looks good also this all of this came in center so the column should be having cross axis alignment of cross axis alignment dot start and here we have it looks great after that even this column the nested column that we have should have the same property so that this comes over here cool after this we need order id so let's quickly create a text saying order id and pass in the order id which will be widget dot order dot id and we are going to have order total which will be widget dot order dot total price so let's quickly go to the order dot dart model and we forgot to add the property of final double total price let's receive it through the to the through the constructor now we will have total price pass in the total price then we are going to pass in total price over here which will be map at total price and we co convert it to double and check if it's null then we want to pass in 0.0, .0 otherwise the map dot total map total price then we come back over here and pass in map dot order dot total price and for now it will not show anything Yep, we need to reload it. So let's quickly come over here, click on order, and here we have it. Order total of two thousand and eight. So obviously we need to add a dollar sign. So we pass in slash dollar. Great. So we have order total showing up as well. Now let's align all of these three together like we have over here. So <laughs> let's just space it out. The least. a fourth way we can do it so i think this much seems to be enough so let's space it out even more and save it yep let's space it out even more and even your more yep this looks good to me so if you have any changes you can just make it let's shift this a bit over here actually one space over here yep we have this looks good now after this we need the purchase details which will show all the products with their quantity so we have constant after this container we have we are going to have constant size box of height 10 and then we have a constant text of purchase details so we can just copy this text paste it over here and have purchase details and save it here we have it looks good so after this we will obviously create a container and then pass it in over here and we need the same border and the width will be same we need a bit of padding as well but i don't think we need to specify any of those properties So in the child we are going to have a column which will have a main axis alignment of main axis alignment dot start so that the column doesn't start from the middle right and now in the children we have to remove all of these text because we don't have them 
and now what do we need to do well we have multiple products in that because we have a products array so we need to run a for loop displaying each and every product so we have for int i is equal to 0 i is less than widget dot order dot products dot length i plus plus then we are going to return a row which will have children and the first child is going to be image dot network of widget dot order dot products at i dot total not dot total because we don't want to show the uh, price we need to show the image and we're going to show the very first image as the cover image let's see what we're getting <laughs> yeah we are getting it correctly so here we are just going to reduce the height so we have height as 120 the width as 120 and save it yep the, now this is looking better now we're going to have some spacing left and then we will leave a size box of width 5 and then we want to enter the product's name and since this is in row we can use for loop again and again over here and make sure to not add something like this because these are collections in flutter they don't allow to add this braces and you can only do it for one particular widget so after this we need expanded and expanded is going to have a child which will be column which will have children and the first child is going to be the product's name so let's quickly create that text so we have text widget dot order dot products at i dot name and then get the style so we have constant text style as font size 17 and font weight so we have font weight weight as font weight dot bold after that let's come over here here we have it also let's put the cross axis alignment as cross axis alignment dot start sweet now we just need a quantity so we will pass in the required quantity which will be again another text and we will remove all the styling we don't need any of that styling and we'll just pass in dot quantity and we're not getting access to this product's quantity if we get access to this product's dot quantity it will give us the quantity of the number of products that are left so here we need to get the orders quantity not the product that individual products quantity so we have widget dot order dot quantity at i dot to string so with this we get the order and we have the list of integer of quantity so that we get every product's quantity as it is and if we save this much we have two so let's quickly pass in uh, pass it in as a string which will be quantity pass in dollar sign and use string interpolation now we don't need dot to string method over here anymore and now we have it looks cool now let's just make some changes in this text so we have max lines as 2 and overflow as text overflow dot ellipsis and that's why we have wrapped this entire column with an expanded widget so that the text can overflow to max two lines otherwise it will just start showing dot 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 over here great having the purchase details set up now the next thing is to show these tracking so what we're going to do is copy the size box and this constant text paste it in after this container and here we're going to have tracking and paste it in now we can see tracking again we are going to have a container but in that container we are going to have a new widget which i'm not sure if you've seen it before but it's pretty interesting so here we have it now instead of returning this entire column or so instead of returning this entire column what we are going to do is from here we are going to have a widget known as tepper so with this tepper it will allow us to make something like this pretty easily you'll see that so the uh, required arguments we'll pass in steps 
So let's define the steps that we have. Well, the first step is the pending step. So create it. So we need a title, which will be a constant text saying pending. Then we need a content, which will be a constant text saying your order is yet to be delivered. And then pass the co trailing commas. Yep. Now let's see how it's looking. This looks good. And we look into these action buttons later on because these actions buttons should only be available to the admin, not to the user. But we look into that in some time. So after the steps, we need two more steps. So we have one more after this and one more and actually one more. So this was the pending text. Now we need to pass in completed text. And here it will say that your order has been delivered. You are yet to sign and what signing? I mean, just the document or whatever it asks us to sign to verify that we have completed the thing. Then we need to pass in received and here it will be your order has been delivered and signed by you and finally it's called delivered and this delivered is again going to be of the same text but it will not be visible at all and it will just say that yeah your order has been delivered and signed by you but it's just telling that both the parties have agreed to it and here we have it you can see this looks cool already now let's remove these action buttons so we can come down at the top in the stepper we are going to define controls builder with this controls builder builder you can define what the controls over here are going to show up well we are going to first of all return context and details so context is the build context and details will tell us the current stem that we are on and all of that thing so here we are just going to return a constant sized box because we don't want to see anything at all so you can see nothing shows up and now we need this highlighting to be done right if we have pend the order has been completed then we want to see completed pending and all of that task so that highlighting has to be done so for that we are going to go on the top and create a global variable called current step let me quickly have current step and this will be equal to zero initially and this is why we have stayed, so we have made sure that the status here is zero because in the stepper we have to pass in the integer value. So having anything else like received or some text over here would be very difficult to convert again and again and would in introduce chances of bugs. So now let's create an init state function. And here we will have current step equal to widget dot order dot status. And now we will use this current step as the current step for our stepper widget. So if we go to the stepper, we are going to have current step passed in as the current step. Save this much. Now if active is going to be well a boolean value saying if the current step is greater than zero or not. So if the current step is greater than zero, that means that it is active. And here the current step is not greater than zero, it is equal to zero. So just to demonstrate, if we put in equal to, you can see this is highlighted. So we are going to have something similar over here. So let's quickly pass that we will pass in one over here over here and then this will be greater than or equal to 3. So if by chance we become 3 or greater than 3 it's not possible just for error purposes we can handle this over here. And now we have everything set up. So now last thing is if that part is completed. So if you saw even if it is completed it's showing, it's highlighting it. So let me just quickly show it to you. If I put equal to over here and come back, you can see, even though it is completed, it's showing one. 
I don't want to show one. I want to show a tick mark sign. So what I can do is first of all, remove this equal to sign and pass in state. So state will define how our step state is going to look like. So if current step is greater than zero, then I want to make sure that the step state is complete, which is that tick mark sign. Otherwise, step state dot indexed. That means the numbering part, which is by default. If you hover over this, you can see it is step state dot indexed. Now we're going to copy this for state over here, pass in one, pass in two, and here pass in greater than or equal to three. So having this stepper widget and all of the order details created, let's jump into the admin side of things. All right. So now let's again close all, close all the save files and all the features, because now we're going to jump in the admin side of things and we're rarely going to use anything now from the screens. I mean, we are going to reuse widgets, but not any screen as such. So here we're going to create a new screen called orders underscore screen dot dot. And it's going to be very similar to post screen. So let's quickly. So here we're going to import material dot create a state full widget Call this orders screen. And this will show us all the orders that are there. So we're going to have a scaffold, actually not a scaffold because I want to show you or actually let's just first change the user's type so that we get to the admin side of things. So I think the email over here was this. So I can type the admin. And now if I just return a container for now and restart the app, we see the admin. So here we want to see the orders page, not the cart page, but all the orders. So for that, we're going to return a grid view builder because we are already having a scaffold over here. And then we need to pass in the item count. And now we need to create an API for that. So let's quickly create that in the admin services dot dot file. Let's minimize all of this account features and go to admin services dot dot file. Remove dot FFI. We imported that by mistake and go down and we need to fetch the list of orders. So what I can do is copy this and paste it over here, call this fetch all orders. And similar to the product API, we are going to have that. So let's take it as an exercise. Please do it on your own and let me know if you could do it. All right. So now what we need to do is have user provider and this will be a list of orders. Also over here, we're going to return a list of order. And now we're going to use this admin thing and get the orders, not products. Then we are going to pass in the token and then we're going to handle the error. And in the on success, we're going to have order dot from JSON, remove one from JSON. And even here, we will name this as an order list. So let me quickly grab all three of them and pass in order list. Pretty familiar with that, aren't we? We can just copy this and we'll use it. But for that, we need to create an API. So let's go to the admin.js part and get all the things. So create a route and so pause the video, create a route and let me know if you could do it. All right, so we'll have admin router dot get slash admin slash get orders, pass in the admin middleware, then asynchronous request response. Then we have a try and a catch block where we are going to have res.json as 500 and res.status, sorry, 500 dot json as error and e dot message then we need to get all the orders that should be like the products part you can see we have this so it's we're going to be very similar we just need to replace the variable name and the product model name so we have await order dot find 
and we need to import this order so we can come over here and have constant order equal to require dot slash dot dot slash middle not middleware model slash order and then over here we just need to return res dot json at all the orders and we have the route created now if we come over here and create the init state function then the list of the products part i hope you had uh, stopped the video and tried it on your own it's very very similar to what we have done it's just using some logic to make difference and we will also create admin services admin services equal to this admin services after that we are going to take this so also call fetch orders function create this as an asynchronous function take this fetch orders paste it in over here and then we have admin services dot fetch all orders pass in the context and there we have it also we need to make sure that we store it in the orders variable because that's what it's going to return as it uh, return it to us and that's why we have made this as an asynchronous function let's mention the function type great so now we need to pass in the item count which will be orders dot link then we need to pass in the item builder and here we are going to return get context and index and we are going to have final order data equal to orders at that particular index so it will give us one particular order which we are going to use so we are going to have a return property which will be size box so that we constrain it to a particular height and we have height as 140 and the child as a single product we already remember that now we are using the same widget that we created for displaying order as well and we are just taking in an image so here the image is going to be order data dot products and we're going to grab the very first product and its very first image because product is a list. So we have products at zero dot images at zero. And yep. Now we need to pass in the grid delegate. So let's pass in grid delegate. Now what do we want? Well, the grid delegate should have something like, you know, both the sides only two products should fill in in the horizontal direction so we have constant sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count pass in two and yep let's bind this order screen to our admin screen which will consist of the bottom nav bar so here instead of showing cart page we are going to show orders screen pass in the constant over here also in this orders screen we are going to check if orders is equal to null otherwise it will give us an error so if orders is equal to the null then we want to show a loader otherwise a grid view builder now let's see the debug console no errors till now let's restart our application here we are the products and here we are not seeing any product because we have not called set state so let's quickly call the set state function and you can see if we don't call it the build is not rebuilding only right that's why and here we have the order shown again let's restart see the debug console come back and here we have it now whenever we click on this we need to go to the order details screen so that the admin can mark it as completed or not so what we can have is over here the size box should be wrapped with a gesture detector pass in the on tap as navigator dot push named pass in the route name which will be order details screen dot route name pass in the argument and it will be order data great now if i click over here we get to the order data screen now we need to be able to make sure that we can make some changes over here we talked about you know having 
the buttons over here so that we can mark them as pending, completed or received. So let's quickly create them. So here in our order details screen itself, let's go down to the stepper widget. I've used control F to find a particular widget over here and we have the stepper widget. Here we have the controls builder. Now what we need to check in this controls builder if the user's type is admin or not. So again, we will go up here and actually in the build function called final user is equal to provider dot off user provider context and we will also use dot user. I don't think we need to use user provider to store any user data. So here in the stepper widget, we have if user dot type is equal equal to admin. So if it's an admin, then we need to show a custom button telling them if it's done, then click on done so that we can come to the next step. So we have return custom button saying done. And on on tap, we need to be able to change the order status. So let's create an API for that. But for now, we are going to keep the on tap. Let's keep it with an error so that we can come back here very soon. So we are going to do this in the admin services. So I'm just going to copy one of this function. So, yep. And this should be fairly easy for you too. So pause the video, go ahead, do it. There's no harm in doing it. So now in the void, we have change order status, except the build context and require end status. So we need to get the status of the product that we have so that we can increase it by one or otherwise we are just going to pass in the change order status from there and increment the status by one so that we can set the status to a new value. And we don't need on success anymore. I mean, we need it but we also need an order value. So we have required order order with this order. We get access to the order ID and on success so that we can, you know, update the thing real time. So if we click on done, it will be done in the database, but it will not refresh. So we need to make sure we call set state and increment the value by one. So here we have user provider. After that, we need a response and here we need to pass in the ID, which will be order.id and then the on success should be on success. You can do it this way or you can just pass in on success over here like this. Both of them are completely fine and we are now return type, so we are not returning anything. So now uh, let's quickly create this post request. So I'll name this change order status and quickly copy this go to admin.js and create a post route so let's just copy this paste it over here and call this well <laughs> let's copy it again and paste it over here so here we have access to the id so that is the id and other than that i think we also need access to the status right i mean we are sending the orders id but we also need to send the updated status. So we have status and pass in the status. Otherwise, what you could have done is incremented the value there itself by getting the previous over here itself by getting the previous value of the status and incrementing it by one. It would be the same thing, but I think we can pass in the status, right? So here we're going to get order ID and status. Then we're going to find the particular ID by using await order dot find by id we don't need to delete anything so we just need to find by id and after getting that id we need to update its status so we have order dot status equal to the status as i said if you want you can just use order dot status plus equals one and that is completely fine too i think this one and that one is only the same thing itself after that, we just need to do order is equal to await order dot save and then return the order. 
All right, let's come back over here. And in the on tab, we are going to create a function at the top called change order details. So void change order status. And let's create a comment over here saying only for admin and like this <laughs> yep so that it grabs attention you know otherwise user will get confused you know why are we using this function and order details which will only be for the user side we never said it's going to be for the user side great so now we need to have final admin services created the instance of this class and then we are going to take this admin services dot change order status, pass in the context and the updated status. So the updated status is whatever status is right now, plus one. How do we get the current status? Well, we can ask it over here. Otherwise we can just use current step plus one or both of them are the same thing. And now pass in the order and the order is going to be widget dot order. And in on success, what are we going to do? Well, this is going to be interesting. So in the on success, whenever there's on success, then we need to make sure that the current step increases by one. So what we need to do is set state current step plus equal to one. And that's it that makes our app look real time now in the on tab we just need to pass in this change order status and then pass in the status now here we could have passed in current step but you know we could have done that over there as well because current step is a global variable so here i'm going to make use of this details property that the stepper widget only gives us to find the current step that is there so whenever we click on this done button, it will take that current step and increment it by one, which the details builder will give us, you know? So here you can see we have the button done button. And if I click on it, it's completed. And if I go to the user side of the application, so let me quickly make this as a user and update it. and then restart the application here if i go to the product details you can see it is pending but we are not getting the option to edit and it has made this as a tick mark you can try it on your own so we have that completed now we are able to change the order status now the final thing that we need to work on is showing the user the graph based on the category and also the total earnings till now all right, so now let's create a new route for it. We are not starting with the screen UI because this is going to take some time, the earnings part. So let's quickly create admin router dot get because now we don't want to post anything. We just need to get the total earnings that we have had till now. So we have slash admin slash analytics, pass in the admin middleware and then have asynchronous request response and then have a try and a catch block. So now we will take this request and pass it in over here. Now we need to get the total earnings first of all. Now to get the earnings first of all, we need the orders. So let's get all the orders and have await order dot find and not promise provider order. So we have order dot find and pass it in with an empty braces so that we get all the orders. Now to get the total earnings, we just need to create a global variable or a local variable in the function total earnings. And well, what do we need to do? Well, let's look at the orders collection just so we know what we are doing. So here we need to go through every product that is there in order and we need to go through every order. So suppose I have another order like this, you can presume I have. So we need to go through every order and in every pro order, we need to go through every product that is there and add their total earnings to this total earnings variable. So how are we going to implement that? Well, 
for let i is equal to 0 i is less than orders dot length so over here we are going to have one and then increment the i's value then we are going to have another for loop so that we go through every orders products value so we have for let j is equal to 0 j is less than orders dot length j plus plus and now what we need to do is add the total earning with every orders products that is there and this will not be orders dot length you know because here we are already in the orders list so we went through every list and now we need to go through every product that is there so here we will have orders at i which will fetch us that particular order dot products dot length which is this array so that we go through every product in this array now we can take this products so we have orders at i dot products which will give us the particular orders products array and we need to fetch that particular product so we have at j and then to get the total earning what we need to do is multiply this quantity with this products price right so we have quantity which is 1 into 10 so we have 30 so we need to do exactly that so we have dot j dot quantity into and we can copy this whole thing again and have products at j dot product you can see over here we have product over here and then we need to pass in dot price so we have dot price so after this we have access to the total earnings but that's not it we also need to get the category wise product so that we can show it in the graph so here we are going to create a new function for it altogether and we are going to call this function fetch category wise products and here get the category and we don't need to mention the type over here because as I told JavaScript is a dynamically typed language and now to make this function asynchronous we can pass in asynchronous over here otherwise we could have created function like this which will be constant fetch category product equal to this and pass in an arrow function like this and call this asynchronous like we've created callback functions multiple times but let's try an alternative syntax right now so we have async function and we have the category now as well so we need to find the category orders so we will have let category orders equal to await order dot find and now what do we need to find we need to find the orders of that particular category so let me minimize this so we need to find orders in every product to check if their product over here is having the category of the category that is mentioned over here so for that we are going to pass in a string every time we did category like this for uh, suppose if we have await product dot find then we need to to pass in category like this but for order we need cat products which is this array the main array inside of that product which is this one array which we can call product so we have this particular product and we need to find its category so we have dot category and you can see the error already showing up we can't use anything like this so we need to convert it to a string and then match it so we need to match it with the category and boom we have all the category orders now now similar to this part we need to loop through all the products so that we can get their total earnings also we need to create a variable called let earnings equal to zero we will take this earnings and replace total earnings with this earnings and use category orders anywhere we see orders so we have category orders, category orders, category orders and even your category orders. And finally after that we need to return earnings. 
All right, now we can take this fetch category wise product and use that. And we need to use this five more times, right? We have five categories created. So to get category wise, so let's type it here, category wise order fetching. Now we can just do await fetch category wise product and pass in mobiles as the very first category. I hope that is what we named it. If we go back to our global variables, here we can see we have mobiles, essentials, appliances. So we just need to copy names from here. And then we are going to save it in a mobile earnings variable so that we can send it to our client side. And we are going to paste it four more times. Let's remove it one more time. And now we have essentials. So let's paste it over here. Then we have appliances. Let's paste that. After that books and then fashion. So let's pass it in and we are copying it from here, not from the list that we created while giving the admin the option of, you know, selecting from a drop down menu. And that's because we have already matched then the name of the category products over here. It's going to be called essential earnings. Then we need appliance earnings. And let me just name this correctly. All right. After that, we have book earning books, earnings and fashion earnings. Great. Now we just need to send it over. So let's create an object for that called earnings. And then it will include the total earnings and all these category earnings. So we can use the shorthand syntax and pass it in essential earnings, appliance earnings, books earnings and fashion earnings. Now we can just use res.json and send this earnings that we created. Great. So we have this admin analytics. Now we just need to display those analytics. So what we can do is go to the client side and close admin. So we have a new screen now called analytics underscore screen dot dot import the material dot and create a stateful widget called analytics screen call it as a constant and now we are going to return a column this column is going to show the graph and the total earnings but before showing that let's you know create an API for that in admin services. So we'll quickly go to the admin services and here we need to create a get request. So let's see if we have a get request already created and we already have that. We need to make some changes over here, but that's fine. So here we have it. Now here, instead of returning a list of orders, what we are going to return is a map of string comma dynamic and that's because you're not converting anything, right? We will get that data in a map or a string, and then we will create it in a new refined map or a string and then get and display those earnings. So we have the earnings, we will require bill context. And now this will be of sales. And for that, we are going to create a new model. This sales variable is going to help us plot on the graph. So for that, we can create a new model. So we can create it in the admin itself because this is not going to be a public model. It's going to be only for the admin to see. So we can create a sales model there. And it's going to be very different from what we've already created because we are not going to have JSON serialization or copy with function, anything like that. So here we are going to have class sales and it will just have a string of label of what to display and then the total earning. So we have final int earning and take the sales, pass it in this dot label, this dot label, then this dot earning. And this is not even a named constructor. And this is what we are going to have. List of order, list of sale of sales. After that, we are going, also going to store the total earning. 
So now we are going to return these both as a map, sales and the total earning. So here, uh, let, let's quickly pass in the admin. So we will have, well, let's see. Admin slash analytics pass in the required header. It's a get request so nothing else is required. Also, the total earning can be zero for now. And in on success, things are going to be very different. So let's remove it. So here, what we are going to have is, first of all, convert the response in a JSON in a normal format. So we are going to decode that JSON and we need to call this, let's say response so that it's different from this response over here. After that, we need to set the total earning and total earning will be equal to res response. Don't use res because the response is a JSON format. You can't access it, but this response is dynamic and it will just decode that JSON data and we can access total earning on it. Make sure that this total earning over here is similar to the admin route that we passed over here, which is total earnings. And we've already made a mistake. So let's fix that. After that, we need to add to the sales variable, the labels and all the sales model. So we have sales and we need to pass in the labels. So the labels, very first label is going to be mobiles. And these labels are basically what's going to show up on the graph. So that's what we are creating because we directly need to show it on the graph. So we have mobile and then we have response of mobile earnings and then we need to add more, but let's quickly verify that we're going correct. So we have mobile earnings and all of them have an S at the last. So there's no scope of error now. So let's quickly add these four new categories. So we have essentials pass in essential earnings, then we need books. So we have book earnings. And now I'm again confused if I named it correctly. Nope, we need to access books earnings. Then we have appliances. We will access that using appliance earnings. And then finally fashion, which will be response at fashion earnings. After having both of th these created, we need to return a map, which will be first of all the sales. So we'll pass in the sales and then the total earnings, which will be total earning. Or you can just rename this, but I think just to have so many variable names is going to be disturbing. So let's pass in total earnings itself. Now we can go to the analytics screen, create an init state function and remove the to do part and also create get for get earnings. Take this get earnings and we're going to call this asynchronous and now we will fetch the data. So again, final admin services admin services is equal to admin services, create a global variable of total earnings. So we have int total sales, which can be nullable because the total sales can be zero, but if we pass in nullable, it can be nullable. So we can check that way. And similar thing for list of sales. So we have earnings. Now what we will do is store it in a variable called var var variable earning data, which is equal to await admin services dot get earnings pass in the context. Now this earning data is a map. If you hover over this map string dynamic, because the return type of this function was map string dynamic. Now we need to set this to total earnings or total sales, which will be earning data at total earnings and then earnings will be equal to earning data at sales. Then we need to set state and here we have it done. Now 
the thing now why we created this in a separate variable so that we don't have to call the function this function two times all right otherwise what we would have to do is pass it in over here like this then like this remove this and remove this and that would be really bad you know calling the function two times so instead what we are going to do is earning data and then save it like this after that we are going to check if earnings is equal equal to null then we need to show a loader and this now earnings is null or the sales is null the total sales sorry so if either of them are null we want to show a loader otherwise a column now this column will be children and the first child that we need is a text showing the total sales so that we finally have an output on the screen so we have total sales pass in the dollar over here so that we get total sales variable and pass in the dollar sign after that we are going to have a style and we are going to call this as a constant text style of font size 20 and font weight of font weight dot bold so now if we see the output we can't see anything because we need to bind this analytics screen so let's quickly go to the admin screen and pass in the constant analytics screen after that let's restart and see what we're getting so here if i go over here we can see total earnings as 2008 and we placed an order of 2008 which is great it's working now after this we need to show a chart and for chart we're going to use a plugin known as charts underscore flutter you can even search fl underscore chart which is a good library this is a very powerful library you can see that and uh, you can see the graphs are even more better and very customizable but for this we are going to use charts underscore flutter so let's quickly add that dependency stop our app execution and in this admin create a widget known as category products chart so that will allow us to have our own chart displaying and in case we want the graph to be seen on other places this can be a very reusable thing so here first of all let's import material dart and also let's quickly run without debugging so here we also need import of charts underscore flutter flutter dot dot as charts all right now we can create a stateless widget so we can call this let's say category products chart and now we are going to return what's known as a bar chart given by this very plugin charts flutter this requires one argument one positional argument so we can pass in series list and what is the series list we are going to accept that from the constructor so we have final list of series which is another thing provided by this plugin and it's going to consist of sales and string and we're going to call this series list we are going to require th this through the constructor also import sales over here after having series list that's all we can do or we can set animate set to true so whenever we come on this screen it will make sure that this graph animates in a vertical direction or whatever animation has been given to it so here we can go to the analytics screen and put a trailing comma also over here now we can use category product screen or products chart and pass in the series list well it's going to be series right so we have series and then we need to pass in the id well the id is going to be sales it's not going to be outputted on the screen then we need to pass in 
data and we have the data already which is earnings you can see it requires a list of sales and we've already passed in the earnings after that we need the domain function and this domain function is what's going to show up on the x axis so here we are going to pass in sales dot label and now we need to create an instance variable of sales but actually we don't need to create that domain function will already give that so here we are going to receive sales of sales and other thing that is not useful for us and then we can have sales dot labor and measure function is going to be the y axis so now we have access to earning and there we have it now you can see we are getting this error and this error is mainly because because the category products chart is going to have well this charts flutter and this is also flutter so what we need to do is as charts use this and then our error goes away over the year but in year we have to use it like charts dot category products chart not this actually charts dot series like this because this is our custom widget but the series is provided by the plugin great now if i come over here we should not be able to see anything yeah we get that trend of low error and now we need to specify a specific height for this so we can wrap this with a size box and specify the height let's say 250 and let's see what we get you can see we are getting it correctly so let's quickly go over here and we have that shown as well that means our graph is working and it's showing us it correctly so now having all of this created we can come back to the user side and create the last function that is logging out and then we can test it on android to see if there is any bug or anything then we can deploy our own server and then i think we are good to go all right so we are back in the user side of the application and now if i click over here on the account screen you can see we have the logout button ready we just need to click on this and log out so let's quickly go there let's close all the save files and go to our very last feature which is the top buttons here we have the logout and it's an account so we need to go to their services and add the logout functionality well we will avoid logout and we will require a build context and then we need to create it asynchronous then we can have a try and a catch block in the try block in the catch block we will have a show snack bar obviously where we will show e.2 string all right now what do we need to do well to log out we need to understand how logged in works so whenever we try to log user in we are going to we store their user authentication token in shared preferences and then based on that token we are checking if that token is there that means that the user is logged in otherwise the user is not logged in we are not storing the user's logged in condition anywhere in our database we are storing that on the user's device itself so we need to get access to shared preferences shared preferences which will be equal to shared preferences dot get instance now after having instance to that we just need to make sure that we set the string empty so that whenever we come to this auth service where we get the user's data which is when the user just when the application starts we are running this functional function so whenever we get this user string and the token can be nullable so the token here is empty so it will tell us that the token is not valid and then it will not get us to the home screen so here we just need to do await shared preferences dot set string key will be x auth token similar to what we had in the auth service which is this x auth token and we need to make sure that it's lowercase so let's quickly type lowercase and the value over here it's going to be an empty string great having that we are making sure that there is no more set string or anything now we just need to make sure that we push the user on the auth screen dot route name right so here we just do navigator dot 
push named and remove until auth screen dot route name so let's quickly have that and then we can set route set to false great so we are going to go to this auth screen and it will pop off all the other screens that come in between also we can set provider to null but or empty strings whatever but i don't think there is any use case for that because anyways we are on back on the main screen it wouldn't really matter so if i click on log out now nothing would happen because i have to bind this function so let's quickly go over here and use account services and we need to create that instance so let's copy this and our final account services and now instead of you know creating this account services instance as final and thus because of that we need to create this as a stateful widget we're going to remove all of this and convert this to a stateless widget and now we need to create a constructor for that so we can add key to constructors and yep we have it now we can just use account services so that you know like this because if we create the instance of the account services over here it will become a stateful widget so here we have account services dot logout pass in the build context and here we have it now if i click on logout we went back to the auth screen and if i try to go back i'm not able to go back i'll restart the application and we are still not able to go there so that means our app is working and it's completed we have completed so many features i hope you learned something from it now the last thing that we need to cover is deployment and then after deploying it we'll test it on the android device as well so here we to deploy it we are going to use heroku.com it's a cloud application platform you can see it over here it allows us to host our servers over here which will provide us with url which we can replace with our uri which is the ip address because ip address will make sure that it only works locally when we are connected to that particular wi-fi of which ip address we got and with heroku we are able to get a server where we can deploy our server and it will be accessible to everyone and we can publish it out so let's quickly sign it up sign up you need to enter all of this the first name so i'm going to pass in rivan ranavat and then the email address so here we need to pass in your email address and the primary development language i've selected as node js over here you can just use any other thing you want it really doesn't matter for now so now let's click on create free account all right so i've logged in and here i am terms of service i'm not in italy so i'll just click on accept if you are then select that option so here we are welcome to heroku account has been set up let's get started so now we need to create a new app so let's quickly create a new app we need to enter the app name so we are going to name this amazon clone and this should start with the lower case so we have amazon clone yep this is not available so we can call this rivan and amazon Cl er, clone rivan is available so we have united states based on this name we are going to get a url so make sure whatever you type in is according to the url you want it and i'm going to choose a region united states itself and you can choose europe whatever you want it uh, it wouldn't matter after that we need to deploy it to deploy it either you can use the heroku cli or you can connect with github now to connect i'm going to connect with github so for that what i'm going to do is stop this server execution clear off everything and now run git init git add git commit dash m uploading server and then also actually before doing that i would have preferred doing node underscore modules ignoring them so if you're familiar with git what you need to do is dot git ignore and ignore the node modules i've not done that but make sure to do it after that we need to set up and create a github account so i'm quickly going to create my github account here click on new 
and create amazon server tutorial i'm just going to delete this repository after trying it out you know but now we are going to click on create repository when we need to make this public so yep now we need to add get remote add origin sorry not origin get remote add pass in this url and i think we need to pass in origin and then we need to finally do get push that dash u origin master after this it will make sure that it uploads to github so we can clear it off and if you're not familiar with github i mentioned the resource in the description below from where you can learn it out so we have our amazon server tutorial passed in so i can come over here connect to github i'm going to authorize heroku for now pass in my password so after getting the url from there you need to update your global variables uri thing and update your remove your ip address and instead of that put that and also before uploading what you needed to do was i forgot to tell you over here in this port you need to specify something known as process dot env dot port or or 3000 that means that it will look up so when we deploy node will give it a particular port it will not be 3000 it will give it a random port it can be 3000 but it will not be 3000 always so here we will have process dot env dot port so it will take in that port that node gives us otherwise if it's not mentioned then we can take 3000 port so after having done that you have passed it over here there's no need of this anymore so you can remove it but even if you keep it keep it there's no worry about it and then finally again deploy it to heroku get the url and it will be the same url after deploying it redeploying it and then you can go to the global variables change your uri and then our app should work perfectly so now i'm going to run it on pixel 5 emulator and see if it's working or not so I'm going to run without debugging and check if there is any error in the debug console. And here you can see we are already getting an error. And if you got this error and I'm looking into it late, you can just go to the build.gradle file. And here the minimum SDK version is 19. So make sure to add that and now run it without debugging. All right. So our app is built and here we get the create account and sign in thing. So let's quickly create an account. I'm going to call this Rivan R. Pass in the email. Let's say Rivan at the rate gmail.com and pass in R over here. Three, let's say. So I'm just going to click on sign up. Account has been created. Then click on sign in and then sign in. And here we have it. We are able to see the deal of the day. We have a whole different cart. And now let's actually search some product, which is MacBook. I'll click on enter and I'll add to cart, rate it with a 1.5 star and then go to the cart, proceed to buy an item and here we have the Google Pay button. You can see if we click over here, Google Pay requires a Google account to be set up on this device. We need to set up Google Pay. You can try, try it on a real device. So here I'm going to have a uh, so here we are going to have 101 fake street and it doesn't really matter if we enter or not because we can't place an order. But rest of the things are working. It feels like that. No orders are there still. Then we can click on deal of the day. We can search products. After that, we can click on log out and we are logged out again. So this is a bonus section in this tutorial because Flutter 3 has come up. It was announced on Google I.O. So here we are. So what we are going to do is see if there is any breaking changes. I've upgraded to Flutter 3. If you want to upgrade to, you can run Flutter upgrade and then it will show you all the necessary stuff. It every if everything goes well, it will show you like this. Uh, otherwise, it will also show you the suggestion of how you can install it properly or you can search it on the net. So I have it here. What I'm going to do now is open VS code and see if there is any upgraded version or there is any b changing break breaking code so i'm just going to exit vs code update uh, and open it again 
and open it again so here we have it let's see if we're getting any suggestion here you can see the flutter version is flutter 3.0.0 and the dart version is now 2.17 great so now what i'm going to do is try and run the application to see if it's working or not so let me get my is simulator and also keep track of all the warnings that show up and everything that shows up all right so our app has launched but we get these warnings and i've been looking about this warnings throughout my discord server and all of the servers i'm in so this has nothing to do with it it's just that flutter when it upgrades again to some other version they'll fix all of these things but as of now we don't need to worry about this this is inside flutter's code itself so we can just ignore these for now let's see if we're getting any warnings or errors anywhere and it doesn't seem like we do let's remove all of the warnings and continue in our application so let me quickly remove all of these things that i've not done and yep now we don't have any warnings so let's close all the saved files then save all the other files and then again close all the saved files great so now if i come back over here and pass in the sign in so let's say test123 at the rate gmail.com and pass in the password as test123 click on sign in and we are signing in here we are everything looks great and there doesn't seem any other error now in case you don't know about flutter 3 it introduced usage of material 3 in our application so you can go in the main.dart file and in the theme data use material 3 here we have it the option and the property and set it to true after this you know it wouldn't do anything great in our application except this part you can see this looks much better even this you know it's rounded and it's making it on its own you can see the ripple effect over here this has also changed because of material 3 and now this doesn't really look like amazon but it looks cool though so i'm not complaining there the proceed to buy items you can see it's rounded on its own if we increase this it doesn't matter and here we have it the icons also seem to be a bit changed and nothing else will really change in our application because we are using designs from scratch but you can see it looks great even the effect over here so if you want you can use this otherwise just use the normal thing that we have created and we are back to normal but i like this better so i'm going to use material 3 and just add a comment that you can remove this line can remove this line for anyone who's referring to the source code we can have this and this will keep coming until the next version of flutter but i just wanted to know show it to you that nothing is changing here in our code so you can follow along and that's it so this was the tutorial thank you so much for watching see you in the next video